At this moment, the bruised and swollen Hanfong was lying on a wooden bed, and beside him, a young lowly dressed in green, 13 or 14 years old, with a melon-faced face, big eyes, and two ponytails, was using a pair of small white hands to apply ointment to the bruises on his chest. Feeling the fiery sensation of pain in his chest and recalling everything that had just happened, Han Fong still felt incomparably stifled. He never dreamed that the once-in-a-lifetime crossing event would fall on his head as a part-time museum curator. What's more, I never imagined that as soon as I traveled to this world, I would be beaten up by a girl who was even more beautiful than the fairy sister. He couldn't figure out how that extremely beautiful woman wearing a snow-white dress, with a face like peach blossoms and skin like congealed grease, could kick himself out several meters away. Obviously a pair of slender pink fists hit on their own body, but feel the other party boxing champion Tyson possession on phone could only wipe the tears from the corners of his eyes and silently sigh. Ugh. It's all the damn night jars that's causing all the trouble. Han Fong cried and looked down at his chest, where there was an odd green mark. Han Fong was an orphan in his previous life, grew up in an orphanage, managed to get into college, mixed up a bachelor's degree in archaeology, and worked as an administrator in a museum after graduation. I thought to be able to eat and wait for death, until retirement, did not expect last night, was arranged by the director of temporary overtime, clean up a Qing dynasty antique night pot. Who knew that while cleaning up, Han Fong accidentally cut his palm by the corners of the pot's mouth, and the blood quickly soaked into the pot, and then the night pot suddenly transformed into a green light and drilled into the location of his heart. With a sensation of the heavens spinning, when Han Fong awoke again, he was already lying in an unfamiliar room, and everything around him was furnished in ancient colors he had wanted to come out to ask about the situation, but who knew that as soon as he went out, he saw a classically dressed white woman standing outside the door, and the woman's appearance was so beautiful that Han Fong was astonished. He was just thinking about how to open his mouth to strike up a conversation, but unexpectedly, without saying a word, the woman kicked Han Fong to the ground, and then she gave him a brutal and inhumane beating, directly knocking Han Fong out. Han Fong only remembered that before he fainted, there was a vague flash of green light at his heart. When he woke up, there was an extra memory in all of his minds, the memory of the original owner of this body to be exact. Han Fong had already confirmed that he had really traveled across the world, and this was the White Dragon County under the jurisdiction of Sichuan Province, one of the four great powers of the Linggu continent, the Qianlan Empire he is the head of the Han family branch, one of the five major families in White Dragon County, and his name is also Han Fong. The Han family is a martial arts family with a lot of power, but Han Fong, the head of this branch of the family, is a waste who was born with a wasted vein and is unable to cultivate. Moreover, in addition to his inability to cultivate, there was a disorder in a certain aspect of basic male functioning. This was the memory that the original owner had left Han Fong with, and the memory was incomplete, Han Fong had no impression of any other people or events. But just this information alone was enough to make Han Fong feel groundless and even have the urge to run headlong into the ground. Crossed into a martial arts world he was unable to cultivate the waste, this is just, even as a man's basic function are problematic, simply double waste shit, how did I cross over to this kind of weirdo? Han Feng's heart was overwhelmed with grief and indignation, he knew that the bronze night pot, was hidden in his heart, he tried to call out in his heart, wanting to discuss with it to see if he could send himself back. If we can't, we can change someone else to cross over, but this night pot doesn't care about him at all. With nothing else to do, Han Feng could only resign himself to his fate for the time being. He knew that this was not an ordinary world, and as a waste of a waste, if he wanted to survive, he had to learn about his living environment and the relationships of the people around him as soon as possible. For a moment, Han Fang's gaze turned to the pretty little lowly beside him, who was carefully applying medicine to him. The little girl called herself Binger, is the mate of the Han family branch, Han Fong thinks this is a good breakthrough chapter 2, wearing a dude scumbag? Just as Han Fong was pondering how to speak to Binger. Seeing that he was dumbfounded for a long time without saying anything, the little lowly busily stretched out a small white, tender hand to caress Han Feng's forehead, her face tensed as she said, Master of the house, what's wrong with you, don't scare Binger, is it somewhere uncomfortable? Han Feng was instantly awakened, and with a whirl of his gaze, he smoothly made a weak appearance, covering his forehead with his hand and said, Ugh. Binger, I feel like my head hurts so bad that I can't remember a lot of things all of a sudden. Upon hearing this, Binger's pretty face changed color in fear. Family head you. You lost your memory? Aya, this is a big deal, I'll go get you a doctor. The little girl turned around to leave, but was caught by the quick-witted Han Fong, who grabbed her little hand at. Binger don't make such a fuss, in fact, I'm not in any serious trouble, I just forgot a lot of things, why don't we have a chat, maybe I'll be able to remember these things. Is this really going to work? Of course. Han Fong said and pulled Binger to the edge of the bed and sat down, just like a strange uncle who seduced a pure girl. He was the first to ask, Binger, who exactly is that woman who just hit me? The first thing Han Fong wanted to do was figure out the identity of the ruthless white woman. Binger sniffed but was stunned, then said, Family master, that's Missy, don't you recognize her? Ah? Uh, Missy? But her last name is obviously Chu Ah, seems to be called something like Chu Hanxin. 
Seeing Han Feng's reaction, Binger said in her heart that the family head was afraid that he had really lost his memory. She could only medicate Han Feng on one side and tell the story of Chu Hanxin on the other speaking of Chu Hanxin, we should first talk about Han Feng's father, Han Xiaotian, who can be considered a legendary figure in White Dragon County. Originally born as a concubine son of the Han family, but because of the superb cultivation talent, the power to suppress his peers, and finally by the Hall of Elders exceptionally named as the Han family head. And Chu Hanxin was not a member of the Han family, it is said to be Han Xiaotian when he was traveling, from the hands of a group of bandits to save orphans. Han Xiaotian saw that she was poor, and brought her back to the Han family to take her in as his daughter, treating her as his own, and because her family name was Chu, he renamed her Chu Hanxin. Chu Hanxin is one year older than Han Feng, and has rightfully become the Han family's first lady, and Chu Hanxin has shown exceptional cultivation talent since she was a child, with excellent qualifications, and her reputation in the Han family's younger generation is far beyond that of Han Feng there was even speculation that Chu Hanxin would become the next heir of the Han family. However, three years ago, Han Xiaotian was ordered by the governor's office of Sichuan province to carry out a secret mission, and was eventually buried, and Han Feng's mother, Yu, disappeared at the same time. Han family dragons without a head, have begun to compete for the position of the head of the family, originally as the young master of the family Han Feng, is the most qualified heir, but he was born with a wasted vein, doomed to not be able to cultivate the body, naturally, cannot convince the masses. In the end, the Han family's grand elders stepped in and put the position of family head on hold, leaving the Hall of Elders to preside over the affairs of the family as for Han Feng, two years ago, he was stripped of his main lineage by the Hall of Elders and placed on the outskirts of this white dragon city as a branch patriarch, with no hope of succeeding as the Han family head. At the same time, in order to emphasize the generosity of the main Han clan vein, the Hall of Elders had also bestowed an extremely valuable fine iron or vein within the clan to Han Feng's branch vein. Of course, this is only the surface work, the real control of this vein, or in the hands of the main vein of the Han family, the Han family branch in addition to this mansion outside the city, can be said to be penniless. The only people who followed Han Feng to the branch were his own brother, Han Lei, his maid, Binger, and a steward named Zhang, as well as Chu Hanxin, who had beaten her up not long ago. Chu Hanxin after listening to the Ice Child's account, Han Feng for his own life has a clearer understanding of the typical waste material playboy, after the death of his own father, by the family ostracized suppression of the unlucky egg ah. Even the so-called branch family head was just a pose, with no power, and had to look at the face of the main vein at every turn. As for Chu Hanxin, when he heard that the other party was also an orphan, Han Feng's heart was slightly touched, but he was still a bit puzzled, I'm at least the head of the family of the branch, and even if she's my sister, she can't be so. Brutal and rude to me. Binger couldn't help but cover her mouth with a few delicate laughs as she sniffed, then turned to Han Feng. Family master, you mustn't say that about Missy, Missy can be said to be affectionate towards our branch. Chapter 3, The Joker is Myself. Size. Sentient? Han Feng looked at Binger in surprise, it was hard to connect those four words with the ruthless woman just now Binger continued, Missy she has extraordinary talent, and is not a real Han family, when we were divested by the clan, the great elders, they have given very generous conditions, so that Missy to stay in the main vein, but Mrs. categorically refused, followed us to the suburb to settle down. And we're so poor that we can't even afford to eat on, or Missy used the money she earned from making talismans to take on the family's expenses. Eh? This. Han Feng obviously didn't expect there to be this kind of hidden agenda, the feelings of this Chu Hanxin in order to repay the favor, willing to leave the main vein and suffer with them not to mention, but also bear the economic pressure of the branch alone. As the saying goes, take a man's hand is short, eat a man's mouth is short, Han Feng's original bottom spirit of the head of the family, suddenly weakened by three points, but still a little reluctant to say humph, as far as her giving for the sake of the family, haven't I ever sacrificed myself and given anything to the family? Once these words came out, Binger fell silent and looked at Han Feng with a strange gaze, looking at Han Feng for a while now. A.M. I wrong? Han Feng raised his voice. Binger did not comment, only said quietly, half a year ago, the family head. You said that you can no longer stand this kind of poor days, want to go to the rich life of a big family, and then. You entered into the county city Joe family, we blocked her cannot stop, you this away, our almost half a year time did not come back. When Han Feng heard this, the corners of his mouth couldn't help but twitch a few times, and his heart finally became somewhat clearer. Originally, Chu Hanxin do not mind the poverty followed followed to the branch, himself, the head of the family, even in order to live a rich life, ran to do people's door son-in-law Han Feng thought about it, if he had such a brother, I guess he would have the heart to slap him to death, no wonder that Chu Hanxin is so not treating himself. However, feeling the stabbing pain coming from his chest from time to time, Han Feng still argued somewhat unwillingly. The so-called men should be married, women should be married, I joined the Zhou family is indeed a bit dishonorable, but cannot be so face to face to such a point. When we met, we directly started to fight without saying anything, and our hands were so hard, what have I done that is so outrageous that I attracted so much hatred? Han Feng had thought that this time, the little lowly should be on his side and sympathize with him, but who knew that Binger was once again showing that strange expression and swallowing? Actually, 
This still can't be blamed on Missy, it is indeed you, the family head who have gone a little too far. Ah. What did I do? Han Fong was puzzled. Binger is red-faced and said, Family master you forgot again, a few days ago you got drunk within the county city's Sprinkles Pavilion and even ran to the city master's mansion, slipped into the boudoir of the great Miss Chin, stole. The person's intimate apparel, and also was Miss Chin caught a current, and then beat out of the city lord's mansion. This matter is now spread all over the city, Missy must have felt that you have disgraced the old family master and thus moved to anger, family master you must not hold a grudge against Missy. After Ice's words were finished, Han Fong had been frozen, a bitter smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, and he couldn't help but sigh in his heart, so the clown was actually himself. In order to enjoy the rich and noble life, willing to join the family, abandon their families, and after the end of the bar a wine to steal incense was caught by others although none of this was Han Fang's own doing, at this moment, he actually couldn't help but want to say something to Chu Han Xin. Well played. It is a pity that the original owner of the body, presumably has been that Miss Chin was killed on the spot, their own this is to cross over, on behalf of that grandson received a fat beating. For a time, Han Fang's hatred for Chu Han Xin had almost dissipated. However, with his own persona, in the Han family branch to stay, for fear that it will only attract people do not treat, Han Fong has the intention to find another way out, then asked Binger said. Right Binger, didn't I join the Zhou family, how did I appear here? Chapter 4, Accidental Peeping Tom Upon hearing the words Zhou family, Binger immediately pouted and muttered with a disgruntled expression, family master, the Zhou family recruited you to join their family with bad intentions, and their intention is to take advantage of the fine eye and vein in our branch this time you caused trouble in the city lord's mansion, and were almost killed alive by the city lord's subordinates, and the Zhou family didn't send anyone to save you, or did Missy personally go and bring you back? Hearing these words from Binger, Han Fong secretly laughed bitterly, but in his heart, he had expected it. The so-called eat soft rice also need to have hard skills, he is not only notorious, but there are still obstacles, the Zhou family recruited his own kind of people to join the family, can be what good intentions. It seemed that the Zhou family couldn't go, and could only live in the Han family branch at the moment, and out of consideration for his own personal safety, Han Fong asked somewhat nervously, by the way, Binger, your family's eldest miss should be a spirit martial artist, right? Hearing Han Feng's inquiry, Binger said with a look of adoration, of course Missy is a spirit martial artist, and she's still a very powerful kind. In the entire White Dragon County's younger generation, only the city Lord Qin's daughter and the top geniuses of several great clans could match it yet moreover, those genius disciples have countless precious elixirs to aid in their cultivation, as well as the guidance of strong family members. Missy has nothing, yet she can be just as powerful as them. Missy is naturally the best. Looking at Binger's proud face with honor, Han Feng's heart felt amused while secretly sighing. It turned out that this world was so wonderful, it was just a pity that he was born with a wasted vein and was not destined to have anything to do with spirit martial artists at this moment, Han Fong couldn't help but think of that bronze knight pot again, this thing had brought itself all the way to this world, it couldn't be just to let itself come to be a waste of space that everyone shouted at, right? Han Fong thought to himself, it seems like he needs to figure out how to communicate with this bronze knight pot as soon as possible. Maybe this thing has some special ability has not awakened, not only can make his tiger body shock, become a cultivation genius, but also incidentally revitalize the male spirit, restore the male nature. But the thought of that thing, just a broken night pot, and travel through the novels of the world's sacred sword, spiritual beads, and precious jades. Another high image, far away, Han Fong again Han Fong was a little bit weak. In the compartment, little Lori channeled a lot of information to Han Fong and carefully put on a good ointment before leading him to the front hall for his evening meal dinner content is very simple, steamed buns, pickles and a few dishes of fried vegetables, as well as a few bowls of millet porridge. Not to mention compared to the big families, is a little more solid people's families, dinner is also more abundant than them, visible nowadays the Han family branch, has been embarrassed to what extent. Only three people sat on the table, Han Fong, Bing Air, and an old man with white hair, hunched back, smiling, missing two incisors, Zhang housekeeper. As for the eldest sister, Chu Hanshin, it is said that she did not come to dinner because of her poor appetite. Han Fong also has a younger brother Han Lei has not come, listening to the ice said he is still practicing. A meal down, Han Fong ate was bland and tasteless, casually ate some rice, Han Fong got up alone, did not let Binger follow, he alone in the Han family compound to walk to relieve boredom although the Han family compound is dilapidated, but the area is not small, after all, the outskirts is not an inch of gold in the county, this mansion is still when the Han family's main vein, has not yet made a fortune when the base. Five into the classical compound courtyard, the space is extraordinarily wide, the main room, compartments, ear rooms. Add up to nearly a hundred rooms, and the east and west sides of the side yard covering a small area. Han Fong, as the head of the family, had his room in the north house, which was directly opposite the front door, while the compartments on the east and west sides each house Chu Han Xian and Han Lei. Han Fong originally wanted to take a casual stroll and look at the flowers and plants in the courtyard, but he didn't realize that the courtyard was too big, and all the way through the corridors and alleys, he was a little confused about the direction finally, Han Fong haphazardly walked through a long corridor, ready to explore forward, but stopped in his tracks when he passed a hidden courtyard door. Bang bang bang! There was a muffled thud from the door, and a low gasp. 
Hmm. Han Fong was slightly stunned, and he couldn't help but turn around and take a few steps towards the courtyard gate, following the gap between the gates and looking towards the courtyard. Only to see, under the reflection of the setting sun, a white grass, a stake as thick as an adult's thigh, wrapped half of the twine, the lower half inserted into the soil. At this moment, a young man with a bare, naked upper body, with a lean and muscular body, was standing in front of that wooden stake, waving both his fists and blasting at the stake he used his full strength in every punch, and when he smashed on top of the wooden stake through the hemp rope, it still made a huge dull sound, causing the stake to tremble slightly. The speed of the youth's punches was not fast at first, and Han Fong was still able to see clearly, but later on, the youth's speed became more and more rapid, as fast as a phantom, and continuously bombarded the wooden stakes. The muffled sound became dense, the stake also intensified trembling up, as if the youth did not know the tiredness and pain of the machinery, frantically swinging his fist, until the surface of the fist, skin and flesh, blood will be a piece of the stake or stained red, and still did not stop. Han Fong outside the door saw all this, and the stunned look on his face gradually became grave, his brows gradually frowning tightly, finally unable to hold back, to open his mouth to stop the other party from the self-inflicted behavior drink. The youth's mouth, however, suddenly let out a bellowing cry. In a split second, the youth's original swift as the wind fist shadow stalled, his left hand drew a circle in front of his body, his right hand clenched his fist and hit it at his waist, in a seemingly slow movement, it seemed to contain a palpitating power. Just the next moment. Regretful mountain fist. The youth roared, and like a tiger descending from a mountain, he fiercely took a step forward and stomped on the ground with his other foot. In an instant, the youth's heels, ankles, calves, and thighs extended all the way to his waistline and spine, tensing into a line. The bloodstained right fist, hidden in the waistline, was ready to fire, like a cannon discharging, directly bombarding the seven inches of the wooden stake that was trembling more than once. Boom! Only heard a dull sound, the thick as a thigh of the stake, a violent shock, actually click sound, broken by the neck, tied on the hemp rope also collapsed at the same time. Chapter 5, The Wild Boys Shit! When Han Fong outside the door saw the scene, his mouth opened wide in shock. The identity of this young man in front of him, he had already guessed, this Han Fu he has not seen, only his own brother Han Lei. Han Fong is 17 years old this year, and Han Lei is 2 years younger than him only 15 years old, Han Fong had thought that Han Lei should be a handsome appearance of the young man, who had thought that there is a so tough wild boy. Thigh thick wooden stake, even by this guy raw blasted off, good guy, this if in exchange for their own received a punch. Han Fong does not think that their waist pole has that stake sturdy earlier, when she had communicated with Binger, Little Loli had briefly recounted the cultivation levels of spirit martial artists. The first time a person enters the martial arts world, he or she can attract the spiritual energy of heaven and earth to quench the body, and is called a martial arts apprentice. There are nine stars in the realm of martial apprentice, and when one has cultivated to the nine stars of martial apprentice, he can condense the Dantian Chi cyclone and look into his own eyes, and only then can he be regarded as a true spiritual martial artist. Above the martial apprentice, there are the five levels of glow, star, star, moon and sun, each of which is divided into nine stars. Chu Hanshin was already at the peak of martial apprentice six stars and was about to break through martial apprentice seven stars. Apparently this brother of his was also a spirit martial artist, he just didn't know whose cultivation level was higher compared to Chu Hanshin Hei. It's a shame I can't practice. Han Fong was considered to have witnessed the power of a spirit martial artist at this moment, and he couldn't help but feel a hint of envy rise in his heart. After all, in his previous life, when Han Fong saw those martial arts masters in TV dramas, flying through the sky and punishing evil, Han Feng's heart was still very eager. And just as Han Fong stood outside the door and sighed softly, the youth in the courtyard suddenly turned his head and swept his stern gaze toward the door. Who, come out. The youth's cold shout startled Han Fong, and after settling his mind, he simply pushed open the wooden door and crossed into the side yard grass. Face to face with the youth, the two young handsome faces actually have seven points of similarity, but the two have very different styles. Han Fong was pampered because he had been unable to cultivate since he was young, and his body was slightly slimmer and his skin was fairer, and he looked quite a bit like a literate scholar Han Lei is completely different, since childhood he began to cultivate, although the silhouette is still a little tender, but the physique is robust, sharp eyes with God, an elder brother Han Feng's size difference, just look at the appearance, he is more like an elder brother. When he saw clearly that the visitor was actually Han Fong, a flash of surprise flashed across Han Lei's eyes, but he immediately regained his composure and said in a low voice. What are you doing back here? Although there were only a few simple words, Han Fong was able to sense Han Lei's indifference and even a hint of disgust. If it were before, Han Fong would definitely be extremely upset at this kind of attitude, but ever since he had learned that the owner of this body of his, had done everything to this family before. He then understood why these people had such an attitude towards him although it is not his own fault, but who let him cross over to the body of this evil guy, this mouthpot he must also take the blame. Han Fong replied casually. I just came back to casually look, this half a year. You guys are doing well. Han Lee sneered. Oh. Naturally is not as nourishing as the Zhou family ants days, but we are content, if you are not used to it, go back before it is too late, this home is not suitable for you in the first place. 
In the end, he was a 15-year-old child, and although Han Lei's force was much more powerful than Han Feng's, he was clearly not good at hiding his mind. As soon as he opened his mouth, Han Feng sensed a strong sense of resentment, and it was clear that Han Lei had a deep grudge against Han Feng for abandoning his family and joining the Zhou family in the first place. Thinking of all this, Han Feng in turn some sympathy for Han Lei, when this bastard action, the damage to this brother must be very great thinking of this, Han Feng thought to himself that nowadays, in a short period of time, he will not leave the Han family branch, but can contribute to this family, as if it is to make up for the faults of the original owner. With that, Han Feng said, I want to stay longer this time, and improve the branch's plight in the meantime. At those words, Han Lei was slightly stunned, but then he snorted. He he. Improve the plight of the branch, just with you. A waste with no cultivation, you just don't come to scourge us, I'll burn high incense. Speaking here, Han Lei's eyes gazed at Han Feng, his gaze becoming sharp and cold. Han Feng, do you know how many people have been hurt because of your cowardice and willfulness? Also, from the moment you stepped through the door of the Zhou family half a year ago, I, Han Lei, don't have you as a brother anymore. After saying that, Han Lei picked up the top on the grass and casually slung it over his shoulder, taking a step to brush past Han Feng, and the two brothers didn't say another word looking at Han Lei's departing back, Han Feng froze in place for a moment, transfixed. Chapter 6, Even Night Pot Has a Spirit? As night fell, Han Feng had returned to his room, closing the door tightly and going to bed early. Lying on the somewhat hard bedpan, Han Feng was unable to sleep. Thinking back to how Chu Hanqin and Han Lei had treated him today, instead of being annoyed, he felt a faint sense of remorse and guilt. He also didn't understand why he had developed such emotions, perhaps although the owner of this body had already left this world, some of his obsessions still remained in his body and influenced Han Feng's mind. After pondering for a long time on the bed, Han Feng finally decided that he must find a way to help the Han family branch. After this thought was born in his mind, Han Feng's anxious heart really gradually calmed down but then a question came up, how was he going to help the Han family branch, this world was martial arts oriented, he didn't even have the qualification to cultivate, how could he change the plight of a family? With this kind of doubt in his heart, Han Feng pondered various methods in his mind, but he always felt that it would not work, and when he thought of it late at night, without realizing it, Han Feng fell into a deep sleep. The moon was high in the sky, and the hour of the sun was at hand. Han Feng, who was originally sleeping soundly, suddenly heard a sultry woman's voice in his haze. Han Feng, Han Feng. Hmm. Han Feng, who was sleeping, was gradually awakened by this distant call, and in the darkness of the night, he opened his sleepy eyes, and there was a vague flash of green light in front of him. Han Feng squinted and eased his eyes for a moment before finally seeing what was in front of him that is a height of about 9 inches, the four sides with angular, the surface of the carving of countless fine ornaments of the copper pot, the surface of the copper pot green light shrouded, flashing a little starry, the whole body through the ancient vicissitudes of life, and the sense of God. In the Han Feng in a clear look at the copper pot in the blink of an eye, originally drowsy eyes, could not help but instantly wide, open mouth will be exclaimed. Night. Before the latter word pot could be uttered, Han Feng only felt a dizzying sensation in his head, and a strong sense of weightlessness came over him. In an instant, the feeling disappeared and he was in a white world. The feet were soft, as if they were stepping on clouds, and on all sides there was a white mist, so that nothing could be seen. Suddenly coming to such a weird place, Han Feng was a bit nervous and walked around for a while, only to find that it seemed like there was no end to the surroundings, not to mention that there were not half a dozen people what the hell is this? Place? Han Feng muttered to himself in disbelief. Unexpectedly, just as his words fell, an enchanting woman's voice came from his ears. This is the realm of the pot. Han Feng was suddenly startled, looking back and around but there was no one at all. Han Feng couldn't help but feel a little hairy in his heart, and he realized that the voice just now, and the voice that called out to him in his sleep, were actually the same. Han Feng bravely asked, Who? Are you? I am the vessel spirit in the pot, you may call me the immortal in the pot. The pot fairy. Han Feng first looked shocked, then realized. You. Are the spirit of this night pot. The air fell into a silence, and the owner of that voice, for a long time, did not respond. However, just a moment later, there was a sudden flash of red light in front of Han Feng's eyes, and a fiery red figure slowly floated down from midair. This figure was slender and bewitching, slender and delicate, with a bright red dress that burned like a flame, fluttering in the void as if it were a blooming rose. And in the center of the petals, a pair of long and slender legs exposed under the long skirt, as perfect as ivory carving, dazzling. When this fiery red figure floated down in front of Han Feng, he finally got a good look at the other party's face. That is an extremely enchanting beautiful face, red lips like fire, delicate face like jade, coupled with that thrilling enchanting curve, and long skirt open fork, bare, exposed to snow white long legs, simply angel face, devil body. However, the woman's pair of deep and bright eyes were like two stars, appearing holy and noble, a combination of devil and angel, the embodiment of demonic and holy. In a flash, Han Feng only felt his heart gate being slammed hard, the woman in front of him was just too perfect. 
After Han Feng came to this world, he saw Chu Hanxin, whose appearance can be called stunning but whether it was her temperament or appearance, this woman had reached an extreme, and was actually three times more stunning than Chu Hanxin. Han Feng wasn't short, yet the woman in the red dress across from him was a hair taller than him. At this moment, the woman's holy and noble gaze looked down at Han Feng, a hint of dissatisfaction showing in her eyes. Humph, the demon refining pot, one of the ten divine artifacts of the ancient times, an existence at the level of chaos supreme treasure, has become a night pot in your mouth, are you a little doll that is intent on being angry with this immortal? The woman's tone was not kind, but that charming and delicate voice seemed to carry the effect of seducing the soul, making people's heartstrings tremble and they couldn't help but be deeply attracted chapter 7, the son of fortune is me. Seeing this stunning figure that suddenly appeared, Han Feng couldn't help but be stunned, and then suddenly awoke with a start. Refining the Demon Refining Jug, the ancient artifact, also known as the Jolie Jug of the Demon Refining Jug? When the woman in red heard this, her face eased a bit and she said quietly. Count you still have some insight, but the Nai Lai name, just the name of the later generations added to the name, although the Nai Lai tribe leader Chi, indeed controlled the refining pot for a period of time but with his Taoist skill, how can he bring out the true power of the Demon Refining Pot, much less deserve to name the Demon Refining Pot, and thereafter do not mention the word Jolie again? Ah! Uh. Han Feng was momentarily stunned and opened his mouth wide, as a descendant of the Yellow Emperor, he studied and specialized in archaeology, he naturally knew a great deal about the origins of the Chinese civilization, and he had dabbled a lot in the legends about the ancient myths. It is rumored that the demon refining pot is one of the ancient treasures, created by the ancient god Nuwa, which possesses incredible power. Myths and legends say that the refining pot has the ability to create all things, but also has amazing destructive power, and its interior has a strange space, the space is so large that it seems to be able to contain heaven and earth in the interior however, myths were myths after all, and Han Feng had never taken them seriously. At this moment, when he suddenly heard this mysterious woman tell him that the bizarre night pot was actually the legendary demon refining pot, Han Feng was really a bit incredulous. As if she could see the skepticism in Han Feng's eyes, the woman blandly said. If it weren't for the power of the ancient divine artifact, do you think you would be able to come from your original world to this world today? Han Feng's heart shook, and he instantly realized that his crossing over was the ghost of this woman, but even such a bizarre thing as crossing over to the other world had happened, and the existence of an ancient artifact didn't seem impossible. Han Feng still looked at the woman with some caution and said why did you bring me here? The woman said calmly. You are very lucky that I have chosen you, you will become the new master of the demon refining pot, I will let you have incomparable power and become the supreme master of this heaven and earth. If it were anyone else, hearing these words from the woman, I'm afraid that they would have been smashed unconscious by this heavenly fortune on the spot, and would have been ecstatic. However, Han Feng was expressionless, and even the vigilance in his eyes became even more intense. Han Feng was not a person who possessed good luck, and this had been the case since he was a child. Time and time again, the blood and tears of lessons, so that the orphan to anyone, with a certain degree of guardedness, more do not believe that what the pie in the sky of good things, will be biased to fall on their own head. In front of me is a living example, billions of people on earth, an ancient artifact chose himself, Han Feng does not think that he is a son of luck, I'm sorry, I don't have much interest in artifacts, you can ask another person. Hearing Han Feng's reply, a look of surprise flashed across the woman's eyes, but then she smiled quietly. Oh. You are on the defense of this fairy? You're afraid that this immortal will harm you? Han Feng said non-committally. I don't know what exactly your purpose is, but I know very well that there is no free lunch, and even if there is, I wouldn't dare to eat it. After all, what you want to get, you must give, mustn't you? Hearing Han Feng's words, the woman revealed a flash of interest in her eyes and said with a few moments of approval. Not bad, you're sober and not greedy, so it seems that I've made the right choice so far. It is true as you said, if you want to become the master of the demon refining pot, you need to pay a certain price. Essence flashed in Han Feng's eyes at what cost? The woman covered her lips and smiled, her demeanor charming and seductive. Looks like you're still interested in me ah, in fact, the price you need to pay is very simple, it's just to repair the demon refining pot. Chapter 8, Do You Want to Be a Real Man? I don't want to be a real man, but I want to be a real man. Repairing the demon refining pot? Han Feng was puzzled. The woman's expression, however, became serious for a few moments. Back then, this immortal experienced an unprecedented battle with his master, and that battle caused the demon refining jug to be damaged so much that it had already injured its origin and lost much of its chaotic chi. If you become the master of the demon refining pot, you must find a way to search for chaotic chi to repair the demon refining pot. What is chaotic chi? Han Feng asked in disbelief. The woman responded, back then, before Pangu opened up the heavens and the earth, the heavens and the earth were filled with a chaotic aura, and all the chaos supreme treasures were born out of the chaotic aura later, when the heavens and earth first opened, the chaotic chi took on the form of the universe and condensed all the stars, then it almost disappeared without a trace, and nowadays, in the heavens and earth, it's already hard to find the chaotic chi again. Han Feng frowned. In that case, how can I find it? The woman smiled languidly. 
This immortal doesn't expect you to be able to find the chaos chi, but even if there is no chaos chi, you can still nourish this immortal with the spiritual energy you absorb. Han Fengwen spoke, pondering for a moment before speaking. Ah! What can I get out of it? The woman looked straight into Han Feng's gaze, her beautiful eyes that were as bright as stars, as if she could see through hearts, and she smiled. Don't you want to become a spirit martial artist, with great strength, mastery of your own destiny, and the ability to help your own family members get out of trouble? Han Feng's heart stirred, but he deadened the excitement in his heart and said. But I was born with a wasted vein, I can't cultivate it all. Ha! The woman giggled, laughing, and above her stunning face, she was all disdainful. If I can't even resolve this little problem, how can this immortal claim to be a chaos supreme treasure, besides, the demon refining pot still needs your spiritual energy to feed it, and this immortal will naturally be able to let you cultivate it. Han Feng's breathing slightly increased by a few points, and he knew that the other party had already pinched his lifeblood. Ever since coming to the spirit martial continent and understanding the true nature of this world, Han Feng's heart was indeed incomparably eager to become a spirit martial artist. However, his intuition told Han Feng that this immortal in a pot was somewhat dangerous, and it seemed that everything he thought in his mind could not escape her prying eyes in the silence, one of Pot Fairy's slender white, tender thighs stretched out, gently taking a step and crossing in front of Han Feng. There was only a stone's throw between the two of them, and the full and proud peaks of Pot Fairy were almost against Han Feng's chest, and her voice was enchanting and soft, as she said softly in Han Feng's ear. Are you going to hesitate? As she said this, one of Pot Fairy's slender jade fingers, with a cool, slippery, real touch, gently rubbed Han Feng's cheeks, sliding all the way down his neck to his chest, and all the way to Han Feng's belly, and slowly continuing to slide down. Gulp! Han Feng looked in front of this close at hand the absolute world of the special, things, feel that a trace of cold touch, spread all the way down, the abdomen at the dead suppression of the desire, fire, as if by some kind of invisible traction crazy pull, difficult to suppress however, an invisible resistance made it seem as if this lust fire was blocked in a channel and could not be given vent to, and this stifling feeling caused Han Feng's face to turn red, and his chest was even more stuffy and uncomfortable to the extreme. In the end, Pot Fairy's finger finally stopped at the critical moment, and above that stunning face, it was revealing a touch of deep sympathy and resentment. Alas! A soft sigh came out of her mouth as the potentate spoke quietly. It's a pity that you can't it, born with a wasted vein if it can't be cured, you can't be a real man for the rest of your life, it's really pitiful. Phew! The light sentence of the Pot Fairy, but Han Feng was struck by lightning, and even the only remaining trace of manly dignity was completely trampled at this instant, a hot blood rushed straight to his head, Han Feng finally couldn't bear it anymore and bellowed out with red eyes. Fine, I'm willing to become the master of the demon refining pot, as long as you can cure my natural wasted vein. Chapter 9, The Demon Refining Pot Recognizes Its Owner In the end, Han Feng agreed to the deal with the immortal in the pot. He becomes the master of the demon refining pot and shoulders the responsibility of restoring it, while the immortal in the pot must solve the problem of his natural wasted vein for him. Although there were still some inexplicable concerns and suspicions in his heart, Han Feng couldn't refuse the other party's conditions. A man cannot, even if the strength is strong, have more wealth, it is not happy, rather than peacefully do an incomplete man, Han Feng would rather take a chance, but also to do a real man. Hearing Han Feng finally agree, a heart-stopping smile blossomed on potentate's face, good, then let's start dripping blood to recognize our master now. Dripping blood to recognize the owner? How do you drop it, right on the ground? Han Feng froze and looked around, eventually pointing at the ground beneath his feet and asking. Before Han Feng could react, a cold jade hand reached out and already held his hand. Immediately in Han Feng's astonished gaze, the pot in the fairy red lips gently open, sandalwood mouth slightly open, vaguely revealing a small red tongue, actually will be Han Feng's one index finger, directly contained in the mouth. Hiss. In a flash, a warm and slippery, soft and incomparable touch wrapped around Han Feng's fingertips, strong as a wave of impact, violently impacted, this has more than 20 years of single career, senior old virgin male fragile heart finally, Han Feng couldn't hold back and couldn't help but let out an unrestrained moan. But just as the voice reached his mouth, it suddenly turned into a scream. Ah! What had originally wrapped around his fingertips, that marvelous touch of wetness and softness, suddenly turned into a sharp pain that drilled into his heart. At the same time a wave of attraction came from his fingertips, and Han Feng could only feel the blood in his entire body, as if it was being pulled, gushing out of his fingertips at a rapid pace. Within moments, the sharp pain in his fingertips had disappeared, but Han Feng felt cold and clammy all over his body, and his mind was dizzy, as if he had lost some blood. On the contrary, the pot in the fairy, at this moment has opened his mouth, loosened Han Feng's fingers, delicate face as if the rain dew moisturized after the flowers, appearing more and more bright and beautiful Han Feng also noticed that the other party's brow suddenly flashed a light golden color, something like a rune. The moment that rune faded away, he suddenly felt that he and the immortal in the pot, seemed to have a marvelous connection if nothing else. A flirtatious smile appeared on pot fairy's face as she said to Han Feng. From now on, I will have your blood flowing in my body, so you must treat me well and nourish me with more aura, master. 
Han Feng's mind was still a bit dazed from the loss of blood, but when he first saw the seductive gesture and ambiguous tone of the potty mortal, he shivered and withdrew a step backward. Han Feng had now realized that this pot fairy in front of him was definitely a rose with thorns, so he couldn't be confused again because of her beauty fixing his mind, Han Feng said. Now that I've finished recognizing my master, it's your turn to fulfill your promise, how do I get rid of my natural wasted vein? The potentate nodded with a delicate smile. This is naturally easy, human cultivation needs to run spiritual energy with spiritual veins to complete the circumference of the sky, those with superior talent, the higher the quality of the spiritual veins, the more open the veins are as well, and the perception and attraction for spiritual energy is stronger. However, regardless of the level of talent, there is only one spirit vein in the body, the so-called natural wasted vein is that the spirit vein is in a state of closure, unable to carry out circumferential operation, as long as you find a way to open up the spirit vein. Han Feng frowned. Then how do I get through the spirit vein? The potentate explained ordinary methods naturally do not work, the spiritual vein is related to a person's talent and fortune, in fact, it is a blessing destined by heaven, wanting to open up a spiritual vein out of nothing can be said to be against the heavens. There may not be a handful of people in heaven and earth who are able to do this, but it is rare to develop a spiritual vein without damaging the blessings or diminishing the qi. However, my third master once created a technique called Dao Shen, which can capture the creation of heaven and earth, change one's own qi and open up spiritual veins to enhance their quality, all of which are no big deal. Before my master's fall, he had left this skill inside the demon refining pot, allowing me to choose someone with a destiny to teach it to, and now I will teach it to you. After saying that, potentate immortal's jade finger pointed and a golden light directly struck into Han Feng's brow. Han Feng only felt a swelling pain in his mind as a steady stream of information poured in, and within moments, an arcane, raw, and huge feat was inscribed into his mind although the contents of it felt obscure to Han Feng, he was able to skillfully recite it word for word, marvelously. Chapter 10, Sealing Demons and Subduing Devils Dao Xian. Han Feng muttered these two words under his breath, his heart irrepressibly excited, with this technique, he would be able to open up his spirit veins and become a spirit martial artist. Immediately, he thought of something else and hurriedly asked the potentate. That. If I open up a spirit vein, then. That what, my body will be able to recover, right? Han Feng's expression was slightly embarrassed, although he desperately wanted to become a spiritual martial artist, but he was more concerned about his lifelong sexual happiness. The potter's fairy sniffed and couldn't help but laugh again, but shook her head. Of course you can't. What? Han Feng's face suddenly changed as he looked at the other party with an icy gaze you tricked me. The potentate shook his head with an innocent expression. Of course I won't cheat master, but opening up spirit veins and that aspect of master's problem are not related at all ah. What do you mean? Han Feng asked as he stared intently at the immortal in the pot. Just listen to the pot fairy. In fact, being born with a wasted vein is just an inability to absorb spiritual energy to cultivate, normal physiological functions are not hindered, the master's body was poisoned. And it's been poisoned since you were a child, and now that the poison has penetrated deep into your bones and marrow, it naturally affects your body. The more Han Feng listened, the uglier his face became, he didn't think that his persistent disease was due to poisoning, and it was poisoned since he was a child, wasn't he the young master of the Han family at that time, and how could he have been poisoned? Han Feng's face was cloudy while the potentate was comforting master, you don't have to worry either, don't forget that the Dao Shen technique has the ability to take over the creation of the heavens and earth, and it can also cleanse your essence and remove the toxins from your body. Although the toxins in your body have penetrated deep into your bones and marrow, I think that when you reach the ninth star of martial apprentice and become a full-fledged spirit martial artist, you will be able to expel the toxins and your body will be restored to its original state. Hearing this, Han Feng's face eased up, and at the same time, he was shocked at the heavenly effect of the Dao Shen technique, which was not only able to open up the spiritual veins, but also able to expel the toxins for a while, he couldn't help but feel a bit foolish and wanted to start trying to cultivate. And the potentate suddenly spoke at this moment. By the way, it seems that people just now had another important thing that they forgot to tell the master. Well. What is it? Han Feng looked puzzled. The potentate, however, asked instead of answering. Master, do you know the origin of the name Demon Refining Pot? Han Feng could only shake his head. LOL. The so-called refining demons naturally means that the demon refining pot can refine and suppress between heaven and earth, all demons and evil spirits, and can even refine a side of heaven and earth. Among my successive masters, there is no lack of great magicians who possess the ability to penetrate the heavens and the earth, and they have suppressed countless powerful demons with the demon refining jug, and all these demons have been suppressed in, the nine heavens and the earth within the demon refining jug now that you have become the master of the demon refining pot, the power of life and death of the demons suppressed in the nine heavens and earth will naturally be given to the master. But now that the core of the demon refining pot was damaged, the chaos chi was lost, and the seal of the nine heavens and earth had begun to loosen. This nine heavens within the demons, are the top of the heavens and earth, the power of one more than one powerful, with the refining pot of demons damaged, now the pot seal gradually cannot suppress them. 
Since Master has inherited the demon refining pot, the heavy responsibility of suppressing these demons in the future will naturally be given to Master as well, so Master should cultivate and improve his cultivation, and never let them escape. Han Feng couldn't help but change his face when he heard this. There is still this thing, then. What if I can not suppress them? Potter's immortal's expression, however, became grave. Master, a trace of the soul essence of these demons is suppressed within the core of the demon refining pot, if you can't suppress them, once they escape the demon refining pot, they will definitely turn against the master and even try to take control of the demon refining pot themselves. Han Feng was instantly shocked. Instead, the pot immortal comforted, of course, master, you don't have to worry too much, the demon refining pot has suppressed these demons for an unknown number of years, and even if the core is damaged now, it's not something they can easily shake as long as the master cultivates hard, as your strength rises, you will master more magical abilities and powers of the demon refining pot, or the master will find the chaotic chi to repair the demon refining pot. At that time, instead of breaking free from the seal, these demons can be driven by the master, and their life and death will be at the master's whim. Only after hearing this explanation from the immortal in the pot did Han Feng's face ease up. It seems to become the master of the demon refining pot, not as easy as imagined, at least they can not lazy fish, have to be more diligent cultivation only. However, in this way, he can also become a spiritual martial artist as soon as possible, to restore male masculinity, or even, as the pot of immortality said, to drive the refining pot of demons in that absolute demon, Han Feng thinks that this is also beneficial to himself immediately, he nodded and said, okay, that's no problem. The pot and the fairy also nodded and said, the demon refining pot is an ancient artifact, there are many other wonderful uses, in the future, the master will slowly know, and also, the master will call people Xian on the line in the future. Chapter 11 Cultivating the Dao Xian Technique With that, with a wave of the pot fairy's red sleeve, Han Feng only felt a heavenly rotation, and in the next moment, he reappeared on the bed. The moment he returned to his bed, Han Feng had a moment of bewilderment, and he even suspected that everything that had just happened was just a dream. However, the Daoxian secrets in his mind, word for word, were still crystal clear what's more, the green light, hooded demon refining jug above his head was still suspended, as if reminding Han Feng that it was all real. In the next moment, the demon refining pot suddenly transformed into a green light and directly struck into Han Feng's chest. Han Feng was shocked, hastily looked down, chest, that followed since the crossing of the green mark, green light flashes, in the darkness gradually extinguished. Late at night, in the inner courtyard of the Han mansion, inside the darkened main room of the north house, a candlelight lit up, and Han Feng climbed out of bed again. Tonight happened such a bizarre thing, he really cannot sleep a little, his mind constantly recalled, when he left the demon refining pot, the pot and the fairy to himself will be up that thing. If he was unable to suppress the demons in the nine heavens and earth, once these guys escaped from the demon refining pot, they would be the first to kill themselves although Han Feng had never seen a demon, he was definitely able to imagine that these guys were ferocious and terrifying, and this matter was clearly a pit that the demon refining pot had dug for itself. However, although Han Feng had already sensed that it was not going to be good, but naturally, the pot fairy had grabbed his own death point, and in order to be able to become a spirit martial artist, in order to revitalize himself, Han Feng could only tearfully jump down into a pit even though he knew that there was a pit. Who let themselves get just the right length and size, just the right size, and who do they not pit themselves against? Alas. Forget it, even if it is really unlucky and is destroyed by these demons, that is better than harboring a lifetime. After muttering to himself, Han Feng emptied his mind of cluttered thoughts, and then began to study, the Dao Xian technique that the potty mortal had imparted to him Han Feng was still extremely interested in the matter of cultivation, and since he had obtained the technique, he certainly wanted to try it out immediately. The chapters of the Dao Xian technique appeared in his mind once again, and Han Feng scrutinized them, realizing that the technique was divided into nine layers. Level 1, Chapter of Qi Drawing, Level 2, Chapter of Qi Gathering, Level 3, Chapter of Armor Condensation, and Level 4, Chapter of Warrior Transformation. Are the chapters that correspond to the different realms practiced? At the moment, Han Feng was only able to cultivate the first layer of the Qi Drawing chapter. After carefully reading the Qi Attraction chapter several times, Han Feng still felt that he seemed to understand it, the language in it was really a bit esoteric, and there were many terms that were completely unknown to Han Feng, who had never been in contact with cultivation before for example, the Qi sense mentioned at the beginning of the chapter on invoking Qi, the original text reads, close your eyes and gaze at your heart as if it were still water, and you can observe the subtleties of the universe and see the aura in all directions. Han Feng closed his eyes and concentrated to sense the aura as stated above, and as a result, he almost fell asleep, but he sensed nothing. Han Feng couldn't help but mutter in his heart, thinking could it be that the immortal in the pot had punked himself again? Just as this thought rose in his heart, a familiar delicate voice came to his mind. Master, are people as bad as you think? Han Feng was startled, and realized that it was the immortal in the pot speaking to him nor did he speak much with her, Han Feng asked in a hurry. Sienner, the Daoxian skill that you passed on to me, how exactly should I cultivate it, and what is that she sense, how come I can't sense anything? Giggle. Another enchanting giggle. Sienner said, Master, you don't even have a spiritual vein, so of course you can't sense the presence of aura. 
Han Feng's face couldn't help but change, and his tone was unkind. In that case, I still can't cultivate? Fairy's answer was dry. Of course not, martial artists at the martial apprentice realm mainly refine their sinews, bones, and skin without the need to perform circumambulation. The master can directly use the spirit stone to cultivate, running the Dao Xin technique without going through the spirit vein, introducing the spiritual qi directly into the orifices of the whole body, and quenching the physique after your cultivation reaches the ninth star of martial apprentice and you become an official spirit martial artist, you will be able to condense your qi whirlpool and open up your spirit veins on your own. Spirit stone is a kind of crystal stone that can assist spirit martial artists in their cultivation and contains pure spiritual qi. Previously, in the room, Binger had inadvertently mentioned a sentence, and it was said that this item was quite precious. Hearing Siener's words, Han Feng understood after a little thought. In other words, he was unable to invoke the spiritual power between heaven and earth right now, so he had to use a spirit stone to directly quench his body, and only when he had spiritual power in his body would he be able to open up his spiritual veins but when he thought of the situation of the Han family branch nowadays, Han Feng was in a bit of a dilemma, where was he going to go to get the spirit stones? Just as Han Feng was secretly agonizing, Siener suddenly spoke. Master, there is a not-so-weak fluctuation of spiritual energy in the northwest corner of your backyard, why don't you go there and take a look? Chapter 12, The Little Digger Hmm. Han Feng was slightly taken aback by what he heard, but he still did as Siener had said and got up to go out, heading for the backyard. Han Feng was the head of the family, and lived in the north house of the Han mansion that was directly opposite the south gate, and behind the north house, there was a backyard that was usually used by the owner's family for cultivation but Han Feng was born with a wasted vein and couldn't cultivate at all, so the backyard was naturally deserted, and now it was overgrown with weeds everywhere. In the darkness of the night, Han Feng took a candlestick and brought a shovel to the northwest corner of the courtyard, under a laurel tree. Siener, is this the place? Han Feng stopped in his tracks and inquired in his heart. This should be the place, master you dig down by the roots and see. Han Feng did not hesitate to hang the candlestick on a tree branch, copied the shovel as a burst of huffing and puffing, shoveling hard. After digging down the osmanthus tree to a depth of more than two feet, Han Feng was so tired and sweaty that even his clothes were soaked, but he didn't dig up anything useful just when he had begun to suspect in his mind that there was nothing in this underground. Bang! A muffled thud came as the shovel seemed to have dug into something hard. Han Feng's eyes lit up and he hurriedly leaned down with the candlestick and saw that at the bottom of the mound, a piece of black cloth and silk was revealed, with an uneven surface that seemed to contain something. Han Feng hurriedly reached out and plowed away the surrounding soil, eventually yanking a fist-sized cloth bag up from the dirt pit. The cloth bag was tied with hemp rope, Han Feng laboriously unraveled the hemp rope, which was actually wrapped with a thick layer of craft paper, tightly wound with fine cotton thread, Han Feng again patiently unraveled the cotton rope and paper package. Accompanied by a warm breath, eleven pigeon egg-sized white crystals in the paper bag suddenly appeared in front of Han Feng in the darkness of the night, these crystals emitted a faint silver light, clearly reflecting Han Feng's excited expression. Spirit. Spirit stones. How could there be so many spirit stones hidden here? Han Feng couldn't help but be a bit puzzled by the surprise. He said, could this be the original owner of his body, secretly hiding it too? Thinking of this guy in order to live a rich life, abandon their own families, but also able to lack of morality to sneak into other people's homes, stealing people's underwear of the big girl, this kind of character to make a private treasure, for their own to leave the back way possibility is very great. But it's a pity, this guy didn't use these spirit stones even when he was dying, now it's cheaper for himself, just take it as his own payment for atoning for his sins in the future. With this thought in his mind, Han Feng stuffed these spirit stones into his pocket without any pressure, filled up the earth pit again, and returned to his room now that he had all the techniques and spirit stones, Han Feng could finally start practicing. Under Siener's guidance, Han Feng sat on his knees and calmed his mind, then he placed his hands down on top of his two knees, palms facing upwards, each holding a spirit stone. Closing his eyes and concentrating, his mind began to recall the contents of the first layer of the Dao Xin technique, the Qi drawing chapter. Chaos Tun Mun is eggs, dim and silent filling the air, the vastness of Tu Su hold Hongmang. A gas cycle condensation, hidden real water and real fire, dense disk not such as ice, the center of the beginning of the creation of Xian Gong. As Han Feng entered the realm of concentration and recalled the spells of the Qi drawing chapter, a mysterious feeling arose from Han Feng's heart. He gradually felt as if his body had become incomparably light, as if he were floating on a cloud, while above his palms, he seemed to be holding two rounds of the rising sun the warm sensation came from his palm, the familiar heat flow, dispersing down his arm towards all parts of his body, seemed to be what Siena had said, the aura entering all the orifices and quenching the whole body. A thrill ran through Han Feng's heart, was this what cultivation felt like? However, just as this heat flow was about to spread out in all directions, a powerful attraction suddenly came from Han Feng's heart, and all of these heat flows converged there. Next moment. Mmm. -hmm. That's nice. A soft, thought-provoking voice echoed in Han Feng's mind. Han Feng's heart shook and he understood what was going on, it must be the demon refining pot at work again, so he immediately questioned. Fairy, what are you doing? 
The sound of Siener's petulant laughter came to his ears. Master don't be in a hurry, this is the agreement we talked about before ah, when you cultivate, I also have to absorb part of the spiritual energy to nourish myself ah. Feeling that all the heat flow had been sucked up by the demon refining pot, and there wasn't even a mouthful of soup left, Han Feng couldn't help but darken his face. You call that part? However, Siener explained with a smile. Master, don't be angry, I am in a mutually beneficial relationship with you, so how could I victimize you? The demon refining pot was an ancient divine artifact with many mysterious effects, and refining and purifying aura was one of those effects. Those spirit stones absorbed by the master, in the eyes of ordinary people, since it is pure and incomparable, but in Siener's opinion, these energies are too refractory, they must be refined, and then the master quenched his body, so that the cultivation speed will be faster. Oh. There's more to this? Han Feng is a bit skeptical, a warm subtle heat flow, really from the chest began to spread, toward all parts of his body to pass away chapter 13, soaring strength. A tingling, slightly itchy sensation accompanied by a faint warmth spread throughout Han Feng's body like an electric shock. The extremely soothing sensation caused Han Feng to almost moan out loud. However, as time passed and this feeling continued, Han Feng gradually realized that the sizzling sensation on the surface of his body increased, and the temperature around his body seemed to be rising, with a vague sense of burning pain. And at this moment, Siener's voice sounded again. The cultivation of the martial apprentice realm focuses on refining the body, a process that starts from the surface and works its way inward, beginning with the refining of the dermal membranes and muscles so that the spirit martial artist's body is tougher, and his strength and resistance to strikes is improved. Han Feng nodded his head silently and continued to run the Dao Xin technique, continuously absorbing the spiritual energy from the spirit stones, and after quenching it through the demon refining pot, he ferried it into his entire body, quenching his muscles and skin membranes as time passed, that warm and cozy feeling had completely turned into a burning hot sensation. It was as if Han Feng was on the edge of a furnace, scorching his entire body as sweat rolled down and his body began to tremble slightly. Through this cultivation, Han Feng realized that the path of martial arts was by no means easy, and just the introductory tempering process was a grueling grind. Two hours later. Click. With two tiny cracking sounds, Han Feng felt the heat flow in his hand disappear and opened his eyes to see that the two silver-white spirit stones in his palm had turned grayish-white and their surfaces were covered with cracks, obviously the aura had been exhausted. At this time, Han Feng noticed that his body had already been soaked in sweat, and the sweat was also mixed with, a black, fishy odor like oil stains is this? This is the impurities in the master's body, the Dao Xian technique originally has the effect of washing the marrow, with every cultivation of the master, it will eliminate some of the impurities in the body, it may not be of much use nowadays, but it will have a great impact on the master's future cultivation. Siena opened her mouth to explain, then smiled. Congratulations master, you have officially stepped into the martial way and are now a martial apprentice one star. Ah. Han Feng froze at his words. This is martial apprentice one star? No wonder Han Feng felt surprised, today in the Han family study, through the records in the canonical books, Han Feng knew. Wanting to become a spirit martial artist was an extremely difficult thing to do, and many people would have to spend a year and a half of their time on just this stage of initiation and he had used only two hours before and after to become a martial apprentice one star, it was a bit too fast. Seeing that Han Feng was a bit incredulous, Siener, however, proudly said. Master, you have cultivated the Dao Xian technique, and with Siener using the power of the demon refining pot to refine spiritual energy for you, using the purest power in the world to cultivate your body for you, this speed is already considered slow nowadays. If the master has a spirit vein, even if it's the lowest grade, stepping into a martial apprentice one star, ten breaths of time will be enough. Ah? Uh. Han Feng was momentarily speechless, feeling that he was the one dragging the demon refining pot down. Master, why don't we drum up some energy and see if we can break through to Martial Apprentice 2 star tonight, I think that within 3 days, Master should be able to break through to Martial Apprentice 4 star and enter into the level of quenching the meridians. Han Feng's heart was thrilled, although he didn't know what the concept of Martial Apprentice 4 star was, it seemed that Chu Hanqing was still only a Martial Apprentice 6 star, and he had reached Martial Apprentice 4 star in just a few days, so he was afraid that the gap between him and her wouldn't be that big. If this woman struck out at herself again, well, at least she wasn't powerless to fight back. With a revitalized heart, Han Feng was so motivated that he hurriedly placed two more spirit stones in his palm and continued to cultivate. This cultivation took another two hours or so, and by the time Han Feng woke up from his cultivation, it was already dawn. The spirit power of the two spirit stones was once again depleted, and as expected by Siener, Han Feng managed to break through to Martial Apprentice 2 star he didn't know if it was because he was too excited, or if his physical fitness had been enhanced after becoming a Martial Apprentice 2 star, but at this moment, Han Feng didn't feel sleepy at all. Standing up, Han Feng bounced a few more times, although he couldn't do it three feet high, but he was also a lot lighter, and his body seemed to have endless energy. Han Feng tried to swing his fists, but was able to drive the whirring sound of the wind, the body than before, coordinated and sensitive too much. Is this what it feels like to be a martial artist? 
Han Feng's eyes were shining, his heart was excited, now he was only at the stage of martial arts initiation, if he could reach the ninth star of martial apprentice and become a real spirit martial artist, how strong should he be? Chapter 14, The Charm of the Head of the Household with the Demon Refining Pots and Dao Xian Secrets as his ceremonial weapons, Han Feng, who originally wanted to dream of being a tycoon, suddenly felt that in this otherworldly world, he seemed to be able to do something. Looking at the color of the sky, Han Feng collected the spirit stones in his room and pushed open the door to look out again. Seeing no one around, they went to the backyard to take a cold shower, casually changed into a clean shirt, and went back to the room to tidy up a little, looking at the bronze mirror in the young and handsome, and glowing with a vigorous face, Han Feng is very satisfied. It seems that the physical enhancement has stimulated the development of the body, and Han Feng has grown a bit taller and his body looks more proportional after everything was cleaned up, Han Feng pushed out the door and walked towards the front hall. When she came to the front hall, breakfast was already prepared on the table, Binger placed the last bowl of porridge on the table and was about to go and call everyone to eat when she looked up and saw Han Feng walking towards her. The first time the little lowly saw Han Feng, a smile first floated up on her face, but then her gaze was dumbfounded. Seeing this, Han Feng couldn't help but blink at Binger, revealing another bright smile. The little lowly's pretty face immediately flew up in two flushes of red, her gaze flustered away, slightly shyly saying. Family. Master, you are up, I was about to go and call you. Han Feng smiled gently and softly said. There's no need to go through so much trouble, Binger you've also worked hard, sit down and eat together. Instead, I shook her head. No, I. I have to go and call Missy and the others for dinner. Saying that, Lori lowered her head, blushing uncontrollably, and rushed out of the hall. Looking at the lopsided figure of the little lowly that had fled, Han Feng touched his face and sighed with quite a bit of self-pity. Hey. My damn charm. Lowering his head, he was about to take a sip of hot porridge when Han Feng suddenly realized that the waistband of his pants, which he had knotted casually underneath him, had loosened up at some point, revealing a touch of joyful big red inside. Ahem. Han Feng woefully refastened the waistband of his pants, and indeed he is still somewhat unaccustomed to the attire of this era, the waistband of his pants are not fastened well, and next time I can't say anything about wearing the big red again, shame on me. Not long after, all the people of the Han mansion arrived, the family head Han Feng sat at the first seat, the eldest Miss Chu Han Exian, the third master Han Lei on both sides, as well as housekeeper Zhang and Binger, sitting at the same table with the current situation of the Han family branch, there was naturally no need to distinguish between honor and inferiority, and the family sat at the same table. However, the atmosphere of this family, but obviously some wrong, a meal down, Chu Han Kor and Han Lei, a word did not say, for Han Feng is even look at a lazy glance. After all, Binger and housekeeper Zhang were subordinates and didn't dare to interrupt, so the family used their breakfast in this silent atmosphere. In this regard, Han Feng was not annoyed, knowing that three feet of ice was not a day's cold, and that it would still take a process for them to re-accept themselves again. After eating breakfast, Han Feng consciously went back to his room, he wanted to continue practicing, but Sienner was telling him that he had to wait until nighttime to continue practicing today's Han Feng was still too weak, and the quenched physique would need some time to adapt, or else it would cause damage to the body. Han Feng had nothing to do during the day, so he could only head to his study and bury himself in a sea of books in an effort to strengthen his knowledge of this world in a short period of time. At the same time, inside the eastern courtyard of the Han mansion, Chu Hanqing handed a wooden box to Han Lei. Little Lei, here are two spirit stones, keep them. Han Lei was stunned at his words, but he didn't reach out. Big sister, why are you giving me spirit stones? Chu Hanqing said with a calm expression. Don't ask so many questions, just keep it, and strive to break through the martial apprentice four stars as soon as possible, so that even if I'm not in the branch, you'll have one more point of self-preservation. Han Lei could not help but be stunned at the words, and then he seemed to think of something, and suddenly his expression changed greatly. Big sister, do. You really want to marry Han Chen? Chapter 15 Han Feng's Difficulties In the face of Han Lei's questioning, Chu Han Chen was silent for a moment, and then a touch of determination rose on the absolutely beautiful face. Little A, you are the only hope of the branch, I hope you can grow up as soon as possible and lead the Han family branch to become strong, as for me. You don't have to worry, big sister will be able to survive anywhere. Han Lei sniffed but was in a hurry. Eldest sister, that Han Chen is no good, acting recklessly on the basis that his grandfather is the clan's grand elder, how can you marry him? No, I will never approve of this marriage, I will go to the main vein and ask them to withdraw. Chu Hanshin heard the words, but her beautiful eyes were cold, and she solemnly said. Nonsense. This matter, I've already promised the main vein, it's difficult to change it. What? Han Lei's face turned even uglier. Big sister, why did you do it, did they force you to agree? For this big sister of his, Han Lei's heart was filled with respect and reliance, and he even regarded it as a mother-like existence, and he didn't believe that the other party would marry into the main vein for any other reason. Chu Hanshin's gaze trembled slightly, then returned to calmness in a split second and shook his head. No one forced me, I promised myself, Ray, you've been listening to your big sister since you were a kid, and I hope it's the same this time. 
Promise big sister that you'll cultivate well and try to make yourself stronger to protect yourself and Han Feng. Hearing the last sentence, the emotional Han Lei could no longer hold back his anger. That trash who abandoned his family, why should I protect him, his life and death is none of my business. At those words, Chu Hanqin's face was a steep change, coldly scolding shut up, remember this, even if Han Feng he's a bastard and incompetent, he's just like you, with his father's blood flowing in his veins. Now that father is gone, you are the closest people, and if even you were to abandon him, he would really be completely hopeless, and if you really disregarded his death, then there would be no need for you to recognize me as a big sister anymore. After saying that, Chu Hanqin placed a handful of spirit stones into Han Lei's hand and turned to leave. Han Lei looked blankly at Chu Hanqin's departing back, his expression moved, and finally made some sort of decision in his heart, and his gaze became incomparably resolute. For three whole days, Han Feng's life became extremely busy, utilizing spirit stones to quench his body at night under Xianer's guidance during the day, he either recuperated his body or stayed in the study and browsed through a large number of books, and even for meals, it was Binger who brought them directly to him in the study. Although he was busy, Han Feng felt immensely fulfilled, especially after each cultivation session, when he felt his power increase, the feeling of satisfaction and joy from the bottom of his heart was something he had never experienced in his previous life. At the same time, Han Feng's knowledge of the continent had deepened through the past few days of cramming knowledge in his study, and he had learned about another powerful creature of this world, the demonic beast. After the birth of spiritual qi, all living things had a metamorphosis, humans were born as spiritual martial artists, and similarly, many ordinary beasts also evolved and appeared as demonic beasts among the demonic beasts, there is nothing more powerful than the sirens that live in the sea, and their existence even threatens the human race. The struggle between the continent and the ocean, between humans and sirens, has never stopped. Nowadays, the Qianlan Empire, where Han Feng was located, was situated on the southeastern coast of the Spirit Martial Continent, which was the front line of the human race's fight against the sea demons, and every year, a large number of spirit martial artists would be sacrificed in the battles against the sea demons. However, this kind of matter that rose to the question of human survival obviously didn't have much to do with the current Han Feng present now, Han Feng had finally encountered a problem. Just early this morning, the last spirit stone on his body was consumed. Through three days of cultivation, Han Feng successfully crossed into the Martial Apprentice three-star, and even from the Martial Apprentice four-star is not far away, but at this point in time, fell into the embarrassing situation of running out of food. Now that Han Feng didn't have a spirit vein, he couldn't generate a qi sense and could only cultivate with spirit stones, and without them, his cultivation would have to come to a halt. Having only just felt the unrestrained feelings brought about by his cultivation climb, when his cultivation was suddenly interrupted, Han Feng was naturally anxious in his heart. Sienner, sense again, are there still spirit stones hidden in my backyard? In the bedroom, Han Feng asked with a last ray of hope very somewhat helpless voice came from her ear. Master, there are no more spirit stones, I thought that these spirit stones would be enough to let you cross into the martial apprentice four stars, and your qualifications that I didn't tea expect are too. Alas. When Han Feng heard this, he could only laugh bitterly, it seemed like he still had to fend for himself. But he wasn't worried, if he didn't have any more spirit stones, he could just buy them again, with the wisdom he had accumulated in his previous life, if he wanted to make money in this world, naturally it wasn't a difficult task. But make money, more or less have to have some capital, no business can not do well, even to inquire about some information have to spend money. Thinking of this, Han Feng's idea hit, the only three silver coins left in the Han mansion's coffers. Han Feng immediately found Binger and asked him to fetch the three silver coins to himself, however, in the face of the family master's order, the little lowly, who had always obeyed everything she said, refused in a rare manner Lori insisted that she had to go through Missy's permission before she could give him the silver coins, after all, they were all hard earned by Missy. Han Feng almost worn out his lips, saying that he would return it with interest, but the little lowly was unusually stubborn, blocking the door of the warehouse, with a look of I'll live and die with the silver coins, determination. Helpless, Han Feng could only lose the battle and turn forward to find Chu Hanqin. Although he was very reluctant to face this woman, who had once cast a shadow over him, for the sake of the spirit stones, Han Feng could only go with a stiff upper lip. At this moment the time is still early, the sky is just dawn, everyone has not eaten breakfast, Han Feng wins toward the west wing, but the heart is secretly thinking, this big sister will not get up yet? Standing outside the archway of the west wing small courtyard and hesitating for a moment, Han Feng took a deep breath and stepped in with his head held high, but as he landed on his feet, he became cautious it can't be helped, remembering Chu Hanqin's pugnacious savagery that day, Han Feng was worried that if his footsteps were too loud, would he disturb this tigress, or if the other party had a wake-up call and was woken up by himself, wouldn't it be dangerous? That's why Han Feng had to make sure that the other party had gotten up first. Fortunately, Han Feng was also at the three-star realm of martial apprentice now, and although he couldn't talk about any combat prowess yet, his body's coordination was still greatly improved. At this moment tiptoeing into the small west wing courtyard, but did not make a sound with such caution, he approached in the direction of the west wing, crossed several flights of steps, and finally arrived at the door of the wing. Han Feng didn't dare to directly knock on the door, but stopped in front of the door and leaned his ear inside the doorway to hear if there was any movement coming out of the room, and if the other party had already gotten up, he would knock on the door himself. 
After listening with his side ear for a while, the room was silent, Chu Hanxin seemed to be still asleep. After hesitating for a while, Han finally decided that it would be better to leave first, and that it wouldn't be too late to borrow money from this young lady after she had slept well and was in a good mood. Just wanted to turn around and bolt, something unexpected happened, Han Feng's belt, which seemed to have been cursed, inexplicably loosened up again, and his pants instantly slid downward. Han Feng was startled and hurriedly bent down to reach for the waist of his pants however, in his haste, Han Feng had forgotten that he was right next to the door of the compartment at the moment. The stooping and lowering of the head led to the head hitting directly between the two door panels. Bang! Under a collision, the door of the room, with a muffled sound, opened wide to both sides, and then a moist fragrant wind, came to the face. Han Feng had just grabbed the waist of his pants at the moment, and instantly realized that it was not good, and the moment he violently got up and looked up, his entire person was even directly frozen in the doorway of the compartment. Only the hall of the compartment directly across from him was steamy, with a large, half-human high tub in the center. Inside the bathtub, the water rippled, the petals floated, a young woman with a clear and beautiful appearance, her long hair draped over the white, tender shoulders, leaning back on the edge of the bathtub at this moment the woman a slender white, tender thighs, just out of the tub, lotus root arm raised, is to soft razor in the leg gently caressing over, but at this moment this beautiful action has been stiff. The woman's pair of beautiful eyes look towards the entrance of the compartment with shock and stagnation. At this moment, the morning sun shimmering light, a handsome young man with a thin body, legs in a figure of eight, standing angrily in the doorway of the compartment, his hands are still lifting the waist of his pants, a pair of deep gray pants, glittering. In the morning light. Chapter 16, Going to the Door to Propose Marriage. When he saw this beauty bathing picture in the compartment, Han Feng only felt his head buzzing, and his body's chi and blood surged uncontrollably at this moment the angle from which one is standing, through the water surface of the tub and the gaps between the pedals, one can even see the outlines of some indescribable landscapes. Finally, two lines of hot blood flowed indisputably down his nostrils. At this moment, Han Feng's brain, which had almost stopped, finally resumed operation, and in the instant he was awake, he sensed a cold, killing opportunity. No good. Han Feng knew that he was about to be in big trouble, so he forced himself to calmly show a smile and rushed to the beautiful woman in the bathtub and said in a casual manner. Hey. Big sister, good morning ah, early in the morning, and bubble bath? Saying that, without moving, he lifted up the waist of his pants, Han Feng pretended that nothing had happened, turned around and took a step, walking down towards the steps one step, two steps, three steps. The eye was about to step down the steps, and escape was in sight. Boom! Inside the compartment, a sound of water bursting came out, and in the next moment, Han Feng only felt a strong wind coming from behind him, and before he could turn around, his buttocks suddenly suffered a thunderous blow. Han Feng once again deeply experienced the existence of ground attraction as his entire body rose in a parabolic line and flew directly out of the small courtyard, smashing heavily into the flower bushes outside the courtyard. Bang! Inside the west wing courtyard, the door to the room was heavily closed, and Chu Hanshin's bone-chilling voice came out from inside. Take half a step into the west wing again and I'll break your legs. Ah! Uh. Han Feng collapsed in the flower garden and let out a mournful moan, sing. This time he felt very innocent, early in the morning for three silver coins, almost out of the three visits of sincerity. But I didn't realize that the money was not borrowed, but also once again was treated inhumanely. Who would have thought that this woman, in the middle of the morning, would be taking a bath in her room, rubbing his still fiery buttocks, Han Feng showed his teeth and stood up. Chu Han Kor this foot is really not light, if not Han Feng has crossed into the martial arts apprentice three stars, muscle skin membrane have been tempered, estimated that this foot can let him crawl back, not a few days recuperation cannot get out of bed. Standing up with difficulty, Han Feng refastened the waistband of his pants and glanced grudgingly towards the west room, and now, after this incident, the plan of borrowing money is estimated to be out of the question, so he can only think of another way staggering towards his room. Along the way, Han Feng, however, could not help but recall the scene that he had just seen outside the west room, and could not help but TSK TSK TSK. Gee. That tub is white. Neither Han Feng nor Chu Hanxin went to breakfast until noon, when Binger made lunch and went to invite the two again, and only then did they each come to the front hall lobby. Sitting at the dinner table, Han Feng carefully glanced at Chu Hanxin, at this moment Chu Hanxin has returned to her usual cold appearance, not saying a word and calmly eating, as if nothing has happened. Just occasionally, when an inadvertent glance swept toward Han Feng, that stern, knife-like gaze made the back of Han Feng, who was already a bit weak, a chill after eating for a moment, Chu Hanxin suddenly looked at Binger and said. Why hasn't Ray come over? Binger responded in a hurry. Third master went out early this morning and didn't even eat breakfast. Hmm. Shu Hanshin's beautiful eyebrows imperceptibly frowned as she asked again. Did he say where he went? Ice shook her head. The third master left in a hurry and didn't say anything. Shu Hanshin immediately looked at Butler Zhang and said. Steward Zhang, did Xiao Lei go to the shrine in the morning? Butler Zhang thought for a while and said. Seems like I've been there once. Shu Hanshin's face changed slightly as she said to Binger. 
Binger, go see if the family gold order in the ancestral hall is still there. Binger obviously also sensed something bad, and hurriedly got up, darted towards the shrine, and ran back in a short while, panting big. Missy, the family gold order is not. Missing. The family gold order is a mark of honor issued by the main lineage of the Han family for those who have made great contributions within the family. If someone in the family made a big mistake, they could offset the mistake once with the family's gold order, which was similar to Han Feng's death exemption gold medal in his previous life. When Han Xiaotian died, the main vein of the Han family issued him a family gold order, and as Han Feng and the others were stripped away from the main vein, this gold order was brought to the branch and enshrined in the ancestral hall along with Han Xiaotian's spirit seat. When he heard that the family's gold order was missing, Zhu Hanxin's face finally changed completely, and he rose up expansively. You guys wait at home, I'll go to the main vein. After saying that, Zhu Hanxin didn't explain anything and got up to leave unexpectedly, Zhu Hanxin had not yet stepped out of the hall. Boom! Outside the gate of the Han mansion, there was a loud bang, and the dilapidated courtyard door directly broke free from the doorframe and collapsed with a loud bang. Immediately, a group of a dozen or so people burst into the Han mansion's compound in a big way. The leader was a young man in his early twenties, tall and thin, with a fairly handsome face, but the shadowy and unkind light in his eyes made people unable to feel the slightest bit of goodwill. The youth was followed by a dozen or so people, all young men in matching black shirts. As soon as she saw the person in charge, Binger couldn't help but say in a timid voice. Isn't this the main vein side disciple Han Yuan? The Han family is a large family, the family Han children alone will have hundreds of people, including the direct descendants of the elders of the Hall of Elders, are considered to be the family's main lineage of children, the others are considered to be the sideline if these collateral descendants were separated from the main lineage, they would become a branch of Han Feng's existence. Of course, no side children are willing to leave the family, after all, the main vein of the Han family is the core of the family, where the resources are most concentrated, so many side children will tend to the main vein children, in order to get more cultivation resources. This Han Yuan in front of him is no exception, he is the beloved of Han Chen, the main lineage of the Han family. Han Yuan led a group of people, striding into the branch of the Han family, all the way to the front of the hall, where his eyes happened to see, standing in the doorway, Zhu Hanxin Han Yuan's eyes flashed with a stunning luster, but immediately his face was piled with a smile and he arched his hand. Ha ha! Little brother Han Yuan, pay respects to sister-in-law. He said, and drank at the crowd behind him. Why don't you come over quickly and meet your sister-in-law? The group of people were all smilingly bowing towards Chu Hanxin. Chu Hanxin at the doorway, however, said with a slightly cold expression. Who is your sister-in-law? The smile on Han Yuan's face became more and more clear as he sniffed. Ha ha! Miss Chu is joking, you and big brother Han Chen have both already set a marriage contract, and this is about to be a wedding, so of course we should call you sister-in-law. When these words came out, Binger, Butler Zhang, and Han Feng in the hall were all shocked. And Chu Hanxin heard the words, actually actually did not refute, only the color of the ice cold said, what are you doing here? Han Yuan laughed. He he he. Little brother is under the orders of big brother Han Chen, officially coming to offer his hand in marriage to Miss Chu. Saying that, he waved his hand, and behind him, a black-shirt youth came forward with a heavy tray in both hands, and Han Yuan pulled off the brocade cloth on the tray, and under the sunlight, a golden light dazzled. What was contained in this tray was actually a pile full of gold coins. Han Yuan laughed. Miss Chu, this thousand gold coins is only a part of the bride price, here is another gift list, take a look and see if there is anything else you need, but there is no harm in saying so. Big brother Han Shen explained that there will also be a ten thousand gold bride price sent to Miss Chu on the day she marries my big brother. With that, Han Yuan took two steps forward and handed Chu Hanxin the gift list in his hands with both hands however, Chu Hanxin did not reach out to receive it, but instead looked at Han Yuan Dao with an icy expression. Today my little brother Han Lei went to the main vein of the clan, I don't know if you guys have seen him. Hearing Chu Hanxin's words, Han Yuan's eyes flashed a flash of color, but he made a blank face and said. Ah. Uh. Miss Chu said Han Lei brother, I really haven't seen it yet, why don't Miss Chu accept the bride price first, and I'll take the brothers to look for it. A flash of sternness flashed in Chu Hanxin's eyes as he coldly looked at Han Yuan. I'm not going to take anything without seeing Ray. Han Yuan's back chilled at Chu Hanxin's gaze, and he couldn't help but take a step backward, and after his face changed for a while, he laughed again. Fine, everything according to what Miss Chu said. After saying that, Han Yuan was shouting towards the main door. Then carry the man in. Chapter 17, the head of the family is here as Han Yuan's words fell, for black-shirt youths, carrying a stretcher outside the gate of the Han family branch, walked in and set the stretcher down in the center of the Han family compound. On top of the stretcher was a figure stained with blood, curled up on top of the stretcher, with a weak breath that seemed to have fallen into a coma. The moment she saw this figure on the stretcher, Chu Hanxin's gaze suddenly condensed. Inside the hall, Binger and Butler Zhang also let out a gasp at the same time. Third master. The person on the stretcher is Han Lei, who left home this morning. 
At the moment he was curled up on top of the stretcher, his body was bruised and bleeding, even if he fell into a coma, his body would still twitch a few times from time to time, and in the palm of his right hand, he was holding a bloodstained golden token tightly. Looking at Han Lei on the stretcher, Chu Hanshin's gaze instantly turned morose and cold as she stared at Han Yuan, give me an explanation. Feeling the morose coldness of Chu Hanshin's body, Han Yuan was slightly startled in his heart. He knew that Chu Hanshin had already crossed into the Martial Apprentice 6 stars, while he only had the strength of a Martial Apprentice 4 stars, so once the other party made a move, he had no chance of winning at all. At that moment, Han Yuan could only force a smile. Ha ha. Miss Chu don't be angry, in fact, today's matter is just a misunderstanding. Brother Han Lei took the family's golden order today and made a scene within the main vein, and also trespassed into the Hall of Elders, even injuring a few of the family's sons within the clan, which is why we had to send someone to stop him. During the block, a few of my brothers accidentally hit a little harder, but I've taught them all a hard lesson. This is not with Han Lei brother's back, and afraid of Miss Chu see the mood is not good, this is the next step, did not tell the girl beforehand this matter, I blame me for my own initiative, Miss Chu do not take offense I don't worry, we'll all be family before long, and we'll cover all of brother Han Lei's medical and convalescence expenses. Listening to Han Yuan's explanation, Chu Han core of a pair of slender jade hand is gradually clenched into a fist, above the pretty face, frost all over the body of an awe-inspiring momentum dispersal, so that the crowd present, are all feel the heart of a tight. When Han Yuan saw this, his face changed and he immediately opened his mouth. Miss Chu, I'm sure you should know very well what Han Lei is doing by traveling to the clan today. Brother Han Shen said that he can forget about this and continue to honor his agreement with you, so I still hope that the girl won't be impulsive and do something that she will regret. Once these words came out, Chu Hanshin seemed to think of something, his body slightly shook, and his originally taut body, gradually disheveled again, and his clenched fists also loosened seeing this, Han Yuan secretly wiped a handful of cold sweat from his forehead, and with a sigh of relief in his heart, he bravely handed over the gift list in his hand again. Miss Chu, please also accept the gift list, big brother Han Shen said that he has already formally proposed your marriage to the Hall of Elders, if you accept the bride price today, he will personally come to marry you three days later. No. Don't promise them, big sister. At this moment, on the stretcher, there was a hoarse and weak voice, but Han Lei did not know when he came to his senses, and looked at Chu Hanshin with difficulty, his body trembling uncontrollably. Han Yuan swept a glance at Han Lei and said with a frown. Miss Chu, the Hall of Elders has already agreed to the marriage between you and big brother Han Shen, at this time if you refuse you should know what kind of punishment the family will impose on the Han family branch. Looking at the big red gift list in front of him, Chu Hanshin's gaze trembled for a while, and a struggling look appeared in his eyes, but when he saw the bloodstained Han Lei on the stretcher, he thought of a certain guy with no cultivation at all, and no ability to defend himself. Chu Hanshin's delicate body trembled, finally closing her eyes in resignation, hiding the light of despair under her curtains, and reaching out to receive the gift list. However, Chu Hanshin's hand had only reached mid-air when it was grabbed by another large, warm hand. I don't agree with this. A familiar voice rang in Chu Hanshin's ears, and although it wasn't loud, it carried a will as resolute as iron. Chu Hanshin opened her eyes wide, and a familiar back figure had blocked her behind. That single thin back had disappointed her countless times and left her, but today, he was like a big mountain in front of her Han Feng's sudden appearance was unexpected by everyone, even Binger and Butler Zhang, who both revealed stunned looks. For this family head, they are in too much understanding, since the death of the old family head, Han Feng has become timid and fearful, allowing people to bully, not to mention family members were bullied, even if he was ravaged, but also do not dare to make any resistance. And today, in this moment of crisis, he even stood up. Han Feng's appearance also caused Han Yuan, who was originally smiling, to freeze in his face as he looked at the young man standing in front of him, a flash of astonishment appearing in his eyes. Han Feng from the time Han Yuan arrived at the Han family branch, he hadn't noticed Han Feng's presence at all, and at this moment, Han Feng couldn't help but feel greatly surprised, but immediately, Han Yuan's face revealed a touch of mockery hee hee. Han Feng, you're not in the Zhou family as your door-to-door -door son in law why are you free to come back to your mother's house? In the face of Han Yuan's mockery, Han Feng's originally expressionless face revealed a smirk. He he. Han Yuan, I am the head of the Han family branch, it shouldn't be strange for me to appear here. Hum. Han Yuan snorted coldly and nonchalantly. Where you appear has nothing to do with me, but today is the big celebration of big brother Han Shen's offer of marriage to Miss Chu, so just stand to the side and don't come and get in the way. Obviously, Han Yuan did not place Han Feng in his eyes at all, and his words were full of contemptuous mockery. The smile on Han Feng's face became even more intense. Oh. Why am I not aware of such a great joy? Han Yuan had a disdainful look on his face, who the hell are you and why should you know? The smile on Han Feng's face suddenly turned cold, his gaze fixed on Han Yuan. What am I, I am the head of the family of the Han family branch, your big brother wants to marry Chu Hanshin from the Han family branch, have you ever asked me, the head of the family? Han Yuan was startled by Han Feng's sudden stern gaze, and then once he heard the other party's words, his face immediately turned ugly. 
Looking at Han Feng with a mischievous expression, Han Yuan clenched his fist, vaguely having the impulse to strike, but then thinking of Chu Hanxin standing behind Han Feng, he finally forced himself to hold back his anger and looked at Chu Hanxin. Miss Chu, please make a decision on this matter. Chu Hanxin, however, did not look at Han Yuan at all, and at this moment, she looked at Han Feng's back, and a flash of luster in her eyes lit up in vain as she calmly said Han Feng is the head of the family of my branch of the Han family, if he lets me marry, I'll marry, if he doesn't let me, I can't. When these words came out, Han Yuan could not help but change his face. Han Feng also turned his head at this moment and calmly glanced at Chu Hanxin, then he looked at Han Yuan and said in a single word. This family master does not accept this marriage, Chu Hanxin, do not marry. Han Yuan's gaze completely clouded over, his fists clenched, his teeth clacking, looking at the Han Feng in front of him, he hated to pull out the sword at his waist and kill him with a single stroke of the sword. But Chu Hanxin's strength, he was aware of it, there was no way he could hurt Han Feng in front of her, and he couldn't get a result if he continued to stalemate like this unable to do anything, Han Yuan swept Han Feng a glance with a threatening gaze. Good, since the Han family branch refuses to agree to this marriage, we will immediately return to the main vein and report this matter, and ask the family elders to decide on everything. After saying that, Han Yuan waved his hand, and the group of people turned around and headed towards the gate of the Han mansion. Behind them, however, came Han Feng's icy voice. Stop! Han Yuan stopped his steps and turned back violently, his eyes flashing ferociously. What else do you want? Han Feng looked at the bruised Han lay on the stretcher, a stern aura surging in his eyes, his tone chilling. The Han family branch is not for you to come and go as you please, who injured my brother, get the hell out. Chapter 18 Men's Affairs Han Feng's words were like pouring oil on the fire, causing Han Yuan to finally hold back and laugh recklessly ha ha ha. A waste that was born with a wasted vein, how dare you clamor against us, do you think you're still the young master of the Han family? With that, Han Yuan took a step forward and looked at Han Lei, who was lying not far away, and sneered. I'm the one who injured him, so what can you do about it? I'm not afraid to tell you, if it weren't for the fact that big brother Han Chen will be marrying Miss Chu, just by the fact that this guy dared to take the golden order and go to the clan to withdraw from the marriage, sweeping away big brother Han Chen's face in public, I'd have to waste both his hands and feet. As soon as these words came out, Han Feng couldn't help but narrow his eyes slightly as he looked at the clamoring Han Yuan, an evil smile suddenly spreading across his face. Oh. Very well, just stand up for yourself. Saying that, in the crowd's astonished gazes, Han Feng stepped out of the hall and walked step by step towards Han Yuan, who was standing in the courtyard. Han Feng. Seeing Han Feng's actions, Chu Hanxin finally couldn't help herself and lightly called out, and wanted to raise her feet to follow Han Feng however, Han Feng looked back at Chu Hanxin, but said calmly. Women stay out of men's business. Although Han Feng's voice was calm, it carried an unquestionable aura, causing Chu Hanxin to be slightly stunned, she had never felt this kind of aura on Han Feng before, and her footsteps subconsciously stopped. Eldest miss, will he be in danger, family master? Binger looked at Han Feng's back somewhat anxiously, wanting to block, but not daring to disobey Han Feng's orders. Chu Hanxin looked at Han Feng's figure as he moved forward again, the light in his eyes grew brighter and brighter, and said softly to Binger. Do what he says, I won't put him in danger. Seeing that Han Feng was actually walking towards him step by step, Han Yuan was first stunned, then he couldn't help but have a brilliant light flash through his eyes originally, he hadn't dared to take a shot at Han Feng due to the fact that Chu Hanxin was around, but now that the other party didn't know how to die and had sent himself to the door, he couldn't blame himself. Han Yuan directly clasped his hands in front of his body and looked at Han Feng with a playful expression, along with the dozen or so family head's collateral descendants behind him, all of whom had a relaxed expression like they were watching. And Han Feng wasn't moved at all, just walking towards him step by step, not too fast and not too slow. When he walked to the point where he was only three steps away from Han Yuan, a cold light flashed in Han Feng's eyes, and his feet suddenly exerted force as his body accelerated. Han Feng jerked forward and raised his hand, slamming it towards Han Yuan's face. Han Feng was now a three-star martial apprentice, and his physical qualities had long since changed, and this sudden acceleration of a punch was so fast that it even brought up a subtle sound of strong wind as he swung out this fist, Chu Hanxin's gaze instantly froze, and he revealed a look of astonishment. And Han Yuan, who had originally clasped his hands in front of his body with a teasing face, was startled when he saw this punch, which was rapidly coming towards his face. However, after all, he already had the cultivation of martial apprentice four-star, and had been trained by the family, his hands were naturally extraordinary, and under the shock in his heart, Han Yuan instantly reacted. While taking a sharp step back, he twisted his body to the left and dodged, Han Feng's sudden punch almost grazed Han Yuan's face. Sensing the power of this punch from a close distance, Han Yuan's face could not help but show a few shocked colors. Was this really the power of this trash Han Feng? Why did it feel like the power of his punch wasn't even inferior to that of a three-star martial apprentice's existence within the family? If this punch really blasted on his face, even if Han Yuan was a four-star martial apprentice, it was estimated that he would be knocked out of his head for a while after the shock, Han Yuan couldn't help but burn with anger again in his heart, if he was really injured by this white dragon county's number one waste today, where would his face be, and how would big brother Han Chen rely on himself again? 
As soon as he thought of this, Han Yuan couldn't help but clench his fists tightly, so he wanted to fight back. However, before he could strike, his chest was hit hard. However, after Han Feng's punch fell short, his body took advantage of the situation to lean left and shoulder him in the chest. Han Yuan's body was already a bit unsteady because of his hasty retreat and dodge, and by Han Feng's sudden collision, his center of gravity shifted and he couldn't help but stagger back to one side and Han Feng also seized this opportunity, a twist of the body, towards him again rushed, and there are no moves to speak of, swinging his fist will split his head, towards the face of Han Yuan smashed, each punch is with a shocking force. The moment he saw Han Feng charging, Han Yuan sensed that it was not good, and he retreated quickly to stabilize his body, while reaching out his hand to beckon and block, and at the same time, swinging his head to dodge Han Feng's attack. However, the so-called messy fist kills the teacher master, Han Feng has not undergone any martial arts training, punching is also no rules and regulations, with the words of the past life, this is a pass through the authentic Wangbok fist. If it was the previous Han Feng throwing punches, Han Yuan would probably not even bother to dodge, but now it was different, Han Feng was already a three-star martial apprentice existence, and the force of each punch was not light, even Han Yuan did not dare to resist it however, this Wangbok fist is really weird and unpredictable, in the body out of balance. Although Han Yuan tried his best to dodge most of the other party's attacks, in the end, he still received a punch on his nose. Bang! A solid punch in the nose above, Han Yuan cannot help Iowa a miserable scream, knows a hot stinging pain, two nosebleeds immediately flowed down. What's worse, the opposite side of the Han Feng did not mean to stop at all, a punch hit, is still crazy towards Han Yuan rushed, there is a take advantage of his disease to kill him, crazy posture. Han Yuan heart and under the shock and anger, but also finally do not care about the image, in the Han Feng attack at the same time, violently twisted body, a crouch, a lazy donkey roll, in the ground extremely fast roll a circle, and quickly jump up, finally and Han Feng pulled away from the distance the moment Han Yuan avoided his own attack, Han Feng already knew that it was not good, but he knew better than that, once you fail, you fail again. Without any hesitation at all, with a life-fighting madness aura, Han Feng charged towards Han Yuan once again. Seeing Han Feng's life-threatening madness, a trace of fear flashed in Han Yuan's eyes, but feeling the fiery pain at the tip of his nose and the shocked gazes of the surrounding crowd, the anger in Han Yuan's heart could no longer be suppressed. Han Feng, you punk, you can't blame me if you want to send yourself to death. In the midst of the violent shout, Han Yuan interlaced his palms up and down, suddenly assuming a strange stance, and once again let out a low cry under his breath spirit wind palm. In an instant, Han Yuan advanced instead of retreated and came directly towards Han Feng face to face, while his palms moved rapidly in front of his body, which actually caused Han Feng to be a bit dazzled and unable to capture the other party's palm movements. The moment the two sides met, Han Feng's fist had not yet blasted out, and a stern aura pounced on his face, Han Yuan's palm actually came after him, directly slapping towards his chest. Feeling the other party's harsh palm force, Han Feng's face changed slightly, did not dare to take this palm, at the critical moment, his arms crossed in front of his body, the palm force slapped directly on top of Han Feng's arms. Han Feng only felt a stabbing pain in both of his arms, and a huge force shook his forward momentum and sent him directly backwards. Without waiting for Han Feng to react, Han Yuan's other palm, like a spirit snake, slapped directly on top of his right shoulder boom. With a muffled sound, Han Feng was blasted backwards by the palm, his body slamming heavily onto the ground, a stabbing pain drilling through his shoulder, his bones were like they were falling apart, and a strand of blood was uncontrollably spilling out from the corner of his mouth. Seeing Han Feng, who had been blown to the ground by his own palm, Han Yuan gasped two mouthfuls of rough air and stood in front of Han Feng, looking down at him with a smug sneer. He he he. You a waste thing also dare to fight with me, back then you have your father to support you, now your father is dead, you give lousy shoes are not even worthy. Almost the instant Han Feng was hit by the palm and fell to the ground, Chu Hanxin, who had originally stood in the Han family hall and watched Han Feng strike in shock, had her face instantly covered in froster figure was like the wind, and she directly swept out of the hall door, about to rush into the courtyard to rescue Han Feng. But right at this moment, Han Feng, who was lying on his back, suddenly, and without warning violently raised his foot and kicked. Just put down a vicious sentence, feel physically and mentally comfortable Han Yuan, only to feel a sudden cold lower body, the hairs of sweat around the body, just want to dodge, but it is already too late. Bang! With a muffled sound, this sudden kick from Han Feng heavily kicked Han Yuan between his legs. Well! Han Yuan did not even manage to issue a miserable scream, his eyes instantly rounded, whimpered, covered his crotch with his hand and bent over like a shrimp, his whole body trembling violently and just then, Han Feng, who was lying on the ground, had a flash of caracal color in his eyes. He suddenly leapt up, and with lightning speed, he clasped his hands around Han Yuan's head, and with a knee bump, he ruthlessly toppled over his opponent's front door. Boom! Chapter 19, Countering Violence with Violence The saying the villain dies from talking too much is an unchanging truth. After Han Yuan knocked Han Feng to the ground with a single move, he thought he had won a great victory and gave a cruel remark, thinking that he had comprehensively defeated Han Feng from all aspects of body and mind. But where the other party had an ounce of self-respect and martial virtues, they should either bow their heads and admit defeat at this moment, or ball their eyes out and show the awareness that losers should have however, Han Yuan had completely miscalculated, and Han Feng, 
who had countless experiences of fighting and brawling with gangsters in his previous life, knew one thing. That is, never give your opponent a chance to turn the tables, or it will be you who will fall in the end. As for martial virtues and all that, I'm not a grandmaster, so what martial virtues are I talking about? Therefore, the moment a kick hit Han Yuan's lifegate, Han Feng directly flew up and connected with a knee strike, giving Han Yuan a full peach blossom. Han Yuan let out a miserable scream, and his originally bowed body was directly toppled backward on his back by this knee, while Han Feng had no intention of showing any mercy at all. Taking advantage of this opportunity, he grabbed Han Yuan's collar, and with his other hand, he blasted a dozen punches towards Han Yuan's abdomen, causing him to vomit blood directly and in the face of such a frantic attack by Han Feng, Han Yuan, whose face was stained with blood, finally reacted after a brief moment of disorientation. His gaze became livid and a frantic hiss escaped his mouth. Han Feng, I want you to die. Han Yuan was, after all, a four-star martial apprentice who had already tempered his meridians, and his resistance to blows and explosive power exceeded Han Feng's, and even at this moment, when he was already severely injured, he still erupted with a strong force. He grabbed the back of Han Feng's collar with one hand, but his other hand was on top of the hilt of the longsword at his waist, and with a violent jerk, he pulled the longsword out halfway, the blade flashing with cold light. At this moment, Han Yuan had already fallen into a state of madness, no longer caring if it would take Han Feng's life, he drew his sword and wanted to chop. However, while Han Yuan was ruthless, Han Feng was even more ruthless. The moment he felt the flash of sword light, Han Feng didn't even think about it and grabbed Han Yuan's body with both hands, his head directly toward the other party's head, slamming it heavily. Dang! A loud boom shook the hearts of the people standing inside the Han clan's compound, and their hearts jumped at the same time. Immediately, the furious Han Yuan, finally his powerless backward planted on the ground, face forehead, has been covered with blood, body insufficient trembling, throat issued a hoarse not like human voice moan, chant. As for Han Feng, he was likewise seeping blood from his forehead at the moment and staggered a few steps before he managed to stabilize himself. Just at this moment, within the Han family branch compound, the dozen or so collateral sons and daughters who followed Han Yuan to come here, finally came to their senses from shock, and seeing that Han Yuan was covered in blood and lying on the ground, a young man in the panic shouted in a hurry quickly. Save Han Wan! A group of people rushed over towards the duo, however, without waiting for the crowd to rush forward, Han Feng, who had just stabilized his stance, suddenly leaned over, and with a handful of his sword, which Han Yuan had already drawn halfway just now, violently drew it out. Choke on! The longsword came out of its sheath, and in a flash of cold light, Han Feng directly placed the longsword across Han Yuan's neck. Whoever dares to step forward, I'll kill him. Han Feng let out a cold shout, his reddish eyes violently swept towards, a group of Han family side children. Han Feng's move instantly caused the dozen or so people to instantly stop their forward momentum, and everyone stood frozen in place, not daring to go forward looking at Han Feng, who was holding a long sword, with blood seeping from his forehead and a murderous aura in his eyes, the crowd no longer had the same playful and disdainful expression on their faces as before, and instead, they were all in deep fear and disbelief. No one had expected that this White Dragon County's notorious number one wastrel would be able to defeat Han Yuan, who was extremely outstanding amongst the Han family's collateral descendants, and in such a bloody, insane manner. Rao as these Han family children are also experienced a lot of practical exercises, and other family children with other family competition brawl, but has never seen, such as Han Feng this crazy way of fighting, this is simply do not want to kill the way to fight. Han Feng's madness had sent chills down their spines, and now that they saw the other party with his sword in hand and the blade hanging over Han Yuan's neck, none of them even dared to suspect that Han Feng was bluffing, and they were all shocked by the murderous aura that he carried. Even behind Han Feng, only a few feet away from him, to be ready to help Chu Hanxin, at this moment, looking at the figure that stood with a sword, his expression could not help but be stunned at this moment, it was as if she saw, that magnificent figure that had once killed and passed through countless brigands and saved her from hell. Shocking the entire audience in an instant, Han Feng slowly withdrew his gaze and looked at the Han Yuan at his feet, a surprisingly oozing smile appearing on his face. At this moment, Han Yuan's eyes slightly opened two slits, felt the cold touch on his neck, and saw on Han Feng's face, the creepy smile, couldn't help but to have a trembling gaze, his body trembled even more, hissed in alarm you. You can't move me, I. I'm big brother Han Shen's henchman, if you move me, the main vein will surely demote the Han family branch. Upon hearing this, the smirk on Han Feng's face grew even thicker, and his gaze glanced over to Han Lei, who was not far away and lying on a stretcher, bruised and battered, and then to Han Yuan Dao, who said in a chilling voice. Didn't you just say that you were going to break both my brother's hands and feet? I. Han Yuan's heart was flabbergasted, and without waiting for him to make a reply, Han Feng suddenly lifted his foot and stamped it heavily on top of his wrist. Click. Ah. A toothsome crunching sound accompanied by Han Yuan's mournful scream echoed in the courtyard, and Han Yuan's wrist bone was directly stepped on Han Feng, however, did not stop at all, and made four kicks in a row, stepping on both of Han Yuan's hands and feet to break them off, Han Yuan's face twisted, and he directly fainted from the pain. When the group of Han family's side children in the courtyard saw the scene, the chill in their hearts increased, and there was only one feeling in their hearts at the moment. Tough, too tough. 
This weekdays, by the people of the White Dragon County is after dinner, gossiping and making fun of the waste, today but show such a ruthless and decisive side, is it that this person's previous cowardice, are all disguised out of it? And after doing so, Han Feng's gaze coldly swept toward the group and said word for word. Go back and tell Han Chen that if he ever dares to touch my Han Feng's family again, I'll make your Han family's main vein chicken and dog. A single sentence caused the entire Han mansion compound to be dead silent, and the dozen or so Han family side descendants couldn't help but shiver with excitement, and no one dared to meet Han Feng's gaze and after Han Feng said this, he tossed the longsword in his hand toward the ground and casually said. Take this piece of shit and get out. When these words came out, the crowd was slightly stunned, and then as if they had been amnestied, several blackshirt youths stepped forward and lifted Han Yuan up with seven hands and eight feet, not even daring to pick up their swords, and then panicked and wanted to leave the Han family branch. However, before the crowd could step out of the door of the Han clan, Han Feng's voice came from behind them again. Stop. The crowd's footsteps stalled, and not a single person actually dared to take half a step out of the gate, all of them looking at Han Feng with some horror Han Feng's gaze crossed over the crowd and finally looked at the youth, who was still carrying a plate full of gold coins, and said. Leave the gold coins behind. The crowd froze in unison, and even Chu Hanxin, Binger, and Butler Zhang were all showing stunned expressions. However, he heard Han Feng add immediately afterward. Kicked my Han family's gate, do you want to leave just like that, this money will be the cost of repairing the gate? Ah. Uh. The moment these words came out, the faces of the crowd once again became strange, a thousand gold coins, not to mention repairing the gate, even if it was to buy a hundred brand new gates would be enough, this is clearly robbing while the fire is still burning. However, Han Feng's performance today had completely shocked these Han clan children, and with anxiety in their hearts, how could they still dare to argue with him, as the young man with the gold coins hurriedly and honestly folded his arms and came back Han Feng said to Binger. Binger, put the gold coins away. When Binger heard this, she was originally still a bit hesitant, but when she saw the thousand gold coins that glittered with golden light, approaching towards her, the little lowly's beautiful eyes widened, and she couldn't help but take a step. Immediately a burst of trotting forward, hands received the heavy gold coins, Binger excited little face reddened, will tray tightly embraced in the arms, as if to see a long-lost relatives in general. Now. Now can we go? After handing over the gold coins, that Montenegrin youth asked jitterily. Han Feng, however, called out to them once again. And wait. Under the gaze of these people's shocked and uncertain gazes, Han Feng looked toward Han Yuan, who was being lifted up by a few people, with a look of great righteousness on his face. Mph, you guys don't say that my branch of the Han family is unreasonable, since I crippled him, I can still afford to pay the medical bills. Ice. Han Feng called Binger to his body and reached out to pick up a gold coin in the tray, frowning slightly but putting it back in. At this moment, the master-servant duo displayed an excellent tacit understanding. Binger hurriedly reached out, and from the money pouch on her waist, she fished out more than ten copper coins and handed them to Han Feng. Seeing this, Han Feng's face showed appreciation, but he twisted his fingers and took out one of these copper coins, tossing it towards the opposite side with a big hand. Take it and heal him. Chapter 20 Brotherly Love A group of Han clan side children, taking a copper coin that Han Feng threw to them, rushed out of the gate as if they were fleeing with Han Yuan inside the Han family compound, the scene was silent for a time. The gazes of Chu Hanxin, Binger, and Butler Zhang were all fixedly looking at the figure standing in the courtyard at the moment, with all sorts of complex emotions flashing through their eyes. But without exception, the gazes of the crowd were surging with an unprecedentedly hot luster. This family head, who had once made them lose hope countless times, had actually defended the dignity of the Han family branch today by virtue of his own strength, not only rejecting the proposal of marriage from the Han family's main vein, but also punishing the person who had injured Han lay ruthlessly. It was also only until today that they had seen from Han Feng, the aura that a family head should have. And as he watched the incoming people retreat as much as they could, Han Feng turned his gaze to Han Lei on the stretcher, and at this moment, that scaly teenager was also staring at himself in a daze the scene of Han Feng and Han Yuan fighting for their lives just now was seen by Han Lei in his eyes, his gaze was a bit dumbfounded, a bit unbelieving, and he even suspected for a moment that he had blurred his eyes. How could that older brother, who had once been incredibly cowardly and death-hungry, now stand up and fight to the death for himself and his big sister? Taking in the complex light in Han Lei's eyes, Han Feng paced over to Han Lei's stretcher, squatted down, looked Han Lei's injuries up and down, and opened his mouth to ask. Kid, how's the injury? Feeling the concern in Han Feng's eyes and looking at the blood that continued to seep out of his forehead, Han Lei's breathing couldn't help but become a few moments harsher, and his emotions were somewhat agitated as well, but he managed to suppress the fluctuations in his heart and responded, it's okay, it's just a few superficial wounds, I'm holding up. Seeing the touch of perseverance between Han Lei's brows, and his body that was obviously enduring the pain and trembling slightly, Han Feng gently patted the shoulder and grinned. Hey! When things come up in the future, brother will help you carry it. It is such a smile, a short sentence, but let Han Lei's heart shocked fiercely, originally resolute gaze openly moved, the eyes even slightly moist, but was stubborn teenager forced to hold back. 
After all, he was still just a 15-year-old teenager, and because his father had passed away since he was young and he couldn't get the protection of his older brother, he could only disguise himself as incomparably strong, desperately cultivating, and taking on the responsibilities of what should have been his older brother, Han Feng but today, Han Lei experienced for the first time, his brother's care and concern for himself, and this emotion between brothers made Han Lei's heart, which was already completely cold, thaw again. Han Feng didn't say any more, bent down, gently lifted Han Lei up, carrying him behind his back, and walked all the way towards the east wing, with Chu Han Xian, Binger, and Butler Zhang following silently behind him. On this journey, Han Lei's gaze couldn't stop trembling, and the corners of his mouth buzzed several times before he finally couldn't help but open his mouth. Brother! I'm sorry for the day. I shouldn't have said something like that. Hearing Han Lei address himself, Han Feng also stood still for a moment, but then he smiled and stopped between brothers, there's no apologizing, let's get better first. Han Lei nodded with glowing eyes as well. Good. Brother. Brothers don't need many words, but they can feel each other's heart. Han Feng carried Han Lei back to the east room, where Binger and housekeeper Zhang treated his wounds and put medicine on him, while Han Feng stepped out of the room, with Chu Hanxin following behind him all the way. When the two of them walked out of the small courtyard outside the compartment, Chu Hanxin finally opened his mouth. Don't hold out, it's just you and me here. When Han Feng heard the words, the corners of his mouth twitched as he glanced back at Chu Hanxin, finally unable to hold back any longer, his shoulders collapsed and he grimaced as he reached out to rub his shoulders. Hey! It hurts! In the battle just now, Han Feng's shoulder was hit by Han Yuan's palm and was knocked to the ground, but he rolled over and got up, turning to beat Han Yuan up it looked like Han Feng did not seem to be in any serious trouble, but in fact, that slap on his shoulder almost didn't break Han Feng's shoulder bone, and until this moment there was still a fiery and sharp pain in his heart. Han Feng just relied on a force of ruthlessness, resisted the pain, scared off the crowd, and insisted on carrying Han Lei back to the compartment, he thought that no one would be able to see, but did not think that Chu Hanxin had already seen through him. Seeing that Han Feng, who had been calm and self-contained just a moment ago, was now blushing in pain and couldn't stop pumping out cool air, Chu Hanxin's originally cold and indifferent pretty face finally couldn't help herself. Put. Chu Hanxin actually laughed, and the flavor of that smile seemed like it could thaw the icebergs and make all the flowers lose their color. However, Han Feng at this moment is completely not appreciate the mood, but instead the heart of the grudge incomparably, he is in pain like this, this woman is still laughing out, too heartless Chu Hanxin's smile was only maintained for an instant, and then immediately converged, quickly walking to Han Feng's body, she raised her hand toward Han Feng's shoulder somewhere is a point. Han Feng first felt a sharp pain, and then his shoulders gradually became numb, and that hot and sharp pain subsided a lot. Han Feng looked at Chu Hanxin with a surprised expression. And you know about medicine? Chu Hanxin, however, gave Han Feng a blank look and said, I only pointed the numb point on your shoulder to temporarily stop the pain for you, you were hit by Han Yuan's spirit wind palm, your injuries won't be healed that easily, I have golden sore medicine there, come with me. With that, Chu Hanxin walked forward on her own. Seeing this, Han Feng hesitated for a moment, but still followed. The two of them made their way to the west room where Chu Hanxin was located, and Chu Hanxin took out a bottle of gold sore medicine from the inner room, glancing at Han Feng, who was following behind her, his forehead still seeping blood and his body slightly staggering. Chu Hanxin hesitated for a moment but still led Han Feng into the inner room, pointing to his bed and saying. Take off your clothes and get on your back. What? Han Feng was dumbfounded when he heard this and subconsciously clasped his hands in front of his chest. Seeing Han Feng's actions, Chu Hanxin furrowed her eyebrows and said with an indifferent expression. What's there to be ashamed of in front of me, I've seen your bare ass when you were a kid. Ah? Uh. Han Feng couldn't help but stagnate, knowing that Chu Hanxin's words were also meant to spare himself from embarrassment, so he could only let out a bitter smile and reached out to undo his blouse, revealing his slightly thin body. Chu Hanxin glanced at Han Feng's bare, naked upper body, and despite her expression of indifference and calmness, her cheeks reddened imperceptibly, her gaze shifted away, and she said in a cold voice. Get on the ground. Han Feng could only honestly take off his shoes, climbed onto Chu Hanxin's show couch, and flung himself onto the bed. Chu Hanxin's bed wasn't exactly soft, and the bedding was a very plain fabric, but when Han Feng lay on the bed, a faint fragrance came from the tip of his nose, an aroma he was somewhat familiar with, and it should have been the body fragrance of Chu Hanxin's body. Once he thought that Chu Hanxin would sleep on this bed and couch every day, and at this moment, he was lying on the place where she had slept, Han Feng's heart was uncontrollably a bit fanciful but Han Feng quickly and on his own, gave birth to these charming thoughts, and feel ashamed, after all, Chu Hanxin is his big sister. However, on second thought, this big sister and his own half-blood relations are not, not to mention that he only came to this world a few days, in addition to received each other two beatings, each other, it seems that there is not half of the sibling friendship. Han Feng felt that he was just thinking about it in his heart, and it wasn't too much, right, when his mind was uncontrollable, giving birth to some fragrant and charming images. However, Han Feng's fragrant associations in his mind had only just unfolded a short while ago when his right shoulder suddenly became cold, accompanied by a stabbing pain, and all of his thoughts were interrupted. 
Shu Hanxin had already begun to apply the medicine for him, her technique was very skillful, that cold little hand was as tender as jade, but Han Feng only felt a burst of tingling pain, as well as the burning sensation after the medicine gradually dispersed it was difficult for Han Feng to focus any longer, so he could only endure the pain and let out gradually ragged gasps. Chapter 21, Mundane Grade Martial Skills Inside the west room of the Han mansion, Han Feng was bare naked, lying on top of Chu Han Xian's boudoir show couch, with heavy gasping noises emanating from between his nostrils, and an occasional burst of low-muffled grunts coming from him. On the edge of the bed, Xu Hanxin sprinkled the gold sore medicine on Han Feng's red and swollen shoulder while using some kind of subtle technique to evenly apply the ointment to Han Feng's shoulder while pushing and kneading him to accelerate the penetration of the medicine into his skin. Although the spirit martial continent was not like the feudal society of Han Feng's previous life, where women did not leave their doors but not out of the cabinet of the woman, the boudoirs generally cannot let the man to come and go as he pleases, even if it is their own father, elder brother also cannot. Today is perhaps to see an Han Feng injury is not light, and for their own sake, Chu Han core exception to let him into the house, and even lay on their own bed, personally give him medicine. At first, he didn't feel anything, but with the other parties gradually ragged gasps during Han Feng's medication, and then looking at Han Feng's back spine, the muscle lines that were tightened due to the pain. Chu Hanqin's heartbeat sped up a few points for no reason, and her cheeks began to burn, and she suddenly regretted somewhat letting Han Feng enter her room. If I had known, I should have given him the gold sore medicine and just let him put it on himself. But right now, the medicine was already halfway up, so it was too embarrassing to chuck Han Feng out of bed again this change in atmosphere, not only Chu Hanqin felt it, Han Feng also felt that there was something wrong, a big man of his own lying on someone else's girl's bed, humming like what words. Han Feng tried to hold back the pain and not let himself make half a sound, but as the pain intensified, it was a bit too much for him to bear, so he thought, distracting himself by talking. When he turned his head, he happened to look in the direction of the chamber hall, which was slightly empty, and Han Feng asked in a casual manner. Big sister, where is that bathtub in your house? As soon as those words left his mouth, Han Feng regretted them, and at the same time, he also noticed that Chu Hanqin's palm, which had originally been constantly kneading on his shoulder, suddenly stalled. Not waiting for Han Feng to open his mouth to explain. Chu Hanqin once again began to knead, but the strength of the kneading, but it is steeply aggravated, Han Feng cannot help but the whole body shook, the pain of the cold sweat flowed out big sister, listen to my explanation, I didn't mean. It's. Han Feng's strong desire to survive opened his mouth to explain, but was coldly interrupted by Chu Hanqin. Honestly, when did you start practicing? Hmm. Han Feng couldn't help but stare at his words, not expecting Chu Hanqin to suddenly ask about this. However, Han Feng's reaction was also extremely fast, and a bewildered look immediately appeared on his face. Cultivate. Big sister, what do you mean by this ah? Han Feng had traveled to this world, and the demon refining pot was his biggest secret, and he didn't intend to tell anyone about it. Seeing Han Feng's blank expression, Chu Hanqin couldn't help but reveal a meaningful smile and spoke quietly. Acting like it, do you think I can't see that your strength has already reached three stars of martial apprentice and is about to break through to the four-star realm? Or do you think it's normal for an ordinary person with no cultivation to defeat Han Yuan? The light in Xu Hanqin's eyes flashed, and the force in his hand increased again, why do you keep hiding it from us? Hiss. Han Feng couldn't help but draw in a breath of cool air and almost didn't jump up in pain. He felt very hurt in his heart, really, fairy tales are all lies, just now good people wipe medicine charming ambiguous atmosphere, at this moment has disappeared. Han Feng felt that he was cheated by Chu Han Xian, this is clearly a beauty trick to lure himself on the hook, its purpose is to torture himself off. Just now a big battle, Han Feng had long been exhausted, and also with a not-so-light injury, at this time fell into the hands of Chu Hanxin, he simply did not even have the strength to resist. Under the severe pain, I'm afraid that ordinary people would have honestly confessed, but Han Feng is different, once alone in the society, and all kinds of colorful characters to deal with, he has long practiced the unique skills, with the most sincere attitude to say the most blind words sis. Sis, I say, I tell the truth is not okay. Sure enough, as soon as Han Feng softened, the strength in Chu Hanqin's hands immediately relaxed, and his tone softened a few points. Go ahead, don't leave out a word. Han Feng revealed an expression of bitter patience and looked blearily at Chu Hanqin, but his mind was racing. A moment later, Han Feng revealed a serious expression. Big sister, you know that since I was young, I was recognized as being born with a wasted vein, a waste that can't cultivate, and although a lot of people mocked me, denigrated me, and slandered me. I was ostensibly unruly and uninhibited, like a fop, but in fact, I've never given up on myself. Whenever it's late at night, I try to cultivate alone, and even though it hasn't gotten any better over the years, I still haven't given up. Han Feng voice low with choking, like a darkness, in search of redemption of the lonely soul, the sight of the Chu Hanqin herd, seems to be touched very deep, a pair of beautiful eyes are quietly red. And Han Feng had actually been secretly paying attention to Chu Hanqin's expression, seeing that the other party had already gotten into the act, he immediately rode the heat and continued. The emperor's sky is not a burden, I know that sincerity is the key to success, in order not to drag the family down, I chose to join the Zhou family and cultivate without any distractions. 
Unexpectedly, just one night half a year ago, I had a dream in which a white-bearded old man appeared, and he passed on to me a wordless heavenly book of feats, and night after night, he transmitted his voice into my dreams, teaching me to cultivate. Since then, my body seems to have become much stronger, but I don't know, is this considered cultivation, after all, I was born with a wasted vein ah, big sister, could it be that I am now a spirit martial artist? After saying that, Han Feng also gazed at Chu Hanxin with a pair of eyes full of hope being certain I have to say, Han Feng's lying skills have reached the point of pure perfection, saying that he is almost convinced. Chu Hanxin's eyes also revealed a moving color, and she couldn't help but reach out and gently pat Han Feng's shoulder, somewhat apologetically. I am sorry, before. It was us who misunderstood you, it seems that your stoicism and hard work also touched the heavens, allowing you to have your own chance. Han Feng's heart almost burst with joy when he heard the words, this didn't just explain what happened to his own cultivation, it even covered up all those assholes he had done in the past. But on the surface, Han Feng still had a touched look on his face as he said, Big sister, don't say that, as the family head of the Han family branch, this is all something I should bear. When Chu Hanqin heard this, the palm of her hand that was placed on Han Feng's shoulder trembled slightly, and she gave Han Feng another deep look. The atmosphere was silent with a few warm and touching moments, and Han Feng had wanted to say a few more sensational words. But at this moment, Chu Hanqin suddenly said, By the way, little wind, this time when you had an accident in the city lord's mansion, although the Zhou family didn't intervene, but after all, you have joined the Zhou family, so when are you going to go back to the Zhou family to take a look? Ah? Uh? A sentence Han Feng asked a blank stare, yes, he is still a son-in-law status, the Han family is, at best, his mother's family. However, Han Feng was directly shaking his head, elder sister, this time, I want to stay in the branch for a longer period of time, so let's talk about the Zhou family's affairs later. Han Feng had no impression of this Zhou family, but somehow, there was a strong sense of disgust in his heart, which seemed to be the original owner's residual intention. But from the time the other party had ignored him and hadn't sent anyone to see him even now, Han Feng hadn't had an ounce of goodwill towards the Zhou family, so how could he take the initiative to go back? Moreover, his function in that area has not yet recovered, and Miss Zhou's conjugal relationship is also famous but not real, cannot be counted as a messy scum, where there is still so much to worry about. Hearing this, Chu Hanxin only said that, Han Feng has a grudge against the Zhou family, and could not help but persuade, Xiao Feng, you should not be too spirited, the Zhou family head is indeed unkind, but the Zhou family's eldest miss is after all already in a husband and wife relationship with you, and you can't leave her behind. Speaking of this, Chu Hanxin rarely blushed slightly, somewhat embarrassed, although she was Han Feng's eldest sister, but after all, she was still untouched. Han Feng heard the words, but some big head, this cannot be explained ah, it is difficult to tell big sister, his own that what cannot, not yet and Miss Zhou in death exchange it. Seeing the topic of conversation to the dead end, Han Feng only had to divert the attention of Chu Hanxin said. Big sister, let's not talk about that, you just said that Han Yuan made what wind and what palm, what is that? I clearly felt that his strength wasn't much stronger than mine, but the power of that palm seemed to be several times more powerful than his original strength. At those words, Chu Hanxin blanked Han Feng again. It's the spirit wind palm, that's a mortal grade lower stage martial art. Martial arts. Han Feng's eyes lit up, and a look of surprise appeared in his eyes, in the study of the Han residence, he had not seen a book related to martial arts. Seeing the strong desire for knowledge in Han Feng's eyes, Chu Hanxin's face finally revealed a trace of mildness and said. You've never practiced before, so naturally you're not clear about the learning of the cultivation path, but now since you've had the chance to have a body comparable to a three-star martial apprentice's body, you can cultivate some low-ranked martial skills. Chapter 22 Old Grudges Inside the compartment, Chu Hanxin then informed Han Feng in detail about the knowledge about martial arts and the description of the Chu Han Corps. Han Feng learned that the martial arts skills are similar to the previous life of martial arts films in the secret books of martial arts. There are boxing, palms, fingers, and even knives, guns, swords and halberds, axe and battle axe hooks and forks. And so on techniques. These martial arts can take the power possessed by a martial artist and utilize it to the extreme, creating an incredibly powerful attack that can cause great damage to the enemy. A spirit martial artist who had practiced martial arts was even able to take on multiple spirit martial artists of the same rank who hadn't practiced martial arts at the same time, and even challenge them across the ranks. The martial arts skills are also divided into three grades, mortal grade, spiritual grade, general grade, king grade and emperor grade. The emperor grade, each grade of martial arts, there are upper, middle and lower, three grades of grades martial skills are extremely precious, even if it is a mortal grade martial skill, only some forces with family heritage will have it. As for the spirit grade martial skills, within White Dragon County, only the main veins of the five great clans possessed them, and they were all family treasures. As for the higher grade, general grade martial skills, there had not been a single one in the entire White Dragon County, thus showing the rarity of the martial skills. It was also already extremely rare for Han Yuan to be able to cultivate a mortal grade low grade martial skill as a sideline descendant of his family. Chu Hanxi looked at Han Feng and said. Today, if you hadn't taken Han Yuan by surprise and grabbed the upper hand, and forced him to panic, coupled with the fact that he was gullible. 
With Han Yuan's strength of four stars as a martial apprentice and the execution of the mortal grade low grade martial skill spirit Winpong, even Xiao Lei, who was at the peak of three stars as a martial apprentice and had practiced the mortal grade low grade martial skill regretful mountain fist, was not a match for him against you, a guy who doesn't know half of the martial arts techniques, or even the basic moves, I guess you can be slapped to death in a few rounds, and you're considered lucky to have retrieved a small life. When Han Feng heard this, he couldn't help but be shocked in his heart, and only then did he realize how reckless he had been in taking the initiative to meet Han Yuan today, which was not much different from chasing after someone with a chopper with an empty hand, and punching them furiously all the way. Thinking of this, Han Feng couldn't help but look at Chu Hanshin with a somewhat grudging little look. Big sister. Since you already knew that this guy is so powerful, why don't you step in and stop me, no matter what you also help me ah. Seeing Han Feng's sultry, daughter-in-law-like appearance, Chu Hanshin couldn't help but slightly tickle the corners of his mouth, but said playfully. Has the Han family master forgotten who said that women should not meddle in men's affairs, and if you want to show off, I'm naturally too embarrassed to help you anymore. Ah? Uh. Han Feng was once again defeated and could only smile helplessly and bitterly. Immediately, Chu Hanshin added. Today, you disabled Han Yuan, and we are considered to have completely offended the main vein, so we need to be more careful with our actions in the future. Hearing Chu Hanqing mention this matter, Han Feng but coldly laughed, eldest sister, you don't have to worry too much, the main vein of the Han family borrowed the position of a branch family head and sidelined us, but then hypocritically sent a fine eye on her vein, so it can be seen that this group of fellows are pawning and establishing, and pay close attention to their reputation in that case, the more high profile and noticeable we are, the less they will dare to do anything to us. Chu Hanqing could not help but be stunned at his words, and looked at Han Feng with some surprise, obviously not expecting Han Feng to have this kind of sophistication in vision. Seeing Chu Hanshin's strange gaze, Han Feng knew that he had said a bit too much and hurriedly changed the subject. By the way, big sister, back then, when father served as the Han family's head, he made many contributions to the family, even if he passed away, the Han family's main vein shouldn't be so mean to us. Hearing Han Feng ask about this matter, a cold light flashed in Chu Hanshin's calm gaze and I'm afraid this is all because of that grand elder. Back then, the grand elder was bent on having his son, Han Xiaolong, succeed as the family head, but Han Xiaolong was unable to defeat his father in the family competition, and even secretly used trickery to try to have his father killed, only to have his cultivation ruined by his father on the spot instead. After that, the great elders, the father and son, held a grudge against their father, but because his father was powerful and had become the head of the Han family, and his reputation in the family was growing, they could only hold back. It wasn't until after my father passed away that the Grand Elder used his position in the Hall of Elders to take control of the family, stripping us of the main lineage while making every effort to pave the way for his grandson, Han Chen, to ascend to the throne. It's estimated that after the family competition in half a year, Han Chen will be succeeding as the new Han family head. Han Feng frowned after listening to Chu Hanshin's story, and after hearing the name Han Chen, he suddenly moved and looked at Chu Hanshin. Eldest sister, today Han Yuan is here to propose marriage for that Han Chen, right? Seeing Han Feng's flickering gaze, Chu Hanshin nodded indifferently and added. Ask whatever you want. Han Feng hesitated for a moment before speaking. Big sister, why did you agree to marry Han Chen? What is the agreement between you, or do? You like him? Without waiting for Chu Hanshin's reply, the back of Han Feng's head received a chestnut first, Chu Hanshin scolded. Nonsense, this matter ends here, don't ask any more questions, in any case, just don't mess with this person in the future. Han Feng held his head with an indignant face, but looking at the bland look on Chu Hanshin's face, Han Feng knew that she didn't like Han Chen. Knowing this, Han Feng inexplicably snickered, a demented smile appearing at the corner of his mouth snap. Taking another blow to the back of his head, Chu Hanshin said. What's all the giggling about, the medicine is on, put your clothes on and I'll bandage your forehead again. When Han Feng heard this, although he was a bit greedy for the aroma on this show couch, he didn't dare to play rogue in front of Chu Hanshin. By the time Han Feng got up and put his clothes back on, Xu Hanshin had already brought a roll of gauze and helped Han Feng clean the wound, and after simply applying medicine, he began to bandage it up. Strangely enough, although Chu Hanshin's massage technique was skillful, this wound bandaging craft was really a bit unsatisfactory. Han Feng just forehead hit a not too deep wound, but hard to beat Chu Hanshin with gauze on the head wrapped round and round, and the previous life of the Arab sheik's headgear is a match. What's more, Chu Hanshin finally tied a rather girlish bow in front of Han Feng's forehead. Han Feng stood in front of the bronze mirror, looking at his own appearance, his smile was a bit bitter. Chu Hanshin on the side was also a bit embarrassed, forced himself to calm down and handed Han Feng the gold sore medicine, told him to remember to go back and change the medicine every day, and urged him to leave. Han Feng could only as thank Chu Hanshin, snapped and left, just walked to the door but was called out by Chu Hanshin again. Wait a minute, you bring those too. Chu Hanshin said, and did not avoid Han Feng, lifted the bedding from a hidden compartment under the bedpan, took out a square bag and handed it to Han Feng. When we left the main vein, the main vein only distributed three mortal grade martial skills to us, two attack type martial skills, and one body technique martial skill. 
Although you can't continue to raise your cultivation level, your physical strength isn't too weak, and with the cultivation of these martial arts techniques, you'll be able to have some more defense skills you should take these martial arts back first, and when your body heals, then you can study them and find a suitable martial art for you to cultivate. If there's anything you don't understand, feel free to come and ask me, but remember don't presume to cultivate three martial arts at the same time, the path of martial arts is most concerned with greed and chewing too much. Under Chu Hanxin's instructions, Han Feng, wearing a bow and carrying three mortal grade martial arts, left happily. Not only because of the excitement of getting the martial arts skill, but also because of the change in Chu Hanxin's attitude towards herself, this indifferent woman on the outside seems to still care about herself a lot. Looking at Han Feng wrapped in gauze, taking dog steps, joyfully out of the small courtyard, the door to the compartment, Chu Hanxin could not help but smile after a long time, she raised her head to the sky and whispered to herself. Father, did you see, little wind he has grown up, today he protected everyone in the branch, he is already a man, you can rest easy in heaven. Speaking here, Shu Hanshin's expression gradually became resolute and cold. Don't worry, before little wind and little thunder grow up, I will never let those guys from the main vein harm them, even if I give up my life. Chapter 23, The Gold Swallowing Beast Leaving Shu Hanshin's small west wing courtyard, Han Feng didn't return to his room, but instead went to check on Han Lei's condition again. Butler Zhang and the others had already treated Han Lei's wounds and bandaged them after applying medicine, and at the moment he was already in a deep sleep. After being completely relieved, Han Feng brought Binger and Butler Zhang to the door of the storehouse at this moment, the master and servant's three expressions are sacred and solemn, because today's Han family storehouse finally profit. Kor held the tray filled with a thousand gold coins, her small face once again reddening from excitement. Since the establishment of the Han family branch, the silver in the treasury has never exceeded ten gold coins, and today is the first time this has ever happened. Housekeeper Zhang stepped forward and opened the door lock, revealing an empty room, a rectangular wooden table in the middle of the treasury, neatly arranged with three silver coins and dozens of copper plates, a stack of paper was placed on the side, which was the IOUs from the Han branch of the family. And all of this is the entirety of the current Han household. When Xian placed the tray full of gold coins in the center of the wooden table, the whole storehouse seemed to be covered with golden light, filled with the sacred copper smell. The three masters and servants couldn't help but take a deep breath, simultaneously revealing a face full of enjoyment Butler Zhang couldn't help but have red eyes at this moment, wiping the old tears from the corners of his eyes as he sighed. Now our branch's accounts finally do not have to deficit, tomorrow I will go to pay off the previous accounts on credit, and then buy a few acres of fertile fields, find people to sow and operate, and then after the fall harvest, our branch will be able to have a surplus of food. By the way, there's also our Han residence, it's time to repair it a bit. The little lowly binger also said with an excited puff of her chest. Tomorrow I'll go to the county town to buy some fruits and vegetables and fresh meat, and buy some chickens to come back and feed them, so that the chickens will lay eggs, and the eggs will lay chickens, and in the future we won't have to eat vegetarian meals all the time anymore, and people will be able to show off their cooking skills. The housekeeper and the maid both spoke of the dreams that were still buried in their hearts, and Han Feng, as the head of the family, naturally had his own dreams as well. Looking at the pile of gleaming gold coins, underneath the snow-white bow, the corner of Han Feng's mouth lifted up in an eye-opening, arrogant smile binger, is there a place in the county town that sells spirit stones? With a thousand gold coins by his side, Han Feng felt that he was more or less a small rich man, so naturally, he had to buy more spirit stones back for his own cultivation. However, when Han Feng exited this sentence, binger and butler Zhang beside him turned pale at the same time family. Master, what are you asking about spirit stones for? Butler Zhang mumbled his lips, his voice trembling a little. Han Feng sensed that the atmosphere was a bit off and squeezed out a smile. Hey! It's nothing, just casually asking, what, are spirit stones? Expensive? Binger on the side suddenly reached out and tightly clutched Han Feng's sleeve, as if she was afraid that her family would want to rush into the storehouse and rob their own silver, and a pair of big eyes stared at Han Feng and said. Family master, spirit stones are used by spirit martial artists to restore their spiritual energy in emergencies, as well as for breakthroughs in cultivation, they are extremely precious items, only the chambers of commerce opened by the Qianlan Empire have them, and a low-grade spirit stone is worth 1,000 gold coins. Boom! The little lowly's words were like five thunderbolts that almost didn't send Han Feng splintering to the ground one. Thousand gold coins. Han Feng originally thought that a spirit stone dozens of gold coins that would top the sky, I did not expect the price to be so exorbitant, looking at the treasury, the gold coins that he had worked so hard to earn, Han Feng was suddenly not so happy. At the same time, he remembered the eleven spirit stones he had consumed in the past few days of cultivation. If one were to calculate that one was worth one thousand gold coins, then wouldn't one have spent eleven thousand gold coins in just a few days? Phew! Han Feng's breathing suddenly became rapid, feel the urgent need for too fast-acting heart-pilled pressure shock or is their own cultivation ah, this is clearly swallow gold ah. More than 10,000 gold coins, it's enough to buy a big mansion in the county town, with a few pretty maids to wash and dress themselves and warm their nests, right? 
Then he remembered that Siener had once said that he could only rely on spirit stones to cultivate until his spirit veins were opened up, and the higher his cultivation level, the spirit stones needed for breakthroughs would also increase exponentially now that he had consumed 11 spirit stones just to break through to 3 stars of martial apprentice. How many spirit stones should he need to break through to 9 stars of martial apprentice to become a spirit martial artist? In other words, how many gold coins should it take? A hundred thousand? A million. Han Fang's eyes went black for a moment, and his body shook. Binger hurriedly supported Han Feng and said with concern, What's wrong with you, family master? Han Feng waved his hand feebly and weakly. No. Nothing, brain buzzing, a little dizzy, ice, you line help me back to the room. With Binger's assistance, Han Feng returned to his bedroom with an incomparably heavy heart. Lying alone on the bed and couch, Han Feng closed his eyes and pondered for a long time before finally letting out a long sigh. Alas. It seems we still have to make money first. I thought that a thousand gold coins were already enough for me to squander, but now it seems that I am still too poor. Although he knew that his path of cultivation would consume a staggering amount of wealth, it was good to know that Han Feng had the advantage of memories from his previous life, and it didn't seem to be that difficult to make money in this otherworldly world where commerce wasn't really developed. As soon as he thought of making money, he immediately thought of the Han family's fine iron vein, and according to Han Feng's character, he naturally wanted to do neither and directly sell the vein however, understanding the conflict between the Han family's grand elder and his own cheap old man, Han Feng knew that if he casually sold the vein, that grand elder would most likely take advantage of the opportunity to lash out, and it was obviously suicidal to do so before his own strength had grown. Of course, even if you can't sell the vein, Han Feng has his own methods, such as finding a family with enough financial strength to cooperate, we can mine the vein together, the other party contributes, and the cooperation is split, so you can also achieve amazing wealth. However, Han Feng was not planning to do so for the time being nowadays, for one thing, although the benefits of mining the veins were huge, the payback cycle was too long, and Han Feng couldn't wait that long. Secondly, after understanding the nature of this world, Han Feng knew that any cooperative relationship, if it wanted to develop smoothly, it had to be kept in a situation where both sides were equal in strength or the gap was not too big with the current situation of the Han family branch, if they rashly look for someone to cooperate in mining the vein, they might even be hacked and eaten by the other side, as in the case of their own old husband, Zhou Dafu, who did not have every intention of trying to swallow the vein. Mining the veins was imperative, but not now, Han Feng needed to find another livelihood to make money, and wait for his strength to rise to a level before hitting the veins. What's the best business to do? Han Feng rubbed his chin and began to think hard, but unfortunately he was not a business elite in his previous life, and he did not study much about management, so he didn't have a clue after thinking about it for half a day. In the end, Han Feng decided to wait until he had recovered from his injuries over the past few days, and then go to the county town for a field trip to see if there was any suitable business putting aside the matter of business for the moment, Han Feng thought about the matter of today's incident where he had blown Han Yuan out of the branch with all of his limbs wasted. According to what Zhu Hanshin said, this Han Chen is the grandson of the Han family's grand elder, and it is very likely that he will succeed the position of the family head, so it must be that the power within the clan is not small. He had rejected his marriage proposal on behalf of Chu Hanshin, and at the same time, he had also disabled the person he had sent, so this guy was only afraid that he wouldn't be able to let it go. However, Han Feng does not regret what he did today, in his Han Feng's dictionary, there is no resting on one's laurels, one step back in the sky is the limit. The strong are always strong. People who were weak would only allow others to trample on them even more recklessly, this was Han Feng's creed of life in his previous life however, in order to deal with Han Chen's possible retaliation against himself and his branch, Han Feng would also have to raise his strength as soon as possible. But Han Feng today's injury is really not light, Han Yuan that palm has already hurt his tendons, the so-called injured tendons a hundred days, even if Han Feng has reached the three stars of the martial arts disciples, physical fitness, and have Chu Han Kor gold source medicine and a special method of treatment. I'm afraid that without ten days and half a month, his injuries will also not be complete, think of all this, Han Feng is a little anxious and eager. Just as Han Feng was anxious in his heart, a familiar voice came from his mind. Master, it looks like you need someone's help again. Chapter 24, Spiritual Liquid of Life Suddenly hearing Siener's voice, Han Feng was slightly surprised, and after slightly pondering the meaning of the other party's words, he couldn't help but be amazed Siener, could it be that you have a way to heal the injuries on my body? LOL. You are so smart master. Han Feng's eyes lit up when he heard the words. Then he heard Siener say faintly. Originally, this injury on master's body, if you use the subtlety of the Dao Xian technique, you can be cured by only running for a few weeks. Naiha master now the spirit vein is not connected, the spirit stone is also no longer available, transporting energy to heal the wound naturally does not work, and can only use this, fortunately, people have prepared for it. Han Feng was a bit puzzled by the meaning, but he suddenly felt a heat in his chest as a green light flashed by. In the next moment, a droplet of crystal clear, glittering with an ethereal green luster flew out from the position of his chest and hovered in front of him. At the same time a refreshing light aroma came from his heart, Han Feng subconsciously took a deep breath, only to feel his mind clear and relax this. This? 
Han Feng stared at the droplets with some astonishment. Fairy explained. Master, this is the spiritual liquid of life, it is after you absorb the spirit stone, you ferry the spiritual power to the demon refining pot, the demon refining pot refines and absorbs a part of the spiritual power, and then refines it from the territory of the pot, a kind of spiritual liquid with the breath of life, and it is also considered as the divine artifact's gift to the master. Spirit of life liquid. Han Feng immediately generated great interest, in his mind, this demon pot is completely a bottomless pit. In addition to having to extract a portion of one's spiritual energy every time one cultivates, there is also the unknown and terrifying demon in the Nine Heavens Earth, I didn't think that it would even have the time to gift itself. Han Feng stared at the tiny drop of spiritual liquid in front of him and couldn't help but wonder what could such a small drop be used for. Sienner said in a haughty tone, Master don't underestimate this drop of life spirit liquid, this spirit liquid contains extremely strong life force, after taking it, it can strengthen the qi and blood and accelerate the recovery from injuries. When the master takes this drop of spirit liquid, the injuries on his body will be recovered overnight. Hmm. Han Feng couldn't help but stare in disbelief at the words. It's that amazing? Under doubt, Han Feng still followed Siener's words and drank the drop of life spirit liquid in one gulp. When he swallowed it in his mouth, it was no different from the usual white water, and he felt nothing, but only a few moments later, Han Feng suddenly felt some heat in his abdomen. Immediately, Han Feng's entire body followed the warmth, especially his injured shoulder, as well as his bumped forehead, as if it was wrapped in a stream of warmth, numb and crispy, it was actually quite comfortable Han Feng was greatly amazed and asked busily. Fairy, this stuff seems to be working, is there any more, I'll have a few more drops. There was a sudden sound of Siener's sultry voice in his head. Master, you've only absorbed 11 low-grade spirit stones in these days combined, and it's already not easy for you to refine this drop of life spirit liquid. Besides, your body is too weak right now, if you take too much life spirit liquid at once, you will explode and die. When Han Feng heard this, he was slightly disappointed, and at the same time, when he thought that the 11,000 gold coins had only been exchanged for such a drop of life spirit liquid, his heart couldn't help but seized with pain again and complained. Your conversion efficiency is too low. Siener giggled and suddenly chimed in again Master if you still want the life spirit liquid, then find a way to absorb more spirit stones ah, I still want it. Siener's voice was soft and charming to the bone, carrying a delicacy and sultriness that made people want to get into the wrong place, and Han Feng couldn't help but shiver after hearing it. Good guy, this woman is probably in the refining pot to stay too long years, lonely too long, really a word on the drive. If Han Feng's body didn't have certain defects at the moment, he probably wouldn't have been able to hold out and would have surrendered. After endeavoring to calm the agitation in his heart, Han Feng collected his mind before reaching into his pocket and pulling out a square cloth parcel, which contained the three mortal grade martial arts techniques that Chu Hanxin had handed over to him. Although he had not recovered from his injuries at the moment and was unable to cultivate martial arts, Han Feng couldn't resist his curiosity and wanted to study it first, this was the first time he had come into contact with the martial arts of this world opening the package, Han Feng took out three threadbound ancient books, all with greenish-gray covers and thin, seemingly inconspicuous bodies, but the texture in his hands was superior, obviously not made of ordinary paper. Han Feng placed the three martial arts on the bedside and looked at them in order from the covers. White Rainbow Pace, Avalanche Thunder Strength, and Regretful Mountain Fist. This White Rainbow Pace was obviously the body martial arts that Chu Hanxin had mentioned, while the latter two were attack-type martial arts. That book, The Regrettable Mountain Fist, Han Feng had also personally seen Han Lei perform it, and once he had blown a wooden stake off with a single punch, so his power was evident. Thinking of this, the itchy Han Feng instantly opened the pages of the book and browsed through them one by Oni's a martial arts cultivation white, Han Feng's behavior profoundly embodies what is called insiders look at the doorway, outsiders see the fun. Spent more than an hour, will be three martial arts all over, any cultivation feeling is not, Han Feng has a kind of unknown feeling. This regrettable mountain fist can be known from the name, is a wide open, fierce type of boxing, boxing is divided into three realms, gathering force, shattering wood, breaking rock. As the name suggests, the first realm of this fist technique is about gathering power to explode, the second realm can forcefully shatter solid wood, and in the third realm, even hard rocks can be blasted apart. It seems that Shao Lei should have cultivated to the second level of the shattered wood realm and that itself method martial arts white rainbow pace, also divided into three realms, respectively, first glimpse, hall, and into the subtle three realms, the specific difference, Han Feng is not very understand Han Feng doesn't really understand the specific differences between the three realms. As for that book, Avalanche Thunder Strength, it was the most special. First of all, it was different from the previous two martial arts, which were both of the lower mortal grade, but this thunder collapsing strength was actually of the upper mortal grade, which was two grades higher. Moreover, there was no realm division in this martial art, and it seemed that after practicing it, an extremely rigid force could be generated in the body, enhancing the practitioner's explosive power. Moreover, as one's cultivation increased, this force would become stronger and stronger, and could even end up penetrating one's body and transmitting into one's enemy's body, inflicting great damage on them it must be said that the existence of martial arts is the further development of the power of the spirit of the martial artist, so that the road of martial arts blossomed. 
While Han Feng looked at it with wonder, his heart was also getting hotter and hotter, forcing down the thought of starting cultivation right away, Han Feng also felt a bit tired after putting away the three martial arts. After all, in today's battle, he had consumed a lot of physical strength and was injured, so he was in need of a good rest. Almost as soon as he rested his head on the pillow, Han Feng fell into a deep sleep. Chapter 25 A New Look at the Family White Dragon County City, in the south direction of the city, inside a gorgeous mansion. A handsome Chinese-robed youth, leaning on top of a sandalwood square chair, his hands picking up a cup of fragrant tea, gently drinking and sipping, his demeanor calm and elegant beside the youth, there stood a middle-aged man with a square hat and long shirt, two batches of eight character beards, and a slightly chubby physique, dressed as a butler. The man was frowning as he stared at a body placed on a stretcher not far in front of the two of them, bloodstained, arms and legs secured by bandages and wooden clamps. Next to the stretcher, there were also several black-shirt youths standing, one of them trembling with fear and trembling, reporting everything that had happened in this branch of the Han family to the two of them, their gazes still glancing at the Chinese-robed youth from time to time, their eyes revealing a deep sense of awe. This leading figure of the younger generation of the Han family had always been ruthless, almost cold, towards subordinates whose work was unfavorable now that they had smashed the things that the other party had explained, not to mention that Han Yuan had his limbs broken, the crowd was naturally jittery in their hearts. However, to everyone's surprise, after listening to their report, the Chinese-robed youth just lightly waved his hand and said. I see, carry the man down and heal him well. When the crowd of black-clothed youths heard this, while they were astonished in their hearts, they also hurriedly bowed and saluted, carrying Han Yuan on the stretcher out of the door. After the crowd left, the youth put down the tea in his hands and said with a slight sideways glance. Butler Chen, what do you think of this matter? Young lord, this Han Feng is obviously someone who was born with a wasted vein and is unable to cultivate, how could he possibly defeat Han Yuan, who is already a martial apprentice four-star and has also cultivated martial arts? The youth sniffed, but raised his eyebrows slightly and said, do you think they dare to hoodwink me? At those words, Butler Chen's expression changed slightly and he quickly changed his words. Young lord don't misunderstand, I just think that this matter is too strange, could it be that that Miss Chu was secretly helping Han Feng? The youth's gaze narrowed slightly. It's not to be ruled out, or maybe that punk was in the Zhou family and got some opportunity to rise up. Young lord, that Han Feng dared to meddle in the marriage between young lord and Miss Chu, why don't you let me send someone to properly discipline him and teach him a lesson? At those words, the youth, however, waved his hand and said. Recently, grandpa is discussing with the elders of the Hall of Elders to decide the candidate for the family head by the great family competition in half a year there are a few old guys who were favored by Han Xiaotian back then, and they are hesitant to agree to this matter, and now, due to grandfather's pressure, they are already gradually yielding, so it's not appropriate to make a move on the Han family branch at this moment. Butler Chen drifted off, but was a bit reluctant to say. Are we just going to let it go? An icy smile appeared at the corner of the youth's mouth. Oh. Han Xiaotian wasted my father's cultivation back then, this revenge is not shared, he died, this account naturally has to be counted on the head of his two sons, wait for a few days to make a resolution in the Hall of Elders, and then it is not too late to move them. There's also that Chu Hanxi, the woman that I, Han Chen, have my eye on, how can she not escape me? You only need to send someone to keep an eye on the movements of the Han family branch. Yes, young lord. Early the next morning, Han Feng sat up from his bed and stretched, feeling refreshed and energized. After turning over and jumping out of bed, Han Feng was about to go out to wash up, but suddenly realized that yesterday's shoulder that stung, at this moment there is no pain, he tried to twist a few times, but it is flexible and free. Hmm. Han Feng froze, and then suddenly remembered the drop of life spirit liquid that he drank yesterday. Did it really recover? Han Feng will be convinced to take off his shirt, a look at the shoulder, really as half the redness and swelling are gone. I tried to undo the bow on my head and pulled back the gauze. Sure enough, the scars on his forehead had all dried up, and when he gently removed them, there was only a faint red mark on his forehead, which would probably disappear soon having witnessed this miraculous scene with his own eyes, Han Feng, who had originally been a bit skeptical of Sienna's words, had to believe it at this moment. Worthy of being a divine artifact, even if it was damaged it was still so magical, it wasn't worth the tens of thousands of gold coins that he had smashed in. When he thought of gold coins, Han Feng's heart was suddenly stirred. Since his body has recovered, he can go to the county town today to inspect the city, and he can also think of ways to make money earlier and buy spirit stones to maintain his cultivation. Today's Lord Han is too poor. After slightly freshening up, Han Feng still wrapped the gauze around his head, after all, this kind of perverted recovery speed, anyone who saw it would find it bizarre, and Han Feng didn't know how to explain it, so he just continued to pretend to be injured pacing towards the front hall of the Han house, but the front yard came a noisy sound, accompanied by ping 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 sound of knocking brick and mortar. Han Feng was startled in his heart, and thought to himself, could it be that the main vein's retaliation came so quickly, hitting the door early in the morning? Hurriedly speeding up his pace to rush to the front hall, Han Feng hit the eye and couldn't help but be a little dumbfounded. Just see Han House front yard, is already more than a lot of silhouettes, seven or eight bricklayers are scattered in the Han House front yard everywhere, bricklaying bricklaying, cover tile cover tile. Busy is hot and heavy. 
Zheng housekeeper smiling, leading two foreman-like middle-aged men, standing in the courtyard, to the Han house lobby around, pointing, seems to be discussing the repair program in the southeast corner of the front yard, near the ear room, the little lowly binger was also busy. Seeing her sticking out her small waist, she directed two hawkers to put two large baskets of chickens into the fence that had just been fenced in, and asked two vegetable farmers to carry all the fruits, vegetables, and meat to the kitchen. The little lowly lifted her chin, and lifted up the slightly barren small breasts, between her eyebrows, the joy and pride overflowing, since coming to the branch, the ice child is still the first time, so generous for the family to buy. Look at Zhang housekeeper and ice that a big family servants, generous generous demeanor, poor burning eyebrows of the head of the family Han Fong, cannot help but show a bitter smile, but the heart is some warmth, this is like a family look, what are you looking at, why don't you come over and eat? A cold voice suddenly came from behind him, Han Fong froze and looked back, only to realize that in the hall, Xu Hanxin was sitting at the table with breakfast. Today's Chu Hanxin was still wearing a light and simple white dress with the same cool demeanor, but Han Feng was able to feel that there was a trace of extra warmth and luster in Chu Hanxin's calm gaze. At the moment, she was actually quite mesmerized as she dined and watched the bustling scene in the courtyard. Han Feng grinned at Chu Hanxin and sat down to eat his breakfast as well. How are the injuries on your body? Chu Hanxin looked at the bustling scene outside the courtyard while opening his mouth to faintly ask. He he he. Has gotten much better, especially on the shoulders, big sister your massage technique is really a masterpiece, why don't I go up to your house again today and you give me? Han Feng had just patted a horse's ass and was about to hit the snake with a stick, but was directly interrupted by Chu Hanxin, who coldly said. No time, don't you have long hands yourself? Ah? Uh, well. Being mercilessly rejected by Chu Hanxin, Han Feng could only answer in a sarcastic manner, while secretly glancing at Chu Hanxin's side face. As expected, people are beautiful in everything they do, even the action of drinking kanji and pinching food is so charming. Looking at Chu Hanxin's elegant and calm demeanor, Han Feng again unconsciously thought of that day when he accidentally knocked open the door to Chu Hanxin's room, the fragrant scene he saw. Thinking of these, Han Feng's gaze could not help but be a little unruly, thievishly glancing toward Chu Hanxin's delicate body. At that exact moment, Chu Hanxin, who had been staring blankly out at the courtyard, suddenly turned her head to look at Han Feng. Han Feng was startled, and under the fear of being a thief, he almost didn't knock over the bowl of porridge, so he quickly withdrew his gaze and changed the topic. Ha! Huh. How come I don't see Ray? Chu Hanxin glared at Han Feng and said. Xiao Lei's injuries are not light, naturally he can't get out of bed right now, this morning Binger and I have already gone to see him, with the medicine on his wounds and the aid of the spirit stones, he is recovering quite well. Spirit stones? Han Feng could be extra sensitive to these two words nowadays. Seeing this, Chu Hanxin raised her eyebrows slightly and stared into Han Feng's eyes as she asked. I heard from housekeeper Zhang that you asked Binger how to buy spirit stones yesterday? What, do you need spirit stones? Chapter 26, The Shoulder Family Suddenly hearing Chu Hanxin ask if he needed a spirit stone, Han Feng hesitated for a split second, then immediately snorted and said, Big sister, don't get me wrong, I'm just casually asking what I need spirit stones for. Chu Hanxin's pair of beautiful eyes gazed calmly at Han Feng, as if she could see the other party's lack of sincerity in his words, and immediately added. Are you curious as to why our family is in such dire straits, yet we can still take out spirit stones? When Han Feng heard this, he did reveal a curious expression. Now that he knew the price of spirit stones, given his own family's dire situation when he first returned to the Han branch, the house was barely even fed, and where would he get the spirit stones? Han Feng thought to himself, can it be that this big sister of his also has the habit of burying spirit stones in her own backyard? This is clearly not the case. Chu Hanxin casually pulled out from his sleeve, a yellowish paper, on which a few bizarre and floating lines were drawn in vermilion sand, forming a peculiar pattern Han Feng curiously came forward and looked at it for half a day but didn't come up with anything. Big sister this is? It's a talisman. Talisman? Han Feng suddenly recalled that Binger seemed to have said that almost all of the expenditures of the Han family branch were earned from Chu Hanxin's talisman making. Chu Hanxin pointed to the talisman on the table and said. This is a light spirit talisman that can be inspired by one's own blood, and when affixed to one's body, it can increase one's speed by about 10%. Han Feng couldn't help but be amazed at what he heard, at first he thought that the talismans drawn by Chu Hanxin were just like those temple priests and Taoist priests in his previous life, drawing talismans to keep him safe and so on. Now when I heard what the other party said, I realized that I had thought wrongly, the small piece of talisman paper, actually has such a wonderful effect seeing Han Feng's astonished look, Chu Hanxin explained. You are new to the martial arts path, you know a relatively shallow knowledge of this path of learning, on the spirit martial continent, in addition to the spirit martial artists, there is also a part of the cultivators that are more special, their number is much less than the spirit martial artists, and the world calls them spirit numinous teachers. Spiritualist. It was indeed the first time Han Feng had heard this title, so he heard Chu Hanxin go on to explain. Only those with more powerful innate spiritual power can have the opportunity to become a spiritual thinker, and only after becoming a spiritual thinker can one dabble in talismans, pills, or even become a god. 
Shu Hanxin gave a slight lurch, and the words behind her didn't continue, but instead looked at Han Feng and said my spiritual power is naturally more powerful, and I have barely crossed into the ranks of spiritual thinking masters, and I once followed a close friend of my father's and learned the art of talisman making. Nowadays, we are only able to make some, such as light spirit talisman, giant strength talisman and other beginner level talismans, which can be sold to the major merchant houses in the county to earn gold coins. As soon as he heard the word gold coins, Han Fang's eyes lit up, he was too short of money nowadays and asked in passing. Big sister, how many gold coins per talisman for this kind of talisman ah? Shu Hanshin held out a finger. A gold coin? Shu Hanshin shook his head. One hundred. How many? Han Fang's eyes instantly widened and his eyes were on the verge of glowing. Big sister, take me as your disciple and teach me to draw talismans, I don't ask for much, a hundred or eighty a day is enough. Shu Hanshin sniffed but scolded without a good mood. Do you think talisman making is as simple as drinking water? Even a low-ranking talisman, but also need to talisman master consumed mind and their own blood engraving, and often still a hundred times, can only be successful once or twice. Even if I make talismans nowadays, I'm only able to produce one or two in three days, and after deducting the consumed materials, I'll only earn five or six hundred gold coins a month at most. Hearing this, Han Feng, who thought he had found a way to become rich, was suddenly absent, and although five or six hundred gold coins a month was not bad, it simply could not satisfy his daily devouring of gold cultivation consumption. Again, he heard Chu Hanxin continue. All this money I earned from making talismans, aside from the necessary expenses of the mansion, all of it was used, to purchase spirit stones and body-hardening elixirs for little a. Speaking of this Chu Hanxin's gaze toward Han Feng actually revealed a touch of guilt. You've been unable to cultivate since you were a child, and I'm not really a member of the Han family, so only little Lei can be considered the only hope for the Han family branch. Now that the family competition is coming up, my Han family can't afford to have no one, little wind, big sister didn't take care of you too much, don't blame me. Han Feng looked at Chu Han Xian in a daze, the heart instead of the slightest dissatisfaction and jealousy, but vaguely some pain, giving birth to a strong, want to take care of this woman's impulse. Although Chu Hanxin's appearance was cold and indifferent, and she was calm and unperturbed about everything, she was only 18 years old. At such a flowery age, she should have been enjoying her youth without any worries, but she had taken up the burden of the entire branch of the Han family at an early age not only do they have to worry about the family's food and clothing, but they even have to fully undertake Xiao Lei's cultivation so that he can compete for the branch. The head of the Han family at that time was still a pampered, unresponsive coward who could never help her except to add to the chaos. Han Feng is really difficult to imagine, Chu Han Xian is how to hold up the entire branch, this process, she and how much suffering, how many sins she has suffered, and how she has ever in front of people to show their own vulnerability. Taking a deep breath, Han Feng said decisively. Big sister, I never blamed you, you've given enough to this family. From now on, I'll support this family. Shu Hanxin's originally calm gaze, after Han Feng said these words, could not help but be dumbfounded, fixedly looking at Han Feng, stunned for a long time suddenly came back to his senses, Shu Hanxin retracted his gaze, but only him, and then fell silent, not knowing what he was thinking. Seeing this, Han Feng paused and said. Eldest sister, later on I would like to make a trip to the county. Shu Hanxin's gaze flickered slightly as she spoke in a calm tone. What, planning to go back to the Zhou family? Han Feng stalled and hastily shook his head. No no no. Of course not, this time I want to stay in the family for some more time, today I just want to go to the county town to take a stroll. Shu Hanxin, however, frowned. You are not yet healed, you should not walk around, go back in a few days. Ah. Uh, actually I'm fine with it at all. No. Han Feng wanted to insist again, but Shu Hanxin was adamant, making sure that he recuperated from his injuries before moving around Han Feng couldn't tell her that he was cured, so he had no choice but to be a good boy who listened to his sister and wait a few days before going to the county. After having breakfast, Chu Hanxin returned to the west room and closed the door tightly, not knowing what she was doing. In the outer courtyard, Butler Zhang and Binger were both busy with their own affairs as well, and Han Feng had nothing to do, so he suddenly thought of the three martial arts techniques in his room. Now that his injuries had healed, he was fully capable of practicing martial arts, and once he was successful in his training, his own battle power could be greatly increased. Thinking of this, Han Feng was a little excited in his heart, so he ran back to the north room, flipped out three martial arts techniques, and then came to the backyard, unlocked the courtyard door, and began to cultivate martial arts alone before cultivating, Han Feng had to choose one of the disciplines first. Sitting on the grass in the backyard, looking at the three martial arts techniques placed in front of him, Han Feng thought briefly and finally selected the mortal grade lower order regrettable mountain fist. After all, comparatively speaking, this martial skill was simpler than both the upper mortal grade avalanche thunder strength, as well as the stance type martial skill white rainbow pace, making it suitable for him, a rookie who had just started practicing. After selecting a martial art, Han Feng flipped through the pages of the book and set up his stance, so he practiced in style. Chapter 27 Traveling to the County As the sun set in the west, on the grass in the backyard of the Han mansion, Han Feng bent his knees and sank his body down, staking out a pilework, 
his fists lifted to his waist, his expression serious and grave drink. Suddenly, with a shot from his mouth, Han Fong swung out one fist after another, and sometimes the pace of his feet changed, and his punching momentum shifted along with it, wide open and closed, with the wind of the fists hidden, quite powerful. Han Fang's set of punches were decent, with a few moments of mastery. However, after Han Fong wiped a handful of sweat from his forehead, his brows were tightly furrowed and his eyes were filled with doubt. Han Fong, who was practicing martial arts for the first time today, was full of enthusiasm and practiced with no small amount of diligence, spending several hours memorizing all the routines of the regrettable mountain fist by heart until he was already able to skillfully and completely perform the entire set of punches he had thought that he would be able to utilize the power of the regretful mountain fist, however, this was not the case. Han Fong knew very well that just now, although that set of punches was still quite smooth, the power of each punch was not even close to the power of a punch that he would normally swing out at random. In other words, at this moment, Han Fong had not even reached the regrettable Mountain Fist's entry-level power-gathering realm, and it was completely an empty stance. Han Fong, who was tired and sweating profusely, couldn't help but sit on his but on the grass, looking at the regrettable Mountain Fist book beside him with a somewhat ugly face. What kind of crap this technique, after practicing it for a whole day, how come it's not powerful at all? After thinking for a moment, Han Fong rubbed his chin again and said can it be that practicing martial arts also requires a martial arts prodigy who is not one in a million. Put. Han Fong was muttering to himself, but a snort came from his mind. Han Fong knew that it was Sienna's voice, this woman always liked to see her own jokes. Master you can't blame me, I really couldn't hold back, it's the first time I've seen you practicing martial arts like this. Han Fong froze at his words. You mean? I'm not practicing the right way? Fairies laughed out loud again. Master, what do you call this cultivation? It's clearly just drawing a cat from a tiger, a false appearance, it seems that no one has taught you to cultivate martial arts. Han Fong was not annoyed by this, he did have no one to teach the cultivation of martial arts, originally it was possible to ask Chu Hanshin, but the other party thought that he had injuries on his body, and inevitably would not allow himself to cultivate martial arts, and Han Fong was left alone to make trouble here however, hearing Sienner's tone, Han Feng's heart stirred and he turned to ask for guidance. Sienner, is there some trick to this cultivation of martial arts, why is it that after a day of cultivation, I can't even get started? Facing Han Feng's request for guidance, Sienner's tone also became somewhat solemn as she explained. Master, the path of martial arts is vast and profound, it can bring the power of a spirit martial artist to the extreme, and when cultivated to a high depth, it can even kill the enemy across the ranks, or is it as simple as you think, and can be practiced in a day or two. Even the simplest mortal martial arts, but also need a certain amount of basic skills, pay attention to the muscles, joints and all aspects of the coordination, as well as the skills of force, and even related to the body of the path of qi and blood operation, often spend a year and a half to get started, is also unusual as for the master's first foray into martial arts, although his body had been tempered, all the basic skills were relatively weak, and cultivating martial arts skills was already quite a bit more difficult than those who had practiced martial arts since childhood. If there is no one to guide you, and you practice like this for 10 or 8 years, you may not be able to enter the door. Han Fong heard the words, could not help but be stunned in his heart, did not think that he was already a martial artist, cultivation of martial arts even have to pay attention to so many doorways, a year and a half of introductory time, even more so, Han Fong was a little surprised. After all, he had gone from having no cultivation to being a three-star martial apprentice in just a few days, and after experiencing the feeling of ascending on a rocket, suddenly having him walk slowly, Han Feng was really a bit less adaptable just as Han Feng's mind grew alarmed, Sienna opened her mouth at the right time. Master, wanting to quickly cultivate martial arts, yet it's not that difficult. Hmm? Han Feng asked without moving his eyes. Fairy, what do you have in mind? Sienna let out a delicate laugh. The way is not difficult, the pill refining pot can refine all things in the heavens and earth, even the true meaning in martial arts can be refined. If the master cultivates martial arts in the realm of the pot, with the aid of the demon refining pot, refining the true meaning of the martial arts in it into the body, the cultivation is bound to be half as successful, and then with the life spirit liquid to enhance the power of qi and blood, it's even more of a blessing. Han Feng's gaze instantly became brighter, not realizing that the demon refining pot had this kind of miraculous effect however, Sienner's next sentence threw a pot of cold water over Han Feng's head. As long as the master has enough spirit stones, everything is not a problem, after all, all the effects of the demon refining pot are based on energy. As soon as he heard this, Han Feng was like a deflated ball of leather, really, you can't talk about feelings with artifacts, only spirit stones are king. However, Han Feng was still a bit half-hearted about what Sienna had said, and Han Feng still had to ask others for advice. That night, when visiting the beggar in Han Lei, Han Feng incidentally asked a mouthful of each other to cultivate the regrettable mountain fist of the heart of virtue, for example, how much time it took to enter the door although the injuries on Han Lei's body were heavy, they were more of just superficial wounds, and with his robust body and spirit stones to aid in his recovery, in just one day's time, his spirit was already much better and he could communicate normally. For Han Feng, Han Lei's attitude had also completely changed, with a bit more cordiality and respect, and he naturally knew everything Han Feng asked. 
Han Feng still remembered the gleam of pride in Han Lei's eyes when he said that it took him seven months to reach the regrettable mountain fists, gathering strength realm. According to Han Lei, the entire young generation of the Han family, there were very few who could introduce the regrettable mountain fist in a year's time. For these messages revealed by his little brother, Han Feng couldn't help but feel a little bitter in his heart, it seems that Sienna really didn't lie to herself, cultivating martial arts is a matter of years and years of work considering the threat of the Han family's main vein, as well as this world, the iron rule of martial arts, Han Feng feels that he does not have so much time to study martial arts, it seems to rely on the demon refining kettle, quickly enhance the strength, or else. Self-preservation is not enough, how to protect the branch? No, I've got to make money fast to do that. With a sense of crisis in his heart, Han Feng quickly took action, and just three days later, early in the morning, he decided to head to the county town of White Dragon County. After spending a hundred gold coins from the treasury, Han Feng raised the matter of entering the city to Chu Hanshin once again. Seeing that Han Feng's injury was no longer a major problem and his will was resolute, Chu Hanshin didn't object anymore, and took out two talismans from his sleeve, handing them to Han Feng, this is a light spirit talisman and a giant strength talisman, don't cause trouble when you go to the county town, and when you encounter danger, be smart and avoid it if you can, don't try to be strong, got it? Seeing the two talismans that Chu Hanshin handed to him, Han Feng's heart couldn't help but warm, feeling a warmth and care that he had never experienced in his previous life. Looking at Chu Hanshin's slightly haggard pretty face, Han Feng said. Big sister, you rest well at home and don't work too hard. Chu Hanshin nodded indifferently and brought Binger and Butler Zhang, together sending Han Feng out the gate. Looking away from the door to see off the three people, Han Feng's heart suddenly rose a strong sense of mission, he must be strong, so that the family to thrive again. Firming his gaze, Han Feng traveled toward the east, in the direction of the county town of White Dragon County Chapter 28 finding business opportunities. There were 18 counties in the Sichuan province, of which White Dragon County was located in the southwestern part of the province, and was considered to be a medium-sized county, of which White Dragon County County City, located in the very center of White Dragon County, was the base of the city's main house, the Qin family, and the other four great clans, and was also the most prolific place in the entire White Dragon County. The Zhou family, which Han Feng had joined, was also a famous and wealthy family in White Dragon County. If Han Feng wanted to make money, he naturally had to enter White Dragon County. Although there was no carriage to take his place, Han Feng's now three-star martial apprentice physique, catching a dozen miles or so was really not a difficult task, and in less than half an hour, he had already arrived at the county town Han Feng had left early in the morning, and by the time he arrived at the county town, the entire county town was already bustling with activity. The streets are full of pedestrians, and the city's vendors and stores are all open to welcome customers, as well as those who carry flat burdens and walk along the streets and alleys, giving the entire county a sense of vitality and vigor. Han Feng stood on the main street of the county town and took a deep breath, as if he could smell the flavor of gold coins. The next step was to look for business opportunities, although he had a hundred gold coins in his pocket, Han Feng's capital was still extremely thin, and it was too unlikely that he would want to rely on this amount of money to earn a huge sum of money to purchase spirit stones Han Feng's real capital is still the wisdom of the past life, so his first thought is to do no money business, find a strong capital master, sell their business strategy so as to reap huge profits, to put it bluntly, is to apply for the CEO of this world. However, Han Feng, who was full of confidence, soon tried the taste of failure. He had strolled all over the big and small stores in the county city, and got either blank stares from the owners of these stores, or was treated as a lunatic and directly blasted out, no one believed in what he said at all. After touching the nail dozens of times in a row, Han Feng finally knew the root cause of his failure. It's not that your own approach is not good, but that your own strategies and business ideas transcend the world's mindset, and mindset is the hardest thing in the world to change of course, there was another reason, and that was that Han Feng's face was just too famous in White Dragon County. As soon as they saw Han Feng arrive, those store owners and shopkeepers immediately lost their good looks, and what's more, Han Feng was directly invited out before he even opened his mouth. Nowadays, Han Feng not only has his identity fallen to pieces, he is no longer the young master of the Han family, and not long ago, he also offended the great Qianjin of the city lord's mansion, so in the city of the White Dragon County, who else would be ungrateful enough to collaborate with him in buying and selling? Besides, no one would believe that this young man, who could not write or fight, would have any talent for business. Sitting on the second floor of a tavern in the west of the city, Han Feng, who had run through almost the entire county in the morning, was tired and thirsty at the moment, so he planned to eat something before continuing to look for business opportunities not long after. The restaurant's junior brought in two plates of hot dishes and a small jar of soju. Seeing this jar of soju, Han Feng's eyes lit up and he immediately poured a cup of wine and drank it in one gulp, feeling the strong aroma of the wine and the fire in his throat. Sensing all of this, Han Feng couldn't help but frown, and the light that had just lit up in his eyes gradually faded away again. When I saw this pot of soju, I suddenly thought of the previous life liquor industry profiteering, I thought that this world's liquor should be the same as the previous life of ancient times, or some mash only, I did not think that the previous generation has created a high degree of liquor. 
It seems that the other world is not the ancient times of the previous life, and what is not found in the ancient times is not necessarily not found here the way to make a living that he had just thought of was dashed in an instant, Han Feng was quite disappointed and casually ate a few bites of food before leaving the restaurant. Han Feng was alone and somewhat forlorn, wandering the streets and alleys of the county, and after walking for a long time, he suddenly smelled a strong odor of fat and powder, and a noisy sound came from the front. He raised his eyes and looked, only to see a beautifully restored pavilion in front of him, the door was open, a group of young women in revealing clothes, scratching their heads, were standing in the doorway, towards the men coming and going on the street, or throwing winks, or lifting the hem of their skirts, extremely flirtatious. From time to time, men were seduced and entered the building hooking up with these women. Seeing this scene, how could Han Feng not know that this was a greenhouse brothel in the land of fireworks, the smell of lipstick is the strongest, and the closer you get, the worse the smell becomes. Han Feng secretly said in his heart, such a poor quality aromatherapy, smelling it too much would really be suffocating. Shaking his head, Han Feng was just about to move away when he suddenly thought of something. Standing in place for a moment, Han Feng slammed his thigh and exclaimed. Yeah. Perfume. Chapter 29 My Best Friend Comes to the Door Han Feng ran furiously all the way to the tavern where he had just eaten, looking for the owner to buy 20 jars of highly alcoholic wine, and nearly a hundred small bottles at the grocery store, hiring a carriage to bring these things directly back to the Han family branch. When she saw Han Feng, who smelled of alcohol, return with a cart of spirits, Xu Hanqin's face was a bit ugly, only to say that this guy had gone to the county just to buy a drink, and immediately turned around and went back to the west wing in anger Han Feng, on the other hand, was too late to explain too much, so he had the driver help move all the wine into his backyard, and had Binger and Steward Zhang help him out by starting to collect several types of flowers in the yard. After doing all of this, while everyone was feeling puzzled, the Han family lord began to close his door again this time, only, this time, it wasn't for cultivation, but for making perfume. In his previous life, Han Feng was just an ordinary college graduate, with no hobby of invention and creation, and a half understanding of how to make many items in life, except for brewing, which he barely knew the process, and the process of making perfume, which he knew a little about. Perfume production process is not complicated, the main process is extraction, the various flowers and the flavor of the material extracted, and alcohol is precisely the best extract unfortunately, this world already has a high level of white wine, so you don't have to go through the trouble of brewing it yourself. Now the raw materials are ready, the rest is the specific operation, how to extract, how to adjust the ratio. All need Han Feng own slowly study. Time flies, five days in a row, Han Feng in addition to three meals a day and sleep time, are all the time, are buried in the development of perfume. And Chu Hanxin originally thought that Han Feng was drinking at home, but found that he didn't have much of a smell of alcohol, but instead carried some inexplicable aroma, and was quite surprised, but didn't ask many questions. Until the morning of the sixth day, in a grocery room in Han Feng's backyard, the room was pleasantly scented, and looking at the hundreds of small porcelain bottles placed in batches on the floor of the room, Han Feng couldn't help but feel a strong sense of pride welling up in his heart in just a few days, he had already developed seven types of scented perfumes, and after experimenting, he had found the best formula. At the moment this grocery room, which has also become his perfume storage room, is stocked with finished perfumes. The merchandise has been created, the next question is how to sell it. With the unique aroma and convenient use of perfume, there is no doubt that it can make those women who use scented capsules and all kinds of smoked incense all year round, madly fascinated by it, and naturally, it is not worrying about selling. However, Han Feng currently had two concerns. The first point is safety. Once he launched the perfume, he will certainly alarm the entire White Dragon County. According to the situation of the first few days of probing in the White Dragon County city, the entire White Dragon County, occupying the dominant position of the county's business, or the five great families if the perfume is released, this is a huge business opportunity, the five great families will inevitably search for the roots, sooner or later will find their heads. And with the relationship between the Han family branch and the main vein nowadays, I'm afraid that the other party will not only not protect themselves, but will also be the first to start grabbing the perfume formula. In addition, Han Feng considered the second issue, that is, brand effect. Han Feng didn't make perfume to benefit women, but to make money, and lots of it. Then the pricing of perfume is debatable, Han Feng is not to be thin margins, but to learn the previous world-famous brands in general, to create a brand effect, will be categorized as luxury ranks what is luxury goods, naturally, is a lower cost, sold at sky-high prices, but also let the buyer complacent, so Han Feng cannot be like the marketplace goods general, picking two baskets of perfume to buy. In order to solve these problems, Han Feng still had to make some plans. The heart was pondering, the courtyard door was suddenly knocked, but Binger knocked outside. Family master, Mr. Zhao is here to see you. Mr. Cho? Han Feng froze at the words, but still went forward and opened the courtyard door. The little lowly stood playfully outside the door, while not far behind him stood a young man wearing brocade clothes, a jade belt around his waist, and a gold hairpin on his head. 
Just look at the youth of this line, that is quite expensive and vulgar, but unfortunately, when you see the youth of that unbearable face, Han Feng deeply appreciate, what is called an ugly ruin all bitter melon face, garlic nose, small eyes, coupled with a pair of awkward eyebrows, the man's appearance, it is really difficult to say, Han Feng looked at a glance, then some cannot bear to look directly. The youth, on the other hand, after seeing Han Feng, but his eyes lit up, even his pair of awkward eyebrows raised a bit, and he excitedly took two steps forward, bowing to Han Feng. Brother Han, I haven't seen you in many days, are you still well? Han Feng was confused by the other party's actions, but fortunately, Binger had known that her family had had forgotten many things from before, and rushed to Han Feng's ear and said. Family master, this mister. Zhao is the only son of the Zhao family head, one of the five great families in White Dragon County, and a close friend of yours for many years it was also he who asked you to drink at the Sprinkler Pavilion in the first place, and you went to the city lord's mansion when you were drunk, and then. Well. It turns out. Han Feng knew the other party's identity, and immediately returned the bow and smiled. So it's Mr. Zhao's grand entrance, welcome, let's go, let's taste tea in the front hall. Although the visitor's looks were really a bit shabby, but the visitor was a guest, and with Han Feng's popularity, he was surprised that he even had a close friend, so he naturally had to be polite and entertaining. What's more, regarding the matter of his drunkenness and stealing incense, Han Feng still had doubts in his mind and had to take this opportunity to clarify them. At that moment, Han Feng brought this Mr. Zhao to the front hall, where Binger made tea, and the two of them talked in the hall as soon as they met, Mr. Zhao was concerned about Han Feng's injuries. Brother Han, when I heard that you were blasted out of the door by Qin to Qin Jin's palm that day and vomited blood, I was truly shocked and worried, and I have long wanted to come and visit Brother Han. Nay, my father kept me locked up at home until today, when I was able to leave home, and hearing that you, Brother Han, had returned home, I rushed here early in the morning to visit. Looking at Mr. Zhao's face of concern, Han Feng, who was affected by the aesthetic impact, forced himself to endure the discomfort in his heart, and finally removed his gaze and laughed. Thanks to Brother Zhao's concern, Han is already much better. With that, Han Feng added without moving. By the way, Brother Zhao, when Mr. Han was first blasted out of the door by the people of the Qin Mansion, his memory of what happened that day has always been very blurry, and he's forgotten how he entered the City Lord's Mansion since, Brother Zhao was also at the scene that day, I wonder if he can tell us what actually happened at that time. Saying that, Han Feng inadvertently looked into the other party's gaze. When Mr. Zhao heard this, his face was an expression of incomparable embarrassment as he laughed bitterly. Alas. Brother Han, talking about this matter, and is the little brother's wrong, at first is the little brother see Brother Han mood board, will take you to the Sprinkle Gold Pavilion drinking, was just looking for a fun, salt Brother Han heart boredom. I didn't expect to first meet the second son of the wine family, that ungrateful simpleton, who argued with us, and you and I, the brothers, continued to drink again. But I didn't realize that the drinks at the Sprinkler Pavilion were extraordinarily strong that day, and after only a few cups, my little brother fell asleep with dizziness in his eyes when I woke up, I heard about the matter of Brother Han being blown out of the gate by the city lord's mansion, and I was given a fat beating by my own old man and locked up until now, speaking of which, the matter is still blamed on my little brother's poor care. Looking at the sincere apologetic look on Mr. Zhao's face, Han Feng secretly nodded in his heart, it seemed that this matter indeed had nothing to do with this person. If the other party really wanted to frame himself, this kind of unsolicited invitation was a bit too low. However, Han Feng's heart was mindful of the other party's mention of the fact that they had quarreled with the second son of the Wang family at the Sprinkler Pavilion. Now Han Feng already knew that the five great families of White Dragon County were Qin, Wang, Han, Wu and Zhao among them, the head of the Qin family, was the county city lord of the White Dragon County, and the Qin family was also the head of the five great families. Second only to the Qin family is the Wang family, is the White Dragon County inheritance for hundreds of years of the great family, deep heritage, has been ranked in the top three of the five great families. Then after that is the Han family, originally his father Han Xiaotian alive, the Han family can even pressure the Qin family, but now can only be ranked third, behind the Wu, Zhao Tu compared to the strength of similar. Han Feng said in his heart, it couldn't be that he had some sort of grudge against that second son of the Wang family as well? Chapter 30, The Miserable Mr. Zhao Han Feng took the opportunity to ask Mr. Zhao some more about himself and that second son of the Wang family. But according to what Mr. Zhao said, there was no grudge between the two, and there was only some friction that day, and the two sides casually quarreled, and then each did just that Han Feng still had doubts in his heart, but it was inconvenient to ask more. The two of them then began to chat, the topic was mostly dominated by Zhao Gongzi, but also mostly emotions and memories of how the two of them used to meet and know each other. And under the recollection of Zhao Gongzi, some scattered fragments in Han Feng's mind were actually gradually reorganized, and the image of this Zhao Gongzi finally became clearer. This Zhao Gongzi, being the only son of the Zhao family's head, should logically be an existence that was star-studded and favored by countless people. However, because Mr. Zhao's appearance was so ugly, it was said that when he was born, the Zhao family had held him in his arms and actually wept bitterly. 
In the days that followed, it was even more difficult to sleep at night and eat. According to Han Feng's understanding, the Zhao family had probably wanted to test Mr. Zhao's DNA to see if the bastard was his own. As for Mr. Zhao, not only was he ugly, but after testing, although he possessed a spirit vein, the quality of his spirit vein seemed to be extremely poor, not even as good as many of the family's collateral descendants. Now in Han Feng general, the year has been 17, but still stubborn to stay in the martial arts apprentice one-star cultivation, the county, hidden white dragon county second waste of talent, the name. While Han Feng and Mr. Zhao had known each other since they were young, when Han Feng was still the young master of the Han family and was running amok in the White Dragon County, Mr. Zhao was suffering from the bullying of the children of several other big families. Once, Han Feng did not know whether it was on a whim or not, but he saved Zhao Gongzi who was being beaten up, and even taught those abusers a hard lesson for him, and since then the two of them had been known as brothers after Han Xiaotian's death and Han Feng's fall, Mr. Zhao didn't look down on Han Feng, instead, he gave a helping hand many times and relieved Han Feng, so Han Feng had always regarded Mr. Zhao as a close friend. Recalling the past of the two in his mind, Han Feng's heart was sighing, no wonder the two were able to become brothers, only if they were both wastrels could they be able to sympathize with each other. At this moment, Han Feng finally remembered Mr. Zhao's name, Zhao Wei Nan. It was probably because the Zhao family's master saw that his son was too ugly, and hoped that he would grow up to be a Qi Wei man and build up a great career. While Han Feng remembered the name, he was a bit unable to help himself, feeling that there was a great ambiguity in it. However, when he realized that he still had some kind of stubborn disease, Han Feng's smile suddenly became bitter people are great men, but they are atrophied men. Han Feng was bitter in his heart and couldn't help but sigh, Brother Zhao, you and I, brothers, are both bitter people. This sentence seemed to have poked Zhao Wei Nan's heart, and the awkward and unimaginable face was written with heartache and sorrow. Zhao Wei Nan lifted his long sleeves with both hands, revealing a blue and red, bruised arm, and said with a sobbing voice, Brother Han, I am more bitter than you are, although you lost the position of young master, but I as the Zhao family's young master, every day I have to be violently beaten by my father, I am so bitter ah. When Han Feng saw this, he couldn't help but stare in disbelief. Brother Zhao, why did the Zhao family master do this to you? Zhao Wei Nan's eyes were moist, and his face was similarly covered in doubt as he grabbed Han Feng's arm and cried. I don't know, sometimes when I make a mistake and dad beats me, I'm still able to think straight but sometimes, I obviously did not do anything wrong but when dad saw me, but indiscriminately, dragged over to the beatings, no gotta. Seeing Zhao Weinan crying, the two awkward eyebrows screwed together, twitching the garlic nose, snotty ugly appearance, Han Feng forced to resist the urge to whip, suddenly realized nodded his head. I think I probably get it. After crying for a while, Zhao Weinan wiped away his tears and looked toward Han Feng, who appeared much more refreshed than before, and his two small eyes suddenly lit up, blinking a few times as he whispered. Brother Han, we have nothing to do today, why don't the two of us go to the county's greenhouses to drink a few cups of flowery wine and play a couple of games in the gambling houses? Han Feng heard the words but shook his head and refused, he had just made perfume now and still had to figure out how to sell it, how could he have time to drink flower wine when Zhao Weinan saw that Han Feng was not going, he only thought that the other party was shy, and immediately slapped his chest and said. Brother Han, don't worry about following your brother, I'll cover all the expenses. Zhao Weinan rarely revealed his bravado, although he was ugly and his talent was mediocre, he was after all the only son of the Zhao family head. Every time he received a severe beating from the Zhao family master, perhaps out of his father's guilt, the Zhao family master would give Zhao Weinan a substantial amount of pocket money, which made Zhao Weinan, every time he received a beating, both painful and happy as Zhao Weinan spoke, he directly pulled out a dozen golden tickets with a denomination of up to a thousand gold coins from his pocket and waved them in front of Han Feng. Han Feng originally still had a calm face, but when he saw these golden tickets, his eyes glared straight, in his eyes, this is not a golden ticket, but it is all spirit stones. I thought that Zhao Wei Nan was just a small savings, but I didn't expect this guy to be so dirt cheap. Gu Du. Dryly swallowing a mouthful of saliva, Han Feng couldn't help but mumble. Does this. This wandering around the greenhouse and going to the gambling house use so much money? Zhao Wei Nan, however, said with an indifferent face. Strolling in the greenhouse naturally cannot spend too much money, but gambling, brother Han you still do not know, I am 9 out of 10 bets, all the money lost over the years added up, afraid to have nearly 100,000 gold coins it. 100,000. Han Feng's eyes widened once again, 100,000 gold coins, if converted into spirit stones there would be as many as 100, this guy even lost it all. At this moment, Han Feng felt that the Zhao family lord was still too kind to Zhao Wei Nan, this kind of loser, beating him to death deserved it. Sensing the unkind look in Han Feng's gaze, Zhao Wei Nan's back went a little cold and he couldn't help but ask. Brother Han, what? Happened to you? You really don't need to worry about money, brother I'm not bad at all. Han Feng was silent, staring at Zhao Wei Nan for a long time, his gaze suddenly became gentle, and a faint smile spread across the corners of his mouth. At this moment, Han Feng knew that his big problem had been solved. The key to solving the problem is the stupid money Zhao Gongzi, the length of the other side of the size, the size is just right. 
Zhao Wei Nan was a bit flustered by Han Feng's gaze, and without waiting for him to open his mouth, Han Feng had already said indifferently Brother Zhao, you and I aren't too young nowadays, other family descendants, when they reach our age, are either practicing hard to become the pillars of the family in the future, or they are studying the way of management to create more wealth for the family. Brother Zhao don't you have a dream? Dreams. Zhao Wei Nan was hit hard by this novel, and hopeful word, and his face couldn't help but show a bewildered, yet yearning look. His expression, in Han Fang's eyes, was similar to Little Red Riding Hood, who was about to open the door for the big bad wolf. Obviously, this guy has all the good attributes to be fooled. Chapter 31, Brother Han Who Knows Me In the face of Han Fang's dream statement, the fire of hope in Zhao Wei Nan's eyes lit up and then extinguished, said with a disheveled look alas. Brother Han Ah, between you and me brothers, I don't have to say any hypocritical words. Although little brother is barely able to cultivate, my spirit vein qualifications are too poor, and after so many years of cultivation, I'm still stagnant at the first star of Martial Apprentice. For this reason, my father searched all over for famous doctors and used countless elixirs to refine my body, but the result was still no improvement, and nowadays, not to mention my father, even I myself have given up. Saying this, Zhao Weinan also looked at Han Feng with a grateful face. Brother Han, if it weren't for your presence, I'm afraid that the title of penultimate first in the younger generation of the five great clans would have to fall on my head, and my father would treat me even less favorably by then. Upon hearing this, the corner of Han Feng's mouth revealed a disdainful arc, thinking to himself, if this bastard knew that he was already a three-star martial apprentice, would he be so angry that he would cut himself off? Without striking Zhao Wei Nan's fragile heart, Han Feng added, in that case, why doesn't brother Zhao try his hand at business? At those words, Zhao Wei Nan once again sighed long and shook his head. Alas. Brother Hana, truth be told, my father on my cultivation has not hold much hope, some days ago, will be the clan operated for many years of the two-family pharmacy, handed over to me to take care of. This is a good thing, why is brother Zhao sighing? Zhao Wei Nan said bitterly. I didn't know anything about taking care of the store originally, it was just a name, so I asked the pharmacy owner to take care of it properly, while I went to the gambling house to play a few games. Who knows that day bad luck, the body of the gold and silver are lost, I have no capital, and want to turn over the money, so the two pharmacies on the pressure I ended up losing again, and when I went back to the family, I was so close to being beaten to death by my father. While listening to Zhao Wei Nan spouting his bitterness, Han Feng was also gnashing his teeth for a while, this guy is too defeatist. At this moment, he had even somewhat admired the Zhao family lord's endurance, if it was his own son who was such a loser, Han Feng would probably be able to break both of his legs, the fact that Zhao Wei Nan could still be alive at this moment was a testament to how kind the Zhao family lord was. But fortunately, Han Feng's plan for this guy was just a name, and he was actually still manipulated by himself. At that moment, Han Feng patted Zhao Wei Nan's shoulder and said with a serious expression. Brother Zhao, I fully understand your pain, I know that Brother Zhao is a person with great ambitions, but only trapped in the status quo, it is difficult to realize their ambitions, otherwise, with Brother Zhao's talent, who in the world does not know the king? As soon as Han Feng said this, Zhao Wei Nan was like having a needle stuck in his ass, jumping up high, excitedly clasping Han Feng's palm with both hands and bursting into tears. He who knows me is Brother Han, and he who says my heart is worried is also Brother Han. Han Feng also stood up, forcibly resisting the urge to turn his head, his face radiating a savior-like glow. Brother Zhao, you and I were originally brothers who shared the same life and death, and to see Brother Zhao so depressed, Mr. Han feels guilty in his heart to tell the truth, recently Han found a, an all-inclusive sky-high business opportunity, would like to operate alone, but then read the brother to my good. Mr. Han then thought that if I let Brother Zhao join in as well, in the future, I will be able to make money day in and day out, be self-sufficient, and be able to speak with a straight back in front of my own father. Hearing this, Zhao Wei Nan stayed for a moment, and then, as Han Feng expected, this guy did not even think about it, and then his eyes glowed. Well well well. Han brother, you are simply no words for me Zhao Mao, I will enter the shares in, Han brother needs how much startup capital, but say no harm. Are these golden tickets enough? If not, I'll ask my father for more. Seeing Zhao Wei Nan shove a handful of golden tickets directly into his hands, Han Feng realized that he was still overestimating Zhao Wei Nan's intelligence. It's a bit too ambitious to just stuff money without even knowing what the business opportunity you're talking about is. However, Han Feng was still slightly touched in his heart, at least this guy trusted himself enough, so he didn't immediately accept the golden ticket that the other party had stuffed into his mouth, explaining brother Zhao, don't be in a hurry, allow me to slowly explain. Zhao Wei Nan reacted to his words and scratched his head in embarrassment. Yes, yes, what brother Han said is very true, it's my little brother who was in a hurry. Han Feng did not say much, casually touching from within his lapel, he took out a small porcelain bottle that was only two fingers wide and about two or three inches high, the mouth of the bottle was closed with a mahogany stopper, and the modeling was quite exquisite. Han Feng gently placed the small porcelain vase on the wooden table between the two of them and raised an eyebrow at Zhao Wei Nan. The business opportunity one speak of is this very thing. 
Zhao Wei Nan's eyes widened as he stared intently at the small porcelain vase in front of him and surveyed it, revealing an inquisitive look in his eyes as he said, Brother Han, I wonder what this is? Han Feng smiled inscrutably. Hey! This thing, both men and women like, cannot stop, is a wonderful thing to cultivate the mood. Upon hearing this, Zhao Wei Nan first froze for two seconds, then his eyes suddenly erupted in a burst of brilliant light. Ah! Is actually this thing, wonderful wonderful, I do not know the effectiveness of this bottle of Brother Han, compared to the west of the county, smoke and willow lane go Longzhong developed the falling jack, which is weaker and stronger ah? Seeing Zhao Wei Nan's ugly and lewd look, Han Feng once again had the urge to whip someone, and then he could only reach out and rattle the cork. Without waiting for Han Feng to open his mouth to explain, a fresh and elegant fragrance mixed with the freshness of lilies escaped in the room, making people relaxed and oblivious sniff. Zhao Wei Nan's nose also twitched, and then his face revealed an astonished and inexplicable look, his eyes wandered for a while before finally refocusing on that small porcelain vase. What is this? Thing, and how can it have such a strange fragrance? Han Feng said with a bland smile. This thing is clearly called perfume. Perfume. Zhao Wei Nan stared with wide eyes, a dog's eyes looking at a toad like a stunned expression, and then said with some doubt. Brother Han, although this item has a unique aroma, I don't know what purpose it serves, and how it can be used to make a profit. Han Feng said with a mysterious smile. Zhao brother, this thing at first glance, perhaps not very valuable, but if these perfumes. Spray to your most favorite flower girl, or which thousand gold jade, body above, when you approach their side, or when you are entangled with them, and what will be the effect of it? After all, Zhao Wei Nan came from a large family with extraordinary eyesight, and once he heard Han Feng's words, some sort of marvelous association arose in his mind, and the light in his eyes grew brighter and brighter he then exchanged a glance with Han Feng, and the corners of their mouths simultaneously hooked into a knowing, lewd smile. Wonderful, wonderful, not to be ashamed of Brother Han also, actually really enough to get such a marvelous thing, I wonder how many more bottles of such perfume in Brother Han's hand. Hey! There is not much in stock at the moment, but as long as the raw materials are sufficient, it can be manufactured in a steady stream, in addition to this fragrance, Han has also developed six other fragrances, which also have their own characteristics. Moreover, these formulas were first created by Han, and I'm the only one who knows about them in the whole world. Oh! Zhao Wei Nan first showed a look of surprise, then his expression became excited. Although he was not smart, he had been in a large family since he was a child, and under the influence of his ears, he still had a basic business sense. Having personally felt the magic of the perfume, and learning that the method of manufacturing this item was Han Feng's first creation, Zhao Wei Nan immediately discovered a huge business opportunity, and his expression became a bit more serious. Brother Han, such a heavenly good deed, you were able to think of little brother, it's not in vain for you and I to be brothers. It's just that I don't know how Brother Han plans to run this thing? What can little brother do to help? Seeing that Zhao Wei Nan had finally asked about the topic, Han Feng then threw out his thoughts. It's very simple, I'll come up with the recipe, Brother Zhao will pay for it, and in the name of the Zhao family, open a store in the county town that specializes in selling perfume when the store is profitable, the two of us, my brothers, will just split the profits. Chapter 32 Best Partner After Han Feng put forward his business strategy, with Zhao Wei Nan's mind, he naturally couldn't evaluate whether it was good or bad, but only asked with some doubts. Brother Han, you are the founder of the perfume, why don't you hang the signboard of your Han family but use the name of the Zhao family to set up store? Han Feng laughed. Brother Zhao, didn't I say before that I wanted you to straighten your back and behave in front of the Zhao family lord? Think about it, if you open a perfume store in the county town with a thriving business that brings in money every day, and no longer reach out to your father for money, the Zhao family master will naturally be impressed with you, and perhaps, won't even beat you up again in the future. As soon as he heard that he wouldn't have to take a beating in the future, Zhao Wei Nan was instantly thrilled beyond belief and gratefully said to Han Feng. Many thanks to brother Han for taking such pains, please accept a bow from little brother. In this way, Han Feng successfully recruited the first shareholder in the perfume business. As for Han Feng, Zhao Wei Nan is more than just a shareholder. With Zhao Wei Nan, the young master of the Zhao family, operating a perfume business in White Dragon County, he is not afraid of being targeted by several other big families and secretly using any means. The next procedure is also very simple, Han Feng brought pen, ink, paper and inkstone, directly drafted the first shareholding contract in the Lingwu continent before that, Han Feng also gave the upcoming perfume store an elegant name, Dark Fragrance Pavilion, from the poem, Shadows Across the Water is Clear and Shallow, Dark Fragrance Floating Moon Dusk. The name is Dark Fragrance Pavilion. Of course, Han Feng originally wanted to take Chanel or Coach and other names, but taking into account the aesthetics of the Lingwu continent, similar to the ancient times of the past life, or to take a rather ancient style of the name. Zhao Wei Nan heard the name is full of praise, but Wei Nan has no culture, a crotch line, heard Han Feng frowned. 
fix the name, Han Feng began to handwrite the contract, Ling Wu continents text and the same in the past life, although the brush, but Han Feng's past life, also has a few points of brush calligraphy skills, and his favorite Zhang Su's wild grass when he worked in the museum, he had nothing to do but to copy each other's handwriting and practice diligently every day. Now his words, although not up to the level of masters, but also sharp and unrestrained penmanship, without restraint, at the moment between the pen and snake, a contract payment will jump on the paper. Zhao Wei Nan, who was on the side, couldn't help but look surprised when he saw Han Feng's gesture of splashing literature in ink, with his relationship with Han Feng, the two of them naturally knew each other. He clearly remembers, Han Feng not only can not cultivate, even the dance in ink is also a know-how, although writing is not a problem, but the font is also crooked not dare to praise, otherwise, he cannot be recognized by the White Dragon County, the military and the whole waste of the glorious title at this moment, looking at Han Feng's pen, that wild and uninhibited dashing font, Zhao Wei Nan heart surprised at the time, cannot help but secretly think, could it be that brother Han has? Been enlightened, began to secretly use his strength? When he thought about the other party creating that strange perfume, and what he had told himself today, the many strange words he had never heard before, Zhao Wei Nan gradually felt a crisis, a sense of crisis that he was about to be overtaken by the number one wasted talent in White Dragon County. If Han surpasses himself, he will have to carry the banner of White Dragon County's first waste, and by then, will his father be so angry that he will beat himself out of the sky? In order to prevent this terrible thing from happening, Zhao Wei Nan felt that it was time for him to put in some effort, after all, the bowl of waste wasn't that tasty about an incense stick later, Han Feng had already drawn up the contract, with clear terms and conditions as agreed upon in his previous life. The contract clearly stipulates that the owner of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion is Zhao Wei Nan, and Han Feng is only the manager of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, however, Zhao Wei Nan only accounts for 30% of the shares of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, and Han Feng only accounts for 70%. Because Han Feng is the founder of the perfume, Zhao Wei Nan, the nominal owner, also needs to buy shares. After considering it, Han Feng priced each share at 5,000 gold coins. Zhao Wei Nan to get these 30% of the shares, he will need to pay him a fee of 15,000 gold coins relative to the market prospects of the perfume. This price is simply a conscience to the extreme. Otherwise, with Zhao Wei Nan, this kind of stupid money landlord, Han Feng extorting him 100,000 gold coins is not difficult. As for the cost of making the perfume, as well as the labor cost, it was shared equally by both parties, but the cost of making the perfume was not high, and Han Feng would not care about this small amount of money. Contract in duplicate, Han Feng handed over the contract to Zhao Wei Nan review, the results of this goods just hastily glanced it, then with the fear of Han Feng regret as if, immediately pressed the handprints, and urged Han Feng also press the handprints. Both sides pressed their handprints, and Zhao Wei Nan again put a dozen golden tickets in his arms, directly into Han Feng's hands, and only then did he take a long sigh of relief, and with a smile on his face, he arched his hand in greeting Brother Han, from now on, you and I will be the bosses of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, thank you for taking care of us. Han Feng, however, hastily waved his hand. Eh? Zhao Brother cannot be so called, the contract is clearly written clearly, you are the owner of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, Han is only for Zhao Brother business manager only, we external, also have to say so. Upon hearing this, Zhao Wei Nan still thought it was Han Feng, and in order to make him look better in front of his own father, he thanked Han Feng even more profusely. After signing the perfume contract, Zhao Wei Nan's excitement is difficult to restrain, had to invite Han Feng to the county restaurant to eat and drink a meal, is to celebrate the Dark Fragrance Pavilion was founded Han Feng originally didn't want to go, but as soon as he thought that, with Zhao Wei Nan's share capital in his possession, he would also be able to purchase spirit stones, and it just so happened that he would also be making a trip to the county merchant bank, he immediately nodded his head and agreed. When Zhao Wei Nan came, he came in a carriage, and the two of them didn't have to walk to enter the city, sitting together inside the spacious carriage. Along the way, Zhao Wei Nan hummed, not knowing which greenhouse brothel he had heard the ditty from, with a cozy look of indebtedness on his face. And naturally, Han Feng was in a good mood, with the money he had made with his perfume shares, he would soon be able to buy spirit stones. Moreover, when the perfume began to be officially sold, there was a constant inflow of funds, so it was estimated that the spirit stones for the preliminary cultivation would be able to be supplied the carriage traveled for a while, but Zhao Wei Nan suddenly remembered something and asked. Right, Brother Han, I forgot to ask you just now, after the perfume is officially sold, how geometrically should we price it? When Han Feng heard the words, his demeanor was calm, and he already had a plan in his mind as he directly stretched out a finger towards Zhao Wei Nan. Zhao Wei Nan froze. A gold coin? That's a little pricey, but some higher quality rouges and powders are more than that, and with the marvelous uniqueness of the perfume, the price is appropriate. However, Han Feng shook his head and laughed. Who said it was one gold coin, I said a hundred. Ah! Zhao Wei Nan couldn't help but be just dumbfounded. One hundred gold coins, brother Han Yu. You're not mistaken? Such a small bottle of perfume needs to be sold for a hundred gold coins? Although Zhao Wei Nan was a tycoon, he was still very clear about the prices of all types of items in White Dragon County women's rouge and powder, scented bags, incense, and so on, that is, the most expensive, terrific is more than a dozen gold coins top day, has never heard of, can be a single copy of a hundred gold coins sold. 
If that was true, 10 bottles of perfume would be able to match the price of a lower grade spirit stone. Seeing Han Feng's serious look, Zhao Weinan knew that the other party wasn't joking and couldn't help but speak out to dissuade him. Brother Han, don't you think this price is debatable? After all, there aren't many people in White Dragon County who can spend a hundred gold coins to buy a bottle of perfume, even if they can afford it, they won't necessarily buy it? Han Feng heard the words, but the corner of his mouth was slightly hooked. Brother Zhao, do you know what brand positioning means? Zhao Weinan shook his head dumbly Han Feng's smile, however, grew higher and deeper as he said quietly. We sell our perfume to the rich, not to the poor. Chapter 33, Changes in the Restaurant After the carriage traveled for half an hour, Han Feng and Zhao Weinan finally entered the county town. Zhao Weinan brought Han Feng, came to the White Dragon County a quite famous restaurant, the two looked for an elegant room, ordered a large table of good wine and good food, ate a lot of fun, can be said to be the guests and hosts happy. During the meeting, Zhao Weinan asked Han Feng when the Dark Fragrance Pavilion would start operating, so Han Feng told Zhao Weinan to rent a store in White Dragon County first and start decorating. And with all this time, he had to think about the sales strategy for the perfume, and as soon as the store was renovated, it was expected to be officially open for business in half a month. Regarding Han Feng's arrangement, Zhao Weinan naturally patted his chest and assured him that with his status as the Zhao family's young master, picking out a store with a good port in the city would still be simple as hell seeing that it was getting late, Han Feng planned to go to the merchant bank to purchase spirit stones, and it was time for Zhao Weinan to go home. As he was leaving, Han Feng didn't forget to grab Zhao Weinan and exhort. Brother Zhao, our perfume business is a trade secret, you mustn't spill the beans to anyone. When Zhao Weinan heard this, he immediately revealed a sacred and solemn look and raised three fingers and said, Brother Han don't worry, Mr. Zhao doesn't have any other skills, but the matter of secrecy is a real deal, even if someone else beats me to death, I won't spit out even a single word. After saying that, Zhao Weinan flattery smiled at Han Feng again and said, Hey! That Han brother, can you give me a bottle of perfume first, so that I can bring it back and sprinkle it in my bedroom to feel the beauty of this thing in advance ah? Looking at Zhao Weinan's ugly face, above which a girlish gesture of artifice flowed out, Han Feng forced himself to resist the feeling of revulsion and pulled out a bottle of perfume from his pocket and handed it to him, urging the other party to hurry up and leave after Zhao Weinan left. Han Feng didn't leave immediately, but was pondering about the program regarding the presale of the perfume. As Zhao Weinan said, 100 gold coins for a bottle of perfume, although many rich people in White Dragon County could afford to buy it, how to make them willingly, or even tend to pay out of their own pockets, this would still require some means. The mind was lost in thought. Boom! With a loud bang, the door to the elegant room was suddenly kicked open. Han Feng was startled, and before he could figure out what was going on, a miserable scream rang out, and a silhouette flew directly into the elegant room, smashing heavily to the ground Han Feng fixed his eyes on this figure, this figure was familiar to the extreme, was it not Zhao Weinan who had just left not long ago? Just a few moments of effort, Zhao Weinan not only to go and come back, and face has been a piece of blue and purple, nosebleed, now smashed on the ground, but also issued a painful groan, pain tears, and snot flowed out together. Han Feng hurriedly got up to help Zhao Weinan up, and without waiting for him to ask a question, a pretty figure outside the door crossed into the elegant room. The person is a young woman, about 15 or 16 years of age, wearing a long lavender dress, slender and delicate figure, a pretty face as white and tender as jade, and her features are exquisite. Especially those big, clear, bright eyes, which look soulful. From the gold and silver hairpins worn by the young girl, as well as the two crystal earrings hanging down from both ears, it was easy to see that this girl was bound to come from a wealthy and noble family and the arrogant aura that emanated from the inside out was definitely an aura only possessed by the higher-ups. The young girl ordered casually behind her as she stepped into the room. Close the door, no one comes in without my order. The two powerful men outside the door answered respectfully and immediately closed the door tightly. In the room, it was just Han Feng, Zhao Wei Nan, and this beautiful young girl who had suddenly barged in. Han Feng glanced at the young girl and then looked at Zhao Wei Nan. Brother Zhao, what happened, how? Did you do it? Zhao Wei Nan covered his stomach at the moment and raised his eyes to Han Feng, his face as embarrassed as it could be, and he said with a face of shame. Brother Han. I. I'm sorry. Without waiting for Han Feng to ask more questions, the young girl had already taken a big step in front of Han Feng, looked down at him and asked your Han Feng? Han Feng frowned, disliking the other party's overbearing tone. So what if it's me? Hearing Han Feng admit it, the young girl's gaze suddenly turned cold. Sure enough, it's you shameless and dirty denizen, you still dare to set foot in the White Dragon County City, you've got some guts. Han Feng's brows furrowed even tighter as he heard this and said in a deep voice. What has it got to do with you if I set foot in the county, do you think that White Dragon County is your family's? Also, why did you injure brother Zhao? The young girl's face showed disdain. Who made this guy so insensitive that he had to take a beating to tell the truth? With that, the young girl held a small, delicate porcelain vase in her hand and raised it in front of Han Feng. Han Feng, what exactly is this perfume? Also, what's with that shareholding contract of yours? Ah? Uh, 
Han Feng couldn't help but freeze for a moment when he heard the words, and then he turned his head to look at Zhao Wei Nan. Han Feng remembered that half a pillar of incense ago, Zhao Wei Nan had sworn to guarantee that even if he was beaten to death, he would not reveal any information about the perfume. When he came into contact with Han Feng's gaze, Zhao Wei Nan was embarrassed like a shy woman who had met her sweetheart, and covered his ugly face with his hands in shame. Brother Han, I'm sorry, the first time I swore, I don't have much experience, it hurt too much just now, I didn't hold back and said it. Han Feng held back the urge to turn around and violently beat this guy up, then looked at the young girl and calmly said. It's my stuff, I have the right to keep it secret, so give it back to me. When the young girl heard this, a ray of fierce light instantly flashed in her eyes, and she sneered, what an ungrateful thing, this young lady asked you a question and you dared not answer, believe it or not, this young lady will break your mouth full of teeth and make it difficult for you to have a mouth to open? When Han Feng heard this, the only trace of patience that was left on his face suddenly became a bit strained. Although this young girl in front of her is beautiful, but her nature Han Feng is extremely disliked, the other party is like the previous life, those campus rampant little sister, on the basis of a few points of family history, or know a few powerful friends, they go around bullying people. And Han Feng never spoiled such a woman, even if she was a beautiful woman. I'll say it again, hand it over. Han Feng slowly got up, his gaze glowing cold as he said word for word. Being watched by Han Feng's icy gaze, the young girl's figure trembled slightly, and she actually felt a bit intimidated for no reason but the young girl's temper, obviously worse than Han Feng had imagined, was like a peacock that had been provoked, her beautiful eyes burning with rage. What a wanton thing, you're not going to eat your toast. The words fell, the young girl figure suddenly took a step forward towards Han Feng rushed, this seems to be an ordinary step, but with a few points of misty as smoke flavor, Han Feng only felt a flower in front of his eyes, the other party directly rushed to his body. Martial Artist Han Feng judged almost instantly that the other party was also a martial artist, and looking at this speed, it was a great deal faster than even that martial apprentice four-star Han Yuan, and his cultivation was bound to be not low. The moment the woman got close, a slender white palm directly slapped Han Feng's chest. Fiery Cloud Palm The palm force is swift and fierce, and vaguely carries a burning, hot breath, pounced on the face Han Feng was shocked in his heart, he didn't expect this woman to be so spiteful, and the moment she struck, it was this kind of vicious move. Fortunately, after experiencing the battle with Han Yuan, he wasn't without a little bit of combat experience, as the other party slapped his palm, Han Feng's body instantly shortened, and managed to avoid the palm, the palm power grazed his scalp, shocking Han Feng into a cold sweat. However, not waiting for him to get lucky, the head of the wind attacked, but the girl saw Han Feng to avoid this palm, palm turn, head shot down. Denizen, where are you running? This palm came swiftly and fiercely, directly slapping at Han Feng's head, if this materialized, Han Feng didn't know if he could keep his life. At the moment when his life was in danger, the ruthlessness in Han Feng's heart came back. He clenched his teeth, not caring how strong the power of that palm was, his body suddenly leaned forward, a head on top of the young girl's belly, his hands stretched out, then the young girl's slender waist made a strong embrace. Ah! The young girl's abdomen under the pain, but also felt the waist was attacked, suddenly cried out, palms slapped on the back of Han Feng, the forces subsided most of the time. Nonetheless, this palm still caused a stabbing pain in Han Feng's back, and his body stumbled, so he tumbled to the ground with the young girl. Feeling that her delicate body was being deadlocked, and even the other party's head, were on top of her chest, the young girl's heart was both shy and indignant, and angrily shouted. You asshole, I'm going to kill. You. Before the words left her mouth, a large hand suddenly pressed down on her mouth, blocking her later words raw. Not waiting for the young girl to break free. Snap. A crunching sound echoed in the elegant room, and the young girl only felt a heavy blow to her buttocks, a fiery pain accompanied by some kind of strange sensation that instantly spread all over her body. Chapter 34, the third partner at this moment, within the elegant room, the young girl widened her bright eyes and stared fixedly at the youth in front of her who was fierce and covered her mouth with her hand. Feeling the fiery pain coming from her buttocks, the young girl's dull eyes were still filled with disbelief. Since childhood, throughout the entire White Dragon County city, who dared to be so rude to her, today could be said to be an unprecedented first time, so much so that the young girl forgot to fight back in the first place. But after just a moment of stagnation, the young girl's gaze immediately revealed ferocity and madness, like an enraged young beast that wanted to fight Han Feng for its life. Snap. Who knows, Han Feng slapped again, heavily slapping on top of the other party's arse, causing the young girl's fragrant buttocks to be almost paralyzed, and the strength that had just been built up in her body was instantly dissipated, her eyes staring at Han Feng and death Han Feng's gaze at the moment, however, was icy cold, and he wouldn't be polite to a woman who had almost taken his life. Another hard to the young girl's buttocks, slap two hard slaps, see the other party finally did not have the intention to fight back, Han Feng then viciously said to the young girl. Humph, don't think that people all over the world will spoil you, if it wasn't for the fact that you're still young, believe it or not, I'd strip you naked right now and throw you out on the street. Han Feng said in a vicious voice, and his gaze also intentionally wandered around the young girl's petite body, and scrupulously, revealing a look of wicked interest and greed. 
Although this young girl's strength was extraordinary, but after all, she was still young, how had she ever encountered such a great villain as Han Feng, who did not know the slightest thing about compassion at this moment, she finally felt a burst of fear, and actually could not help but have her little nose twitching, a pair of big eyes, fluttered a few times, and then filled with tears, a look of Han wanting to cry. Seeing the young girl in this posture, Han Feng knew that he had finally subdued this unruly little she-tiger. He was about to send the other man home with a few more harsh words. Behind him, Zhao Wei Nan, who was also stunned by the scene in front of him, came behind Han Feng at some point and whispered in Han Feng's ear. That. Brother Han, this. This is the second thousand gold of the city master's house, Miss Qin Yujiao, you treat her like this, will. It be too ruthless ah. As soon as these words came out, Han Feng's brain suddenly went boom, and his body suddenly froze in place after staying frozen for a long time, Han Feng turned back to look at Zhao Wei Nan. At this moment, Han Feng's eyes revealed a dense and incomparable killing opportunity, and that impulse to strangle Zhao Wei Nan alive once again surged strongly in his heart. This son of a bitch, such important news, but did not tell himself until now. This little girl in front of him was actually the second thousandth daughter of the city lord's mansion, and Han Feng couldn't help but recall the words he had just said. Does Bailong County belong to your family? This is not the person's, this time they can break into a big trouble, actually will be the head of the five big families, the Qin family's second thousand gold S fan, just now also so a passive evil threat, this matter into the city's main house, the Qin family can let go of their own? Looking at Qin Yujiao, who had begun to sob in a low voice, her voice gradually amplifying, and hearing from outside the door, the two servants who had followed Qin Yujiao, the sound of anxious inquiries on Feng's scalp was a little numb, and he knew that he had to make a sacrifice at this moment to undo his earlier impulse. After the burning of an incense stick, still in the elegant room of the restaurant, Qin Yujiao had stopped crying and was sitting around the round table in the room with Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan. Now, Han Feng was aware of what had happened earlier. It turned out that after Zhao Wei Nan took a bottle of perfume from himself and left, under the deception in his heart, he took the perfume in his hand and played with it and he didn't see the road clearly for a while, and just after stepping out of the tavern, he rushed into the second miss of the city lord's mansion, and the perfume in his hand fell into the other party's hands. Second Miss Qin realized the wonder of the perfume, so she grabbed Zhao Wei Nan and asked after him, Zhang Wei Nan only hardened for a few seconds, saying that he would not say anything even if he was killed, and then he was violently beaten by the second Miss Qin on the street, and then he logically gave Han Feng up. That was what led to the scene just now where second Miss Qin barged into the box and questioned Han Feng, and of course, the fact that her attitude was so vicious had to do with the fact that not too long ago, Han Feng had barged into the city lord's mansion and stolen the Qin clan's first Miss's personal belongings The second Miss Qin's status as noble, in White Dragon County that is a character that is used to running rampant. Several big families of the younger generation, few people dare to provoke each other. It was Han Feng who had no knowledge of this, which had severely offended second Miss Qin, but second Miss Qin's anger had clearly been quelled. At this moment, Qin Yujiao held a black and white shareholding contract in both hands, her cherry lips slightly pouting as she blew dry the ink on it. Seeing the words free shares behind the 10% shares, the little girl's pretty face, which had not yet dried up from her tears, finally revealed a satisfied smile. Originally, in order to save himself from committing a big mistake, Han Feng used the most direct method, that is, to pull the other party into the gang. After informing Qin Yujiao about the perfume and all matters related to the launch of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, Han Feng also used the condition of giving up 10% of his shares for free and letting the other party become one of the three major shareholders of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion to cancel the grudge he had just made with Qin Yujiao originally. Qin Yujiao hated Han Feng and threatened to immediately return to the house and move the experts to dismantle Han Feng. But she was young after all, and after being persuaded and lulled by Han Feng's three-inch tongue, coupled with her intense curiosity about the perfume and the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, she eventually reluctantly agreed to forgive Han Fang's rude behavior just now. Folding the contract and storing it away, Qin Yujiao's pretty little face tightened its smile and glared at Han Feng, her little tiger teeth clenched in a threatening manner. Humph, originally you offended my sister, and today you dare to be so rude to this young lady, I should have chopped you into meat paste. But seeing as you have a sincere attitude in admitting your mistake, and letting me join the Dark Fragrance Pavilion for free, which is quite generous to say the least, I will reluctantly forgive you this time. But in the future, all operations of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion must have my participation, or else. Qin Yujia clenched her pink fist, but issued a crackling crunch, the power is very amazing. Although Han Feng disdain in his heart, but the situation is stronger than others ah, the city lord's office at present he cannot afford to provoke, face immediately piled up a smile. Ha ha. Second Miss Qin is joking, today you and I are not fighting, I Dark Fragrance Pavilion in the future with the addition of the second Miss Qin, will certainly be like a tiger with wings, bigger and stronger, to create brilliance. As for that 10% share, it doesn't count for anything at all, it's all for making a friend of the second young lady. Qin Yujiao nodded with great satisfaction, but Zhao Wei Nan, who was on the side, muttered with a bitter and embarrassed face, crying. But. But that 10% share, why should I deduct here ah? Han Feng turned his head and glared fiercely at this guy, filled with a warning, if it wasn't for this guy today, where would this have happened, and even he was almost pitched to death. 
Xin Yujio ignored the conversation between the two and asked again with a big swagger. By the way, Han Feng, when will our Dark Fragrance Pavilion start operating, besides collecting gold coins, is there anything else I can do? Apparently, second Miss Qin already had the awareness of being a partner in the store and began to care about the Dark Fragrance Pavilion's operation Han Feng stared at Qin Yujiao for a few moments, and his heart suddenly stirred as he thought to himself that having this second Miss Qin on board didn't seem like a bad thing. After a pause Han Feng said. Second Miss don't be anxious, our Dark Fragrance Pavilion's perfume is the only good thing in White Dragon County, and even the entire Qianlan Empire, so of course we can't open casually. I'm going to spend some time making another batch of perfumes, and at the same time make a pre-sale planner, in an effort to make our Dark Fragrance Pavilion, a hit. When the program is finalized, I'll get the two of you to discuss it, and then we'll all have to contribute. For Han Feng said the pre-sale plan, the two are unknown, Miss Qin nodded excitedly good, then I'll go back to the house and wait for your news. Saying that, second Miss Qin wanted to get up, but as she got up, her buttocks rubbed against the hard wooden stool, and she couldn't help but feel a fiery pain. Earlier, in order to deter second Miss Qin, Han Feng had not laid down a light hand, and at the moment, the other party's fragrant buttocks were even vaguely swollen. Under the pain, second Miss Qin couldn't help but suck in a mouthful of cool air, and immediately, like a young female tiger that had been plucked from the tiger's whiskers, she viciously gouged out another glance at Han Feng, and then her pretty face reddened, and she walked out of the door of the room with slightly strange footsteps. And Zhao Weinan rubbed the remaining bruises on his face, his heart still aching, the 10% of the shares that Han Feng had forcefully scratched off. Pitifully looking at Han Feng, he saw that the other party had no intention of returning him, and in the end, he could only hang his head helplessly and leave waiting for the two to leave. Han Feng was also a long sigh of relief, looked at his slightly red palms, recalling the feeling that he had just smacked Miss Qin's buttocks, can only be described with the word stabbing, exciting. After calming the fluctuations in his heart, Han Feng touched the stack of golden tickets in his sleeve, and a smile surfaced on his face again. Sure enough, knowledge is wealth ah, one can finally buy spirit stones. Chapter 35 Imperial Merchant Bank Carrying a golden ticket with a denomination of 15,000 gold coins in his arms, Han Feng strutted towards the east of the city. In the center of the busiest street in the eastern part of the city, a building that was five stories tall, the tallest building in White Dragon County City stood. This was the official branch of the Qianlan Empire's Imperial Merchant Bank, which was open in various parts of the country, selling all items related to spirit martial artists, including spirit stones. Han Feng was the first time to come to the Empire Merchant Bank, when he saw this majestic building, he was accustomed to seeing the skyscrapers of his previous life, but there was no sense of shock to speak of, and walked straight up the steps into the main door of the Merchant Bank. At the entrance of the Imperial Merchant Bank, four warriors in armor stood, and Han Feng did not know how strong these warriors were. However, before he stepped through the gate, when the gazes of these warriors swept towards him, he clearly felt an overpowering pressure that caused him to unconsciously tense his body, clearly, these warriors were no ordinary people either. Walking inside the Imperial Merchant Bank, his feet stepping on the soft red carpet, Han Feng felt his eyes light up. Inside the wide hall, nearly 100 bright crystal lamps were set on the top of the floor, and the soft light illuminated the hall transparently inside the hall, there were dozens of display cabinets distributed in a quadrilateral shape, which were also made of transparent crystals, and they were somewhat similar to the jewelry stores in the big shopping malls in the previous life. On top of the walls around the hall, there are still hanging swords, guns, swords and halberds, axes, battle axes, hooks and forks, and other various types of weapons. As soon as Han Feng walked into the hall, a young woman in a red uniform with a tall figure and a pretty face came forward and said, Welcome to your guests, I wonder what they need. Han Feng was slightly stunned, not realizing that the service of the Imperial Merchant Bank was so considerate, there was a waiter to receive him upon entry, he immediately said to the woman. I want to purchase some spirit stones. At those words, the woman's gaze brightened slightly, and the smile on her face became noticeably gentler even in the White Dragon County city, not many people could afford to buy spirit stones, mostly some spirit martial artists, or the sons and daughters of rich and noble families, and the more the other party consumed, the more these waiters were able to earn a share, so their attitude was naturally extremely good. Noble guest, the spirit stones are all on the second floor display case, let me guide you. Han Feng nodded and followed the woman toward the interior of the hall. Along the way, Han Feng surveyed the display cases in the first floor hall in passing and realized that among the display cases, there were nothing but some weapons. Surprisingly, there are some flickering light of the strange crystals, and even a variety of cups and plates, or some exquisite jewelry, such as women's hairpin, earrings, and so on. Han Feng couldn't help but be surprised that a hallowed imperial merchant bank would sell these things and although the woman was leading the way in front, her attention was obviously kept on Han Feng, seeing the other party looking around curiously, obviously coming to the imperial merchant bank for the first time, she immediately smiled and opened her mouth to explain. No need for you to be surprised, this is a low-level branch of our imperial merchant bank, in addition to selling spirit stones and other things needed by spirit martial artists according to imperial laws, we also sell some miscellaneous items for the sake of revenue. But most of these items are made of some special materials, you see. Like that hairpin. The woman smoothly pointed to a crystal clear, 
phoenix-tailed hairpin emitting a jade luster in the display cabinet beside her. This phoenix hairpin is the result of a jade material called jade spirit, long-term use can make a woman's hair soft and black, it's very marvelous, the selling price is not cheap, it requires nearly a hundred gold coins. After hearing the woman's introduction, Han Feng understood in his heart. Imperial Merchant Bank is no different from the enterprises in the previous world, in order to be able to blossom, naturally need to adapt to the local conditions. After all, White Dragon County is only a medium county in Sichuan Province, a county city, there can be an Imperial Merchant Bank station has been very good, the Merchant Bank naturally can't only take the high-end route, but also need to sell some ordinary people can consume things. Although a hairpin of nearly a hundred gold coins was still something that ordinary people did not dare to hope for, some middle-class people would always be able to buy it, so that the merchant house would be able to earn some more profit. Han Feng's gaze lingered on the hairpin for a few moments longer before he eventually followed the woman up to the second floor of the merchant bank compared to the first floor, the second floor had significantly fewer counters, and the types of items in the display cases were sparse. At a glance, Han Feng saw that in the display cabinet in the center, a wooden box held a spirit stone that shimmered with a light silver luster. On top of that, he also saw some clearly more refined weapons within the display cases around him than on the walls of the first floor. He even saw a display case specializing in selling talismans, in which the light spirit talisman and giant strength talisman were also displayed, both priced at around 150 gold coins. And Han Feng remembered, Shu Han Xian said, he sold to the merchant bank, just a hundred gold coins a sheet only, directly increased the price of 50% sale, visible empire merchant bank's heart is still quite black. Fortunately, the spirit stone is the hard currency between the empire spirit martial artists, the empire expressly stipulates the value of the spirit stone, even the empire merchant bank does not dare to tamper with the price on phone came directly to the spirit stone area, looking at the silver light shining inside the display cabinet, presenting nearly a hundred spirit stones, and was a bit dazzled for a moment. In his mind, Siener, who hadn't appeared for several days, also let out a lazy and tantalizing moan, saying. Well. I smelled the smell of spirit stones, master, are all these spirit stones yours, why don't I help you absorb them all? With that said, Han Feng saw with his own eyes that the hundreds of low-grade spirit stones in the display case shook slightly. Han Feng was startled and hurriedly stopped it in his mind. Hey, Siener, don't mess around, this is the Imperial Merchant Bank, if you absorb all of these spirit stones, right away I'll be in bad luck. Han Feng knows that the Imperial Merchant Bank is similar to the bank in the previous world, and the consequences of robbing the bank naturally do not need to be said. He he he. Master, people in you joke, but these days are no spirit stone moisturizing, people suffocate so hard, master, people really want it. Ah. Uh. Strongly holding back the chi and blood surging within his body, he secretly cursed the abrasive little goblin, Han Feng's face slightly reddened as he looked toward the waitress who was swimming with a hint of surprise on her face and said. I would like to buy fifteen. After a pause, Han Feng thought of something and changed his words. Give me fourteen spirit stones. The woman's breasts rose and fell violently as she heard this, and as her eyes flowed, the look she gave Han Feng suddenly became even more eager. Fourteen spirit stones, that would be fourteen thousand gold coins, I can't imagine that the other party is so young, but he is so generous. This single business is done, the woman can take more than a hundred gold coins, which is enough to cover her salary for half a year the waitress said with slight excitement. Your honor, please wait a moment, I will wrap the spirit stones for you. Not long after, the woman came with a foot-long delicate wooden box in her hand, which neatly held fourteen low-grade spirit stones. After Han Feng checked that there was no mistake, he delivered the fourteen golden tickets and asked the woman to find herself a leather pouch to put the spirit stones into and carry them close to her. Feeling the heavy weight around his waist, Han Feng was very satisfied in his heart, and under the woman's attentive guidance, he casually strolled around the second floor again. Finally returning to the first floor, Han Feng swept his gaze around and suddenly looked at one of the display cabinets and said to the woman. Wrap up that jade pin you just gave me. The woman's eyes lit up again as she sniffed, and she rushed to the display case to retrieve the goods Han Feng, on the other hand, didn't know what he had thought of, and with a smile at the corner of his mouth, he stood in place and waited. While this was happening, Siener's voice suddenly rang in Han Feng's mind. Master, you move closer toward the west corner. Han Feng froze at the words and didn't understand what Siener meant, but he still subconsciously did as he was told and moved closer towards the western display case. When he walked to the corner, Han Feng saw that in a display cabinet in the far corner, there was a pile of mottled and broken things like pieces of broken iron, which looked extremely inconspicuous. Instead, the price tag at the bottom clearly stated a price of 200 gold coins. Han Feng couldn't help but mutter. It's amazing that a bunch of broken pieces of iron are selling for so much. However, there was Fairy's delighted voice in his head. Master, you're picking up a great bargain, buy these fragments. Ah? Uh. Han Feng couldn't help but be a bit surprised when he heard this. This. This is called picking up a bargain? Master, trust me, these shards are certainly worth their weight in gold. Chapter 36, Chu Hanshin's Loss Han Feng couldn't see the true value of this pile of broken iron pieces at all, but he had great trust in Siener's advice. 
It so happened that the waitress had already wrapped the jade hairpin at that moment, and when she saw Han Feng standing here, surveying the pile of broken iron pieces, she couldn't help but show a hint of surprise in her eyes, and then eagerly introduced herself. Noble guest, these fragments have been appraised by my merchant bank's treasure appraisers and determined to be fragments of a high-grade blade, and although they have been damaged, they are extremely hard and incredibly sharp. If we ask a refiner to build something and inlay or fuse it on top of an ordinary blade, the power is not bad. After the introduction, perhaps because Han Feng's huge spending today had given this waitress a lot of wealth, she even kindly whispered a reminder at this moment. However, there is no need for you to purchase this item if you don't have any special needs, after all, the cost of hiring a refiner to forge it is not low. For the other party's kind reminder, Han Feng threw a thankful smile and said after a slight hesitation. That's okay, I'm quite interested in the pieces, wrap them up for me. The customer specified to buy, the woman naturally would not persuade again, respectfully wrapped these fragments for Han Feng, and after the money and goods were cleared, she sent Han Feng out of the door of the merchant house. When Han Feng's figure walked down the merchant bank's steps, behind a screened window on the top floor of the merchant bank's fifth floor. A young woman wearing a tight black long dress with a plump and enchanting figure, a pair of light blue gem-like eyes gazed through the gauze window at the young figure that had just stepped out of the merchant's house, and muttered to herself isn't this Han Xiaotian's eldest son? The Han clan expelled him from the main vein and gave him a famous and unreliable fine iron vein, so where did he get the money to buy spirit stones? And since he was born with a wasted vein, he doesn't seem to have any use for spirit stones. Behind the woman, a withered old man with a stooped figure said with a little thought. I heard that this son has joined the Zhou family, could it be that the Zhou family gave him money? The woman sniffed, but she couldn't help but lose her smile. The Zhou family? Zhou Dafu, that iron rooster who doesn't give a damn, it's already a good thing that he doesn't count on this kid, how could he treat him so kindly? The old man nodded. In that case, I wonder what the master has to say. The woman turned her back to the old man, her eyes gazing at the fading figure, and said thoughtfully. I heard that Han Xiaotian died extremely strangely back then, and he seemed to have a certain extremely precious thing on his body, which the leaders of several big clans in the White Dragon County were all begging for. Huang Lao, do you think Han Xiaotian will leave these things to his own son? When Elder Huang heard this, a flash of light flashed through his old eyes, but then he said. It's hard to be sure about something so catchy. The woman said with a quiet smile. That's not necessarily true, I heard that this kid, the day before today, within the county city, beat up the Wu family's second young master in public, and later on, he also wasted Han Yuan, the Han family's main lineage sidekick, with his own hands. Do you believe that this would be something a kid born with a wasted vein would be able to do? This. Elder Huang couldn't help but show a look of astonishment on his face the woman's tone returned to calm and said. This kid doesn't seem to be as simple as we thought, Huang Lao, let our people secretly pay attention to the Han family branch, especially the movements of this Han Feng, maybe. We can have unexpected gains. Yes, boss. After leaving the Imperial Merchant Bank, Han Feng didn't go home directly, but took advantage of the fact that the sun hadn't yet set and the city gates were not yet closed, and then bought some clothes, snacks, and dozens of jars of white wine at the bazaar. Thinking that he would probably be traveling between the branch and the county a lot these days, Han Feng simply spent dozens of gold coins again, bought a large carriage full of goods, and personally drove his horse home. As the carriage exited the western city gate and greeted the setting sun with only a wisp of afterglow left, Han Feng waved his horsewhip and gently smacked the horses but, causing the carriage to speed up during the slight bumps, Han Feng leaned on the deck of the carriage, and a marvelous feeling suddenly arose in his heart. Not so long ago, he was in the museum himself, working as an obscure administrator, but now, in less than half a month, he has embarked on a whole new journey, with his own family and about to have his own business. Although many threats still existed in the dark, Han Feng felt that life seemed like it should have been such twists and turns, otherwise wouldn't it be boring to be flat all the way? 15,000 gold coins on his body, now only a few hundred left, but Han Feng's mood has become much better, humming popular songs from his previous life all the way, driving his horse galloping in the countryside paths. In the evening, Han Feng finally rushed back to the Han mansion, making housekeeper Zhang drive the carriage into the mansion, Han Feng called Binger again, and the master and servant unloaded the goods together a cart full of goods, piled up in the hall of the Han mansion, Xu Hanqin, as well as Han Lei, whose injuries had mostly improved and could get out of bed and walk, were also startled and gathered in the hall. The crowd was a bit surprised when they watched Han Feng buy such a large pile of things. And when the Han family master saw everyone arrive, he began to distribute the things he had bought back. First was Binger, Han Feng had bought her two brand new sets of dresses and skirts, as well as a pack of dried fruit and a few strings of ice candy gourds. The little girl was obviously receiving a gift for the first time, her happy little face flushed red, tightly hugging her new clothes and snacks, her big eyes looking at Han Feng, her eyes brimming with happiness and surprise. This was followed by Butler Zhang, for whom Han Feng had also bought two sets of proper butler's attire, as well as a brand new abacuses for Han Lei, in addition to new clothes, Han Feng had also bought him many nutrients to replenish his qi and blood, and had Binger make him soups on weekdays. 
Everyone had their own gifts, but only Chu Hunqing didn't receive any, and as if Han Feng had forgotten this big sister, he began to get busy again, pounding dozens of jars of white wine he had bought back into the backyard. Looking at holding the wine altar left Han Feng, as well as the crowd harvested gifts, the kind of overflowing joy, Chu Hunqing expression did not change at all, but hidden in the sleeve of the jade hand, but could not help but pull the sleeve. Without further words, Chu Hunqing silently turned around and left. Walking calmly all the way back to the small west wing courtyard, Chu Hunqing's expression had been bland until the moment she stepped through the door of her own room, a faint touch of loss finally rose in that pair of beautiful eyes that set the spirit of heaven and earth even Chu Hunqing didn't know why she was so lost. Was it just because Han Feng hadn't brought himself a gift? But if it were in the past, I'm afraid I wouldn't have had the slightest mood swing at all, right? Although the heart of all kinds of suppression, do not want to let the loss of emotion spread, Chu Hansian closed the door when, with the forces still heavier than usual a few points, the door issued a bang a muffled sound. Chu Hanxing turned around and was about to step into the inner room, but found that the outer room of the compartment, the candle lamp on the table has been lit, she remembered that she clearly did not light the candle. As she approached, she realized that a beautiful jade box lay under the candlelight Chu Hanxing was slightly stunned, subconsciously reaching out to take the jade box, lifting the lid, a crystal clear phoenix tail jade hairpin, illuminated by the candle flame, exuding a fascinating radiant luster. Although Chu Hanxing's nature is cool, she is also an ordinary young woman who also knows how to love beauty, when she saw this exquisite jade hairpin, her beautiful eyes couldn't help but light up, and she deeply liked it at the first glance. But who put this here? Doubts could not help but rise in Chu Hanxing's heart, but subconsciously associated it with Han Feng, who had just held two wine altars and ran all the way fast. Did. As expected, when her gaze moved away from the jade hairpin, Chu Hanxing saw that there was also a note pressed under the jade box on the table, with a line of dashing and uninhibited script written on it. Cold jade hairpin in autumn water, light veil rolled in blue smoke, this hairpin is fortunate enough to be given to a beautiful woman. Below the verse, the word wind is also written in a wild manner. Chapter 37, Touched by the Heart When Chu Hansian saw the line of poetry under the jade box, as well as the unique word wind, she couldn't help but stare blankly, stunned for a long time. After sobering up, Chu Hanxian recited softly. Cold jade hairpin in autumn water, light veil rolled in blue smoke. The eyes cannot help, become confused and gentle, Chu Hanxing as if seeing a wonderful picture of smoke and clouds, cannot help but sigh softly. What a beautiful poem. Eyes also cannot help but flooded with a flash of color, and when you see the back, that dog tail continues sable, like, this hairpin lucky, can be given to a good woman, Chu Hanxing cannot help but spit out. And that white jade-like pretty face was flushed with an intoxicating blush. Nor is it just due to the reflection of the candle flame, or the shyness of the beauty's heart looking at the phoenix tail jade hairpin in the jade box, Chu Hanxing hesitated for a long time but still couldn't help but reach out and take it out. Carefully inserting the jade hairpin into her hair, separated by a distance of ten feet, Chu Hanxin looked toward the bronze mirror in the compartment. Mirror in a long plain dress, but it is difficult to hide the enchanting graceful posture, that slightly with a hint of haggard stunning face, still looked that kind of choo choo moving. And that hair above the phoenix tail jade hairpin, at this time will be like the eye-catching pen, so that the original elegant woman, more than a trace of soft beauty and nobility, candlelight illumination, but also vaguely gave birth to a different kind of charming attitude. Looking at the mirror in the dainty self, Chu Hanxin cannot help but heart trembled slightly, cheeks also became more red, eyes rose a touch of light blush, that moment of absolute beauty style, really is unparalleled. And just then, the door of the room was suddenly knocked on knock knock. Chu Hanxian was startled, and reached out in panic to remove the jade hairpin, put it in the jade box, and pushed it back under the candlestick as if it had never been touched. After doing this, Chu Hanxin then paced to the door and opened the door to the room. The door to the room opened and a familiar figure appeared in the doorway, it was Han Feng. As soon as she saw Han Feng, Chu Hanxin's pretty face instantly became hotter and hotter, but fortunately at this moment, the sky was dim, and the blush on her face should be indistinguishable to the other party. However, Chu Hanxin was unaware of this. Even Han Feng's visual senses had been enhanced quite a bit after quenching his body with the demon refining pot and taking that drop of life spirit liquid through the dim candlelight in the room, one glance could see the abnormality on Chu Hanxin's jade face. Han Feng stood outside the door, looking at the delicate and stunningly beautiful face in front of him, his breathing couldn't help but worsen, dryly swallowing a mouthful of saliva, unable to keep his gaze straight. This is too beautiful. Feeling Han Feng's gaze fixed on her cheeks, Chu Hanxin's heartbeat accelerated for no apparent reason, her gaze subconsciously dodging as she frowned and scolded. What are you doing here? Han Feng scratched his head and laughed awkwardly. Eh? Big sister, I gave you a gift, do you like it? At those words, Chu Hanxin pretended to be calm and said. Are you talking about the jade hairpin on the table? It's not bad, but I don't even like to wear these things on weekdays. Upon hearing this, Han Feng secretly probed into the room and looked at the jade box on the table, which had obviously been moved, and glanced at Chu Hanxin's slightly disheveled hair the corner of his mouth imperceptibly curved up in an arc, and Han Feng immediately said along with Chu Hanxin. Hey! It's okay, when you're in the mood to wear it again someday, it'll look great. 
Shu Hanqin was non-committal, but looked toward Han Feng and said, That jade hairpin is made of jade spirit, the price shouldn't be low, I remember you only took a hundred gold coins from the treasury recently, where did you get the money from when you bought so many things these days? Han Feng stuttered at his words, not expecting Chu Hanqin to be so meticulous. But about the perfume thing Han Feng still want to give the family a surprise, at this moment naturally will not reveal, just a mysterious smile said. Big sister, don't worry, I earned all this money myself. You earned it? Chu Hanqin's eyebrows knitted slightly, obviously somewhat less convinced seeing this, Han Feng smiled bitterly and raised three fingers. If you don't believe me, I can swear on the spot that the money I spent on these things was all earned by my own ability, and if there is any half-truth, let me. Well, I believe it. Without waiting for Han Feng to make a poisonous oath, Chu Hanqin interrupted him. Han Feng's heart slightly moved, this woman is really knife-mouthed tofu heart. Without waiting for Han Feng to say more, Chu Hanqin added. Wait for me, I have something for you too. Hmm. Han Feng froze, somewhat surprised. He saw Chu Hanqin turn around and go back to the house, and in a short while, he was holding an exquisite scented capsule in his hand, and came to Han Feng's side, handing it towards him. Take it. Han Feng hesitantly took the capsule and opened it with his hand, the light silver light inside the capsule dispersed with a slightly hot breath, and it was actually a low-grade spirit stoneness. Han Feng looked at Chu Hanqin in shock. Big sister, what are you? Chu Hanqin said calmly. Although you haven't admitted it, I know that you should be in need of spirit stones. This is a spirit stone that I exchanged for making talismans, so take it and use it first, I'll think of another way when I run out. Listening to Chu Hanqin's reply as if it were a casual conversation, Han Feng's heart was a flutter. He suddenly remembered that earlier, Chu Hanqin had said that the gold coins she had exchanged for making talismans had all been used to buy spirit stones and spirit medicines for Shao Lei. By all accounts, she shouldn't have had any money on her at that time, so how did she get this one spirit stone? Looking at the tired color in Chu Hanqin's beautiful eyes, and then remembering that in these days, Chu Hanqin was always alone with the door to her room closed tightly, not knowing what she was doing, Han Feng understood everything it must have been the day she saw that she needed a spirit stone, so she made talismans day and night just to buy herself a spirit stone. In an instant, it was as if there were huge waves lapping in his chest, and Han Feng's gaze flushed slightly as he looked at this beautiful woman under the candlelight, all sorts of strong emotions surging through his heart. Gratitude, heartache, and compassion. Han Feng couldn't help but curse in his heart at the moment, his previous self was truly a complete and utter fool. There was a woman who was so devoted to him, but he didn't know how to cherish it, instead, he joined the wolf's den like Zhou family and made a fool of himself while laughing at himself in his heart, Han Feng secretly swore that he would never let this woman in front of him get hurt again in his life. Perhaps being somewhat uncomfortable by Han Feng's gradually sizzling gaze, Xu Hanqin twisted his head to look at the sky. It's getting late, so go home. Han Feng hesitated for a moment, wanting to take out the spirit stones he had purchased today and take a portion of them to Chu Hanqin, but he was afraid that Chu Hanqin would be too shocked and suspect that he had done something bad. In the end, he made up his mind that it would be better to wait until the dark fragrance pavilion was officially opened and the perfume was a big seller before confessing about it. At that moment, Chu Hanqin seemed to have thought of something else and reminded. By the way, shortly after you left today, the steward of the Zhou mansion came to the door, saying that he had been ordered by the Zhou family lord to urge you to return home that steward's attitude was quite unpleasant, it seems that because of that incident at the city lord's mansion, it must be the Zhou family that is displeased with you. Han Feng sniffed and waved his hand indifferently. Eldest sister, if the Zhou family sends someone again in the future, just send them away at will and don't pay attention to them. Chu Hanqin frowned and said. Now that you've joined the Zhou family, it's impossible for you to keep not returning to the Zhou family, and Miss Zhou, she's your wife. Hearing Chu Hanqin mention this Miss Zhou once again, Han Feng was helpless in his heart, he and she actually had half a hair's breadth of relationship except for a piece of paper marriage contract, much less any feelings. He couldn't help but mutter under his breath, so what if she's a wife, she's not as good as one of your fingers. Although Han Feng's voice was small, with Chu Hanqin's cultivation, he heard it clearly, and his face immediately revealed a helpless look that was both angry and amused. Don't fool around, wait for some days, you'd better go back to the Zhou family, although at first you had an accident in the city lord's mansion, the Zhou family didn't step in, but after all, it's you who are at fault, for the sake of Rhyme Plum's face, this matter you'd just make good reparation and apologize. Han Feng nodded copiously, and after bidding farewell to Chu Hanqin, he turned to leave with the spirit stone in his arms. Chu Hanqin then stood at the door of the compartment, watching him walk away. When Han Feng reached the courtyard gate, he stopped and turned his head to look. The moonlight sprinkled down, and the silver ash fell on top of that stunning figure with a plain dress and immaculate appearance, as if it had put a layer of veil on her she just stood there quietly, but it was wonderfully picturesque. Han Feng couldn't help but speak. Chu Hanqin. Hmm. Chu Hanqin, who was leaning against the door, was slightly stunned. Han Feng, however, said to her with incomparable seriousness. You're beautiful. After saying that, Han Feng flew out of the courtyard and disappeared. Chu Hanqin, on the other hand, froze in place for a long time, and then retreated back to the compartment. 
Closing the wooden door, Chu Huanqing turned around and used her back against the door of the house for a moment, her delicate face flushed like fire, and her heartbeat and breathing became rapid. She couldn't help but reach out and cover her heart, her beautiful eyes containing anger. Bastard boy, how dare you make fun of me? Although he spoke words of rebuke, the corners of Chu Huanqing's mouth couldn't help but turn up slightly as he reached out and gently brushed his cheeks does he? He really think I'm beautiful? After uttering these words, Chu Hanshin seemed to realize that something was wrong, shrinking her hand like a frightened rabbit and cursing. Chu Hanshin, what are you thinking, he's your brother and he's already married. Despite admonishing himself in his heart, the ripples in the heart pot had already spread, how could they be calmed by a single sentence? Chapter 38 Spirit Soldier and Nimble Soldier Saying goodbye to Chu Hanshin and returning to his own compound, Han Feng's heart was likewise beating violently for a long time, making it difficult to calm down. In his previous life, Han Feng was alone and had never even been in a serious relationship. But tonight with Chu Han Xin together, Han Feng but the first time to experience the heart feeling, this frequency, and throbbing, so that he tasted the flavor of love gazing at the exquisite scented capsule in his hand, Han Feng, with a smile on his lips, actually launched into a daze. A few moments later, there was an extremely sultry voice in his head. Master, you can't forget about people when you have another woman. Han Feng instantly woke up and knew that it must be because Xian'er was a bit impatient and wanted to absorb the spirit stones. But now that he had the spirit stones, it was indeed time for him to hurry up and cultivate. Ever since that day when Han Yuan and the others were blown away, in recent times, the main vein of the Han family had surprisingly not made any half-assed movements, and this calmness, in turn, made Han Feng feel extremely uneasy. The best way to deal with a crisis was naturally to strengthen oneself, and since he had already planned to guard this family, Han Feng had to put it into action placing the scented pouch under his pillow, Han Feng took out the spirit stones that he had purchased at the Imperial Merchant Bank today, as well as the pile of black fragments. Seeing this fragment that cost over 200 gold coins to purchase, Han Feng couldn't help but wonder. Sienner, what exactly is the use of these fragments, and why do you have to make me buy them? Previously at the Imperial Merchant Bank, that female attendant had reminded Han Feng that although this item was a fragment of a high-grade weapon, it was actually not very useful, and the cost of hiring a refiner to forge it would be very high. At those words, Sienner but laughed. Master, you're really lucky, these fragments are fragments of a great three Nyanbing. Nimble soldier? Han Feng was at a loss, having never heard of this item. Fairy explained Master, in the cultivation world, in order to enhance their battle power, martial artists will use weapons in addition to practicing martial arts. And the weapon used by spirit martial artists, the one that allows their spiritual power to add up and explode into a powerful killing force, is called its spirit soldier, and is also the most seen weapon on the continent. However, apart from spirit weapons, there was another type of weapon that belonged exclusively to spirit idea masters, which could conduct or enhance spiritual power, and was known as a thought weapon, and this type of weapon was at least dozens of times rarer than a spirit weapon, and much more precious. While a level 3 spirit soldier is worth maybe a few hundred low-grade spirit stones, a level 3 nian soldier is worth at least a thousand low-grade spirit stones, and it's priced to sell. Hiss. Han Feng couldn't help but draw in a breath of cold air when he heard this. Thousands of low-grade spirit stones, that would be worth millions of gold coins, I'm afraid that even an existence like the five grey families would easily find it difficult to come up with so many gold coins at once after the shock passed, Han Feng was a bit excited again. Sienner, do you mean that these Nian Bing fragments are worth thousands of spirit stones? Put. Fairy, however, snorted out a laugh. Master, what are you thinking? Although Nian Bing is precious, that is only possible if it is a complete Nian Bing. As for these fragments, at the time of the collapse of the Nianbing, not only had the internal structure been damaged, but the various materials that had been mixed during the refining of the weapon had also been mixed in. Now that mental power can't be manipulated, this is simply just a pile of waste, and the price of 200 gold coins is purely a pitfall. Ah! Uh, Han Fang's face instantly looked unsightly. You! You know the pitfalls, but still let me buy? Do I look like an ingrate? I am master don't be in a hurry, people haven't tea finished yet. These fragments are just a pile of scrap metal to others, but don't forget that the demon refining pot can refine everything, so naturally, it can also refine the impurities out of these fragments, leaving the spiritual metal in them, and it can even refine an yin soldier again. Han Feng heard the words, but his heart was not too excited, for Sienner, he more or less understood, and immediately inquired lightly. You tell me directly how many spirit stones are needed to refine an yin soldier. Fairy let out a winking laugh. It's not much, it's only two to three hundred spirit stones at most. Master, you've really earned a lot. The muscles on Han Fang's face twitched, and he finally said calmly. Fine, let's say I've lost 200 gold coins, I don't want this Nian soldier, besides, I'm not a spirit Nian master in the first place, and I don't need this item at all. Sienner giggled, but in a meaningful way. Master, you've cultivated the Dao Xian technique, you'll need these sooner or later. Han Fang's heart snapped, and he suddenly had the feeling of being dug a hole in advance, waiting for him to jump down. 
It's just a matter of practicing. Han Feng no longer thought much about it and planned to seize the time to cultivate. However, this night, he did not intend to raise his cultivation level, but wanted to try out what Sienner had said, cultivating martial arts in the realm of the pot. As Han Feng dabbled in martial arts for a longer period of time, he also learned the importance of martial arts techniques. The so-called practice not practice martial arts, 10 years of hard work, their own cultivation and then high, if not practice martial arts, can play out the power, but their own one twelfth the only way to truly explode one's potential was to have a successful martial arts cultivation. Once he made up his mind and communicated with Siener, Siener told Han Feng the method to enter the demon refining pot, and also taught Han Feng a small method to include some items into the demon refining pot. Of course, the amount of things that could be stowed away was dependent on the strength of Han Feng's spiritual power, as well as the energy level of the items being stowed away. Today's Han Feng could barely manage to include the three secret books, the pile of Nianbing fragments, and more than a dozen low-grade spirit stones in the demon refining pot, but any more than that would be impossible to collect. After storing the items, Han Feng recited a trick in his heart, and the green seal at his heart flashed with light in the next moment, a heavily spinning sensation appeared, Han Feng's eyes went black, and in an instant, he came back to that white sky and earth. In front of her eyes, Sienner, who was a combination of holy and enchanting, and whose beauty was unlike that of a mortal, was already standing playfully in front of Han Feng, rushing at him and ranting. Master, you've finally given up on needing people. Seeing Sienner's angry and resentful demeanor, Han Feng knew that he couldn't communicate too much with the other party because if he didn't pay attention, he would be provoked and couldn't help himself, so he hurriedly went straight to the point. Sienner, I want to cultivate martial arts, how can I make the demon refining pot assist me? Sienner sniffed with a grimace. Master only needs to be within the territory of the pot and cultivate martial arts as usual, I will absorb spiritual energy to manipulate the demon refining pot and help master cultivate. Han Feng nodded and without further hesitation, he staked out a pilework, recalling the regretful mountain fist fist technique in his mind, and began to perform it in place. And Sienner's timely figure drifted backward, disappearing without a trace in a matter of moments. When Han Feng performed his fist techniques in the realm of the pot, he initially felt that there was no difference from when he practiced in the outside world. But as time passed, he gradually realized the difference. As the regrettable mountain fist was executed, Han Feng realized that the white clouds around him began to change, and were actually glowing crimson. The temperature within the space seemed to be gradually rising, and his own body began to heat up, as if he was in a furnace. Han Feng's heart, however, has become surprisingly calm, so calm that there is not a single distraction in his heart, forgetting time, space in the end, he was even so oblivious that a picture suddenly appeared in his empty mind. That is an illusory figure, its steady footsteps, flying steps, double fists blasted out one after another, seemingly random punch, but firm as a mountain, each punch blasted out, all erupted like the sound of the earth collapsing. In the next moment, the picture suddenly changed, and in front of that figure, there seemed to be a rolling falling stone falling down, crushing towards him. Instead, the figure advanced without retreating, striding forward with both fists wide open and swinging. With every punch he blasted out, he was actually able to shatter a boulder, and he was invincible and unstoppable all the way. Boom boom boom. A dull sound echoed in Han Feng's mind, and his gaze became blazing and shocked. This was because the fist technique that this figure was performing was clearly the regretful mountain fist. The regrettable mountain fist is divided into three realms, gathering strength, shattering wood, and breaking rock. The regrettable mountain fist performed by this figure in front of him, Han Feng felt that it had even exceeded the third level of the rock-breaking realm and reached a new level. While his heart was horrified, Han Feng also realized that he was actually able to see all the subtle changes in the muscles and bones of the figure's body when the fist technique was performed. Its body also seems to contain a flow of dark red airflow, that seems to be what Siener called qi and blood. All of this was constantly engraved in Han Feng's mind, and without realizing it, he began to imitate that figure and once again executed the regretful mountain fist. At first, he only imitated the figure's movements, and later, he began to try, imitating the stretching of its muscles and bones, and even tried to control the operation of qi and blood in his body chapter 39 recharge player. Boom boom boom. The white space of the realm and the pot had turned a crimson color. In the red mist, Han Feng's eyes were tightly closed, and his feet moved quickly, each step was steady and solid, as if rooted to the ground, while his fist swung with a subtle air-breaking sound. At this moment, with every punch Han Feng swung out, the muscles and bones of his entire body fired simultaneously, condensing at a single point. The power that erupted was several times more powerful than the previous all-out punch, and had actually reached the first level of the regrettable mountain fist, the power-gathering realm. And at this moment, Han Feng hadn't stopped punching, finishing a set of punches and then proceeding to rehearse them from the beginning, his power still increasing this went on and on for two whole hours. Within the territory of the pot, Han Feng's eyes were tightly closed, and he was already sweating like a pulp, with white mist coming out of the top of his head. And yet, he was oblivious to it, his body was like a machine, and he was still frantically throwing punches. Suddenly, in the void, a red light flashed, and Sienner's slender and perfect figure appeared. 
Looking at Han Feng, who was immersed in the regretful mountain fist cultivation, she casually threw her hand, and a round log as thick as an adult's thigh flew towards Han Feng's back. Han Feng, who was in a state of closed eyes, was keenly aware of the strong wind coming from behind, and violently twisted his waist and turned around, taking a step forward, his heels powered up, his entire body's muscles contracted, his joints tensed like springs, and his blood accelerated in an instant regretful mountain fist. With a bellowing cry, Han Feng's entire body's strength condensed into a single fist, which blatantly blasted out, directly on top of the wooden stake. Boom! Under a muffled sound, that thick wooden stake was actually directly blown apart by Han Feng's punch. The moment the stake shattered, Han Feng also finally came to his senses, opening his eyes to look at the shattered wooden blocks under his feet, he looked at his fist in shock and dismay. Siener floated down and said with a coquettish smile. Congratulations master, you have cultivated to the second level of the regretful mountain fist, the shattered wood realm. When Han Feng heard this, he couldn't help but glare in shock, and then he tried to use the regretful mountain fist technique to blast out another punch Han Feng only felt that his body had become incomparably coordinated, and when he threw a punch, it unexpectedly carried a subtle air-breaking sound, far more powerful than before. I've actually really reached the second level of the shattered wood realm. Han Feng was pleasantly surprised and couldn't help but ask again. Fairy, how much time did I use? Fairy said smugly. It's just dawn in the outside world now, master you've only spent one night. Han Feng looked more and more surprised, just one night, he actually crossed the regrettable mountain fist introductory gathering force realm, straight to the second broken wood realm, is really incredible. One must know that his brother Han Lei's cultivation to the shattered wood realm took several years to achieve, and it was only after reaching the shattered wood realm that it became clear to Han Feng when Han Lei had broken the stake with a single punch, he had only just managed to cross the threshold of the shattered wood realm, and there was still a gap between himself, who had broken the stake with a single punch. In other words, Han Feng had now surpassed Han Lei in terms of both cultivation and martial arts attainments, and all of this had changed in just half a month's time. Fairy, thank you so much. Han Feng looked towards Siener and thanked her from the bottom of his heart. If not for the help of the demon refining pot, even if Han Feng traveled to the other world, I'm afraid that he could only be a waste of time, perhaps, has long been Zhou Dafu family to play dead. Siener, however, gave a rare coy smile. Master doesn't have to be so polite, besides, driving the demon refining pot still relies on the spirit stones earned by Master Ah. Han Feng nodded at his words, but then he suddenly woke up and asked somewhat nervously. Right. By the way, Siener, how many spirit stones have been consumed this night? When Sienna heard this, her beautiful eyes smiled into a crescent moon as she said sweetly. It's not much, only seven spirit stones were used, and people have only been comfortable for one night. Ah? Uh. Han Feng's face instantly reddened, and his mouth opened wide but he couldn't say a word. The look was like a rooster that had been strangled, staggering, and almost falling to the ground. Consuming seven low-grade spirit stones in one night, when converted into money, that would be seven thousand gold coins ah, uh, the fourteen spirit stones that he had just bought were instantly consumed in half. Han Feng's heart is dripping blood, the degree of kryptonite of the demon refining pot is simply darker than the penguin company in the previous life. Siener, you why didn't you tell me earlier that you have to consume so many spirit stones? Fairy looked innocent. Master, you didn't ask me either. Then why did you tell me to stop practicing at this time, is it because you have a clear conscience? Fairy sighed with a hint of lustful sultriness in her gaze. Alas. Who let the master's body bones are too weak, at this moment will have already reached the limit. If we keep practicing, I'm afraid we'll hurt our vitality, otherwise, people must suck it up before they can do so. I. Han Feng's eyes blackened again, this woman is clearly trying to squeeze herself dry off. However, on second thought, raising the regrettable mountain fist to such power in one night, if it were anyone else, it would simply be a great thing to beg for. Han Feng's heart gradually balanced, but also initially have the basic awareness of rechargeable players it was only after returning to his room from the realm of the pot that Han Feng felt a sense of emptiness all over his body. According to Siener, his own night of cultivation had consumed too much chi and blood in his body, and his skin, flesh, sinews, and bones had all reached their limits. He needs to get some rest. Although his body was tired, Han Feng's mood was somewhat excited, with his three-star cultivation as a martial apprentice, plus the regrettable mountain fist shattered wood realm, nowadays he was considered to be a true martial arts practitioner. Because his body was tired, Han Feng had Binger bring breakfast into the room and had her help boil some hot water. Han Feng also followed Chu Hanshin's example and carried a large bathtub into the room, ready to enjoy some bathing pleasure. Strip, bare clothing, Han Feng naked into the bathtub, the whole body immersed in warm water, suddenly feel comfortable, Han Feng comfortable humming a little song who knows, just at this moment, the door of the room was suddenly pushed open, Han Feng was startled, and his hands subconsciously covered the key areas. Looking up, he saw the little lowly, Ice, wearing the new dress he had given her yesterday, and walking in with a scoop of water and a towel in her hand. Ice. Ice, what are you? Doing in here? Han Feng was so nervous that his speech was a bit stuttered, while Binger said with a face that took it for granted. 
Of course I'm here to serve the family master a bath. Ah. Hanfeng stuttered at the words and then remembered that this society was similar to the ancient feudal society. Made to wait for the master bath is a natural thing, and even more, even the master out of the toilet to have someone to wait for. However, Han Feng's essence is still a modern man, and is even a bath club, have not been to the small virgin, male where was he good enough to be naked in front of a girl, let alone a pretty little underage lowly. Eh? Ice. Ice, no need, I can just wash it myself, you go out. Binger sniffed but did not mean to go out, turned around and closed the door to the room. You don't have to be so polite, family head, you're not the third master, you've been bathing on your own since you were a child. Besides, didn't I used to wait on you when you bathed, it's not like you can bathe yourself. I. Han Feng was actually speechless for a moment, and in his heart, he simply despised his own predecessor to the extreme. Such a big man, he meowed that he couldn't take a bath and had to be served by a little girl, it was really unashamed and too unethical. Han Feng squirmed and shrunk, and in his mind, he was thinking about how to reject Binger. The little lowly, however, had already unashamedly walked to the side of the tub, skillfully scooped up a ladle of water, and poured it down Han Feng's neck hiss. Han Feng inhaled comfortably. Immediately a pair of white, tender and smooth small hands, will be in his shoulders knee up, forces not light and not heavy, slippery and warm, so that Han Feng almost did not comfortable moan, out loud. However, reason still allowed Han Feng to maintain a trace of composure as he spoke with difficulty. Ice, don't. Under the splash of water, Binger didn't hear too clearly, and couldn't help but ask in Han Feng's ear, puffing like an orchid. What's wrong with you, housemaster, did I push too hard? Saying that, her small hand slid down, and Binger gently rubbed at Han Feng's chest to make him more comfortable. Oh. Stop. Han Feng's whole body was trembling, and his sanity was on the verge of being shattered. Family master, what exactly do you mean? Binger was a bit anxious, as a maid, if she couldn't let the housemaster enjoy the pleasure of bathing, then she wouldn't be considered a qualified maid. Han Feng took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and said in full. Ice up, don't stop, keep going. Oh. Chapter 40 What kind of man is that? Enjoying, in his room, a wonderful experience that he had never had in his previous life, the Han family master held back the guilt in his heart, and after putting on his clothes under Binger's service, he solemnly said to Binger. You girl, from now on don't just barge in when I'm bathing okay? If it weren't for the fact that I, your family head, have a pure heart and am a righteous man, you would have been eaten by me a long time ago. Binger sniffed, but with a pair of big, curious eyes, she tilted her head and asked while tying the buttons on the front of Han Feng's lapel. Family master, how are you going to eat Binger? A stunning 45-degree angle of elevation, paired with that pure and innocent expression, a pair of small hands still pressed on Han Feng's chest at this moment, the ice child will undoubtedly lowly all the necessary skills, in this moment completely released, if it is with a maid outfit, black silk what? That is more wonderful. In the face of Binger's unconscious, yet unintentionally emanating extreme teasing, Han Feng's little heart fluttered violently, and a hot current in his abdomen, almost instantly erupted. However, Han Feng's body nowadays was otherworldly, and even though his heart was in a state of apoplexy, certain parts of it were still as stable as Mount Tai. At this moment, suddenly thinking of his own unhealed disease, Binger's words instantly changed from teasing to mocking, Han Feng's body and mind could not help but be filled with a sense of frustration. Even a little lowly isn't afraid of herself, Han Feng what kind of man are you? At this moment, Han Feng was incomparably looking forward to the day when he crossed over into Martial Apprentice 9 stars and became a true spirit martial artist then he will be able to hold his head up high and be a real man again. In the few days since Han Feng had returned from the county, he had become busy again. At night, he cultivated with spirit stones, raising his cultivation level while recovering his depleted qi, blood, and physical strength. During the day, apart from the necessary rest, more often than not, he was in the backyard making perfume, as well as thinking about the presale program before the opening of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion. Zhao Wei Nan had also come a few times in the past few days, he had already found a store in a good location in the county town and had directly rented and sold it to start renovating it. With his Zhao family's young master status, these things naturally progressed extremely smoothly and this is the first time that Zhao Wei Nan started his own business, perhaps to prove himself in front of his old man, or perhaps to get two less beatings. Zhao Wei Nan was extremely motivated nowadays, rushing to the Han family branch almost every day to give Han Feng a report on the progress of the store's renovation. According to what he said, in another seven or eight days, the store renovation would be fully completed, and the dark fragrance pavilion would be able to open. And Han Feng these days is also stepping up the rush to make perfume, under the rush, the warehouse finally has more than a thousand bottles of stock. And there are lily, osmanthus, rose, orchid, lavender, lilac, begonia totaling seven fragrances. On top of that, the presale plans that Han Feng had prepared had filled several pages of paper, which had to be formulated and completed before the store opened. Everything is in full swing, and the only thing that Han Feng is still worried about is the preliminary advertising with many successful business cases in his previous life. Han Feng knows that whether a commodity sells well or not, in addition to its own quality, the pre-publicity of the commodity is really too important. 
especially perfume, this kind of unprecedented epic-making goods, advertising is particularly important. In Han Feng's mind, the third shareholder of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, Qin Xianxuan, was an important part of the advertising campaign. With the other party's noble status, she was bound to have made acquaintance with countless powerful people in White Dragon County, and with her as one of the publicity centers, she would naturally be able to make the perfume easily enter the upper class of White Dragon County. But Han Feng thought about it, still feel that the publicity is still a little single, it is difficult to let the perfume side of the world, detonation White Dragon County seeing that it was getting closer and closer to the opening of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, Han Feng could only do his best to see what fate had in store for him. While Han Feng was in the Han Mansion, struggling with the matter of perfume, the Zhou Mansion once again sent someone to urge him to go home, and the attitude of the visitor was quite unfriendly. Especially after seeing Han Feng show his face, those few family members had fierce gazes, with the intention of rushing up, mounting Han Feng and tying him back to the Zhou family. However, today's Han Feng wouldn't be afraid of a few Zhou Palace family members. Originally, he wanted to casually say a few words to send these people back, but unexpectedly, a few of the houseguests didn't even put Han Feng, the auntie, in their eyes, and even spoke out of turn, directly contradicting Han Feng and ordering him to go home immediately as a result, it naturally hit the muzzle of the Han family's master, who was already in a bad mood due to his busy business schedule. Han Feng's two big ear scrapes directly slapped two of the most arrogant Zhou household servants into unconsciousness, and told these people to roll back and bring word to his father-in-law that he would naturally return when he was in a better mood. The crowd was shocked by Han Feng's tactics and didn't dare to make any more trouble, so they could only leave unwillingly. It was another morning, and there were only five more days until the opening of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion. Inside Han Feng's room, in the north house of the Han Mansion. Han Feng sat cross-legged on the couch, his hands holding two dimly glowing spirit stones, inhaling breath slowly like a silk cocoon, exhaling long like a river rushing, between one inhalation and one exhalation, as if filtering what about half an hour later, when the hands of the two spirit stones issued a click a crunch, the light completely dim. Han Feng opened his mouth and spewed out a mouthful of turbid air, and when he opened his eyes, a brilliant light flowed in his eyes. Rolling over and rising, Han Feng clenched his fists, feeling the abundant strength in his body today, as well as being able to vaguely sense the exuberant power of qi and blood, his heart was extremely pleased. Through these few days, his cultivation had finally successfully stepped into the martial apprentice four-star, transitioning from quenching the muscles and skin to quenching the meridians. Nowadays, he had even vaguely reached the peak of martial apprentice four-star and was about to break through the five-star realm in addition to that, Han Feng also entered the realm of the pot under Xiena's persuasion and temptation and practiced the body martial art white rainbow pace once more. However, Han Feng and Sienner had agreed that this time, he only needed to reach the first level of the first peak realm, otherwise, the spirit stones would not be able to handle it. Nonetheless, these days of cultivation, coupled with the initiation into the white rainbow pace. Today, Han Feng had used up all of his remaining seven spirit stones and had once again become a pauper. As for the spirit stone that Chu Hanxin had given him, Han Feng was saying that he wouldn't use it. When he thought of Chu Hanxin, Han Feng couldn't help but frown. During this period of time, the two hadn't met many times, and every time they saw each other, Han Feng wanted to say more to her. But Chu Hanqin would always say a few words and then find a reason to leave Han Feng vaguely felt that she was intentionally avoiding herself, which naturally confused Han Feng, who had almost zero experience in relationships, to no end. A woman's heart, a needle in the bottom of the sea. Sighing, Han Feng pushed the door out, and as soon as he stepped out of the room, he saw a familiar figure running hurriedly outside the courtyard door. Who else could have the unique awkward eyebrows and small eyes, so ugly, if not Zhao Wei Nan? Han Feng looked at the sky and couldn't help but laugh. Brother Zhao, why did you come so early today? Who knows, Zhao Wei Nan was not talking and rushed forward to pull Han Feng away. Hmm. Han Feng froze. Brother Zhao, what are you doing? Zhao Wei Nan has run his sweaty, not coming up for air, pulling Han Feng said. Brother Han. Han, quickly. Follow me to the county town, something. Big has happened. Han Feng was shocked when he heard this and backhanded Zhao Wei Nan, pulling the other party into a stumble Han Feng stared and asked. What's wrong, is there a problem with the store? Now that Han Feng is penniless, his greatest hope is the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, and looking at Zhao Wei Nan's so anxious appearance, Han Feng's first thought was naturally to think of this place. When Zhao Wei Nan was yanked by Han Feng, he only felt a huge force hit him, almost ripping him out of his mind. To know, if he was any more wasted, he at least had the cultivation of a one-star martial apprentice, and it was not an easy task for an ordinary person to pull him around. However, Zhao Wei Nan at this moment, obviously have more urgent matters, naturally cannot care about these doubts, busy is waving his hand. No. It's not a store thing. Only then did Han Feng's heart relax when he heard the words, and then he was a bit curious. Where are you taking me in such a hurry? Only then did Zhao Wei Nan explain the reason for his visit with an excited face brother Han, great news, the sprinkler house has spread the news that Miss Mu is going to recruit a guest today. I just got the news last night, I was so excited that I didn't close my eyes for the whole night, no, as soon as the city gates opened today, I immediately came to look for you. 
Cut the crap, Brother Han quickly follow me into the city. Chapter 41, The Thief's Heart Inside the backyard of the Han mansion, after hearing Han Feng express his lack of interest and unwillingness to go to Sprinkler House with himself, Zhao Wei Nan's eyes were fixed on Han Feng in front of him with a strange expression, and after pondering for a while, he suddenly spoke out of turn. Are you not Han Feng? At these words, Han Feng's heart was abruptly startled. Since coming to this world, Zhao Wei Nan was still the first person to doubt his own identity, could it be that this seemingly unintelligent guy actually saw that he was a traveler? Just as Han Feng was considering whether or not he should just finish off the guy in front of him and bury him alive in his own backyard, Zhao Wei Nan said with an incomparably grumpy look on his face Brother Han, this isn't your style. When I first went to the greenhouse, or you took me to it, you also said that people are not in vain, I have always remembered you this sentence, how? Now you also turn sex. Ah. Uh. Han Feng was stunned at his words before he realized in a flash that his feelings weren't that the other party had seen his cracks, but that he felt that with his character, he shouldn't have rejected his offer. However, Han Feng is still very strange, he is not that aspect is not good, how will be keen to go to the greenhouse? This is not the way to whore for free. In fact, it was no wonder that Zhao Wei Nan was puzzled, back then, when Han Feng mentioned going to a greenhouse, he was just as hyper as if he had been beaten with chicken blood as for the reason, it is quite simple. That is, Han Feng believes that the problem in his area is not with himself, but with women. He has always believed that only when he finds a woman he really likes, he will be able to raise his head one day. Therefore, Han Feng used to hang out in the wind and moon house from time to time and changed countless women. But the final result, naturally, disappointed him immensely, coupled with the fact that he was later stripped by the main vein, he was penniless, and the number of times he went to the greenhouse was only a handful of times. Seeing Zhao Wei Nan's small eyes, bursting out with a hopeful gaze, in order to avoid arousing the other party's suspicion, Han Feng had no choice but to agree to go to Sprinkle's pavilion together anyway, someone else is paying for it, so think of it as going for nothing. That's just it, let's go. Seeing Han Feng agree, Zhao Wei Nan let out a wolf howl of excitement and dragged Han Feng away. Han Feng, however, hastily raised a finger in a gesture of silence. Keep your voice down so my big sister doesn't hear you. Zhao Wei Nan sniffed and was puzzled. What's wrong with that? It's not a big deal for a man to go to a greenhouse and drink flower wine. Besides, what business is it of your eldest sisters to know such things, so long as your wife doesn't? When Han Feng heard this, he was very sympathetic and contemptuous, glancing at Zhao Wei Nan. There are some truths that a single dog will never understand, you know? Zhao Wei Nan shook his head blankly. Don't get it. See, I was right. The two then sneaked out of the front yard. Before Han Feng left, he told Binger that he was going to go to the county with Mr. Zhao to run some important errands. Afterward, the two, who were thieves, got into the carriage and left. Soon after, the carriage arrived at the southern city gate of White Dragon County. After Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan got off the carriage and underwent the routine inspection by the city guards, Zhao Wei Nan wrapped his arm around Han Feng's shoulders and said with a bad smile on his face. Hey! Brother Han, now that we have entered the city, we can be the sky is high enough to let the birds fly, the sea is wide enough to let the fish leap, and we are not afraid of anything. Although Han Feng is not interested in the prostitutes thing, but in his previous life, he studied so much historical information, for the ancient greenhouses actually look like, he is still quite interested. Now can walk into, look at the actual scene, as long as in the case of not being Chu Hunching no, seems to be quite interesting well, right as a time, in death academic research it hey. Thinking of this, Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan looked at each other, and the two men revealed unspoken smiles to each other. Who knows, just at this moment, a delicate scolding suddenly came from behind him. Han Feng, Zhao Wei Nan. Hiss. I don't know if it's a common disease among men, under the fear of being a thief, their reaction will become abnormally sensitive, especially this kind of man, who is planning to go to a greenhouse. Both of them exclaimed at the same time. Han Feng twisted and jumped, directly jumping into the carriage carriage, while Zhao Wei Nan reacted a little slower and did not have this kind of hands of Han Feng, under the panic, simply buried his head and drilled under the carriage. However, this guy obviously some point back, even the horse pulling the cart was startled, the stallion raised its hind hooves as a foot. Zhao Wei Nan had just gotten under the deck of the wagon when he received a kick in the ass, and was kicked straight out and rolled over, letting out a pig squeal in pain seeing this series of ludicrous reactions of the two, at the county gate, a delicate purple figure froze for a moment, and then couldn't help but hold her belly and let out a burst of silver bell-like laughter. Ha ha! What are you guys doing, am I that scary? Upon hearing this familiar voice, Han Feng inside the carriage, as well as Zhao Wei Nan, who was sprawled on the ground, froze at the same time. One stuck his head out of the curtains of the car, and the other looked up, and saw a young girl with gorgeous clothes and a delicate and attractive appearance. Xin Yujiao. Cold wind and Zhao Wei and shouted out the name of the outsider in unison, and then they silently let out a long breath not long after, the carriage once again traveled above the county avenue. 
Inside the carriage, Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan, who was rubbing his buttocks with a pained look on his face, were both somewhat startled as they looked at Qin Yujiao, who was sitting in the same carriage and was still unable to hold back her laughter at the moment. Han Feng said with a dark face. How did you? You get here? Qin Yujiao's small mouth curled up as she glared at the two men in dissatisfaction and said. Humph, I am at least one of the founders of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, these days, you all don't come to me to discuss, the preparations before opening, and my father won't let me go out of the county, so I can only stand guard at the South City Gate and wait for you. Hey! This, you guys let me catch a square, say, are you planning to hide from me, to carry out some secret plan? A smug smile appeared on Qin Yujiao's face, just like a hunter who had caught his prey and upon hearing this, Han Feng and Zhao Weinan secretly exchanged glances, both revealing deep helplessness. In front of the eyes of the city lord's house is thousand gold, obviously too idle, even in the city gate guarding their arrival, so hanging this just born thieves heart of the duo, to break the guts of fear. Han Feng immediately appeased. Don't worry, Miss Qin, you are one of the major shareholders of my dark fragrance pavilion, if there is really any decision, we will naturally notify you first. Moreover, it won't be long before I have another important task to give you, so I hope Miss Qin won't excuse herself. Han Feng's words were clearly very much to Qin Yujiao's liking, and the little nymph's starry eyes glowed brightly as she said triumphantly. Well. Count on your vision, as long as it is for the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, this young lady will still try to do it by the way, I ran out of that bottle of perfume you gave me last time, so why don't you give me another one? Han Feng, these days, has been worrying about the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, wherever he goes, he carries a few bottles of perfume with him, and when he heard that, he hurriedly took out a bottle and handed it to Qin Yujiao. Then what? Miss Qin, you just go back first, if there is anything, we will inform you again. Zhang Weinan, who was on the side, was also quick to chime in. Yes, 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 now that the store has not yet been renovated, there is no need to labor Miss Qin for the time being. Qin Yujia took the perfume, nodded in satisfaction, and was about to step out of the carriage when she suddenly sat back down. She looked, with a suspicious face, at the two who looked stunned, and suddenly her starry eyes turned and said. No, I always feel like you guys are hiding something from Mino, this young lady will have to follow you today, and I will follow you wherever you go, unless you go out of town. Chapter 42 Sprinkles Pavilion I have to say, a woman's sixth sense is just too strong. Even though Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan were not related to the second Miss Qin, much less a man and a woman. But the other party just suddenly sensed that the two would not be doing anything good by coming to the county this time. At the same time as a burst of evil sweat in his heart, for this city lord's house thousand gold, the two of them were not able to hit or scold, and it was naturally troublesome to deal with it. Han Feng had planned to just leave the city and return home, and he had originally been forced to follow Zhao Wei Nan. However, the girl Mu of the Golden Pavilion is obviously the white moonlight in Zhao Wei Nan's heart, and this guy is a Wangbao eating scales, determined to go. In the end, Zhao Wei Nan simply confessed to Qin Yujiao, saying that the two of them were going to the Sprinkles Pavilion to drink flower wine and couldn't bring her along and after Qin Yujiao learned the truth, as the two expected, she looked at the duo with contempt. Yeah. No wonder you two were so vain just now, so you're going to a greenhouse, it's really disgusting. Han Fang's old face blushed and he was busy explaining. Ahem. It's none of my business, this guy dragged me there. Qin Yujiao, however, was disdainful. Bah. You denizens have the face to argue? Who hit my? Me that day. Hum, and, who broke into my city master's mansion and stole my sister's? Heck, other people aren't necessarily bad people anyway, but you're definitely not good. I. The corners of Han Feng's mouth twitched viciously, and he knew in his heart that he was simply a complete rogue in the eyes of this second Miss Qin. Helpless, Han Feng could only say with a dark face. Well, whatever you say, now that we're going to the greenhouse, there's no way you're going to follow us. When Qin Yujiao heard this, her eyebrows knitted slightly and she hesitated for a moment, but suddenly said firmly. No, I'm coming with you guys. Ah? Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan were both shocked that this city lord's daughter, who was the daughter of the city lord's mansion, wanted to follow them to a greenhouse. Hmph, I've heard that that Mu Qianxian has unparalleled looks and is also good at zither, chess, calligraphy, and painting, I'd like to see just how beautiful this woman is to be on par with my sister. Zhao Wei Nan laughed bitterly. Miss Qin, don't joke. How can a woman like you enter a greenhouse? Besides, if city lord Qin and my father found out, I wouldn't be able to shed my skin. At this time, Qin Yujiao's unruly temper came up and threatened. Oomph, I don't care, you guys must take me there anyway, or else I'll go to the Zhao family right now and tell the Zhao family master that you're going to sneak off to a prostitute. Ah. As soon as Zhao Wei Nan heard this, his legs and stomach turned in fear, and with a horrified face, he looked at Han Feng for help. Brother Han. This. How can this be? Without waiting for Han Feng to speak, Qin Yujiao said. And you Han Feng, I'm going to the Zhou family to tell your old husband and your wife. The corner of Han Feng's mouth hooked into a cold smile, completely unperturbed. Seeing that she didn't seem to be able to threaten Han Feng, 
Jin Yuzhou's big eyes rolled and she casually added a sentence. Yes, and I'm going to go to the Han branch of the family and tell your family that you went to a greenhouse. Han Feng's eyelids jumped, followed by a firm opening. You win, let's get going. About an hour later, in the south of the White Dragon County City, outside of the Golden Pavilion, which was known as the first building in the county, there was already a huge crowd of people from the 14 or 15-year-old boy who has not yet performed the crown ceremony, to the 60 or 70-year-old man with a beard of half a hundred years old. Almost all the male creatures in the city flocked towards the door of the Golden Pavilion, and the boys and girls inside the pavilion were unable to maintain order. In the midst of the crowd, Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan tenaciously resisted the surge of people and walked alone. Between the two of them, Qin Yujia was wearing a treasure blue brocade coat, her long hair was pulled into a spiral bun and fixed with a jade hairpin, and she looked like a beautiful young man with red lips and white teeth, except for her slightly petite body type. Qin Yujia was, after all, the second thousandth daughter of the city lord's mansion, so it was impossible for Han Feng to directly bring her into the sprinkler pavilion and purposely have her disguise herself as a man and Qin Yujia was also trying this kind of thing for the first time, and under the great novelty, she did not refuse. Along with the surging crowd, the three of them finally entered the attic. Sprinkles Pavilion can be seen from the name alone, with its meaning of grandeur and luxury. Step into the pavilion, under the feet is soft red carpet, eyes are a golden, six carved dragons and phoenixes of gold lacquer columns, lined up, supporting its up the entire pavilion facade. The decor of the pavilion can also be described as luxurious. Walls of a delicate glazed lamp, but also embellished with literati painting and calligraphy, elegant incense surrounded by chic potted plants, is also the right distribution of its interiors. The entire Sprinkle Pavilion gives people the feeling that, in addition to the opulence, but more as a cultural atmosphere, it seems that this is not a brothel brothel, but the hall of some institution of higher learning in this regard, Han Feng is not surprised, in his previous life he did some historical research, which has the so-called greenhouse culture. In fact, the ancient greenhouse, far from what many people think that, only those low and dirty flesh trade, most of the greenhouse is also very concerned about the cultural heritage. Many literati, like to recite poems in the greenhouse, see life in the fog and laugh about life. In ancient times, I do not know from the greenhouse, how many born of the talented man, passed out how many beautiful talk of the talented man. At the same time, the ancients always thought that music, song and dance is not a good woman should be, so the greenhouse has also become the development of these art forms, the base of the growth, it can be seen that although the greenhouse is a place of flirtation, but not necessarily a place of indecency. Han Feng and his party of three entered the pavilion, and a middle-aged man with the appearance of a steward recognized Zhao Wei Nan at a glance. After all, as the Zhao family's youngest master, Zhao Wei Nan's popularity in White Dragon County was also extremely high, coupled with the fact that he was stupidly rich and was a regular customer of the Sprinkles Pavilion, it was hard not to let people remember him. The steward went up and gave a few respectful greetings, and hurriedly ordered someone to guide the three of them to the third floor box, where there was a long-term box chartered by Zhao Wei Nan. The boy attentively led the way for the three of them, and along the way, Han Feng also finally had his eyes open wide it was different than the greenhouse that he passed by when he was strolling around in White Dragon County, which was filled with women with mediocre postures. Sprinkles Pavilion within the girls, whether it is the appearance or body, obviously after a rigorous screening, are all top of the standard, the kind of from the inside out exudes the internal charm temperament, is even more desirable and cannot stop. As we walked along the corridor, we could see beautiful girls accompanying the gentlemen, or merchants with big bellies, or even old men with stooped bodies. Talking and laughing with each other, or reciting poems in pairs, it is a good scene of implicit and harmonious exchanges. Of course, there are euphemistic guests, and naturally, there are debonair, oblivious guests. In passing between the corners of several hidden corridors, it was occasionally possible to see, certain uninhibited men and women, obliviously entwined together the bold and erotic scene, and the blushing and heartbeat-inducing sound, even Han Feng, who thought he had read countless movies in his previous life and had extraordinary stamina, was also feeling a little overwhelmed. Even Han Feng was like this, not to mention second Miss Qin who had blended into the building. Qin Yujiu has never seen this kind of flirtatious scene, along the way, has long been shy, cheeks rolling scarlet, body cannot stop trembling, hands to cover the eyes, mouth a strong whispered tirade. Blah blah blah. It's so disgusting and nasty. This kind of hellhole, you guys, how come you still like it so much? Seeing Qin Yujiu's blushing, unable to even walk, Han Feng couldn't help but lose his smile and shake his head. Although this girl is a bit bratty, after all, is still a young girl without personnel, naturally cannot stand these pricks, excitement taking the initiative to reach out and hold Qin Yujiao's arm in place, the little ninny symbolically struggled for a few moments, but in the end, her body was still softly leaning against Han Feng, and together they went up to the third floor. After coming to the third floor, the scene suddenly became different, compared to the first floor of the hot and bustling, the third floor is obviously elegant and quiet a lot. There were only a dozen or so boxes on the large floor, each with an elegant alias. The people coming and going on the third floor are also very few, most of them are all well-dressed, dignified characters in White Dragon County. The girls upstairs, compared to the first and second floors, were also more extraordinary. 
Zhao Wei mailbox is located in the third floor north, three people in the boy's lead, was about to step into the box, but suddenly came from the back of a, shocked and angry shouts Han Feng, you guy, finally let me bump into you. Chapter 43, Haters Meet. The sudden shout caused the three Han Fongs to look back at the same time. Only to see the end of the corridor, a line of seven or eight people are walking up from the stairway, the man at the head, not tall, dark skin, fat and unimaginable, a person will block most of the corridor. This person was also holding a young woman with a plump figure and not bad appearance beside him. The woman's fair skin and the man formed a sharp contrast, living beauty in the beast's sense of vision. On the other side of the man, there was also a white-clothed old man dressed as a Confucian scholar, with a haughty look and a noble posture. Behind the three, there were a few attendants, and although the number was small, these people all had sharp gazes and a steady pace, so it was obvious that they were not ordinary servants seeing that this line of people were coming from a bad place and seemed to recognize him, Han Feng couldn't help but look at Zhao Wei Nan on the side. Who is this man? Zhao Wei Nan froze at his words, then smiled bitterly and said, Brother Han, you don't recognize him, this guy is the second son of the Wu family, Wu Zhang Hao, also a playboy who loafs around. This guy has been dumping on the city lord's mansion's Miss Qin for a long time, and ever since that thing you did in the city lord's mansion last time, Brother Han, spread, Wu Zhenghao put out the word that he wanted to clean you up and take it out on Miss Qin, presumably to use it as a way to curry Miss Qin's favor. Sure enough, Zhao Weinan's words had only fallen on Han Feng's ears when the fat black man on the opposite side had already clamored, Han Feng, you've got some guts, how dare you show your face in the county town? Han Feng heard the words, but he clasped his hands in front of his body and looked at the second son of the Wu family with a playful smile. What's it to you if I'm in the county or not? Hmm. Seeing Han Feng's bland attitude. Wu Zhenghao raised his eyebrows, stroked in the woman beside him on the buttocks of the big hand, force a pinch, the pain of the young woman's pretty face changed color, but did not dare to say a word. Hey. Good guy, usually see lousy, like a shrinking turtle, today is the courage to see growth. I, Wu Zhenghao, have always been true to my word, and last time I said that I would beat you up once if I saw you once, to give Miss Qin a chance to take out her anger, and since your bones are itchy today, I'm going to loosen them for you. Get on and break his legs for me. Wu Zhenghao directly instructed the several attendants behind him to strike these few attendants were all Wu houseguards, with the cultivation of a martial apprentice one or two stars, and although their realm was not high, they were expected to deal with Han Feng, a person with no cultivation, which was naturally more than enough. When Han Feng saw this, he couldn't help but look cold, and was about to make a move, but Zhao Wei Nan, who was on the side, stood out openly and blocked in front of Han Feng. Wu Zhenghao, be honest with me. Wu Zhenghao was stunned at his words, and when his enemies met just now, he only had Han Feng in his eyes. Only then did he notice that Han Feng was accompanied by Zhao Wei Nan, and an unfamiliar white-faced boy. Zhao Wei Nan, your kid is here too. Wu Zhenghao's gaze narrowed slightly, and the several attendants behind him stopped in their tracks. As the young master of the Zhao family, Zhao Wei Nan still had many people he knew in White Dragon County normally, Zhao Wei Nan always looked like a pitiful victim in front of Han Feng, but at this moment, standing in front of Wu Zhenghao, he was quite imposing and held his head high. What, do I have to report to you, Second Prince Wu, when I accompany my brother Han to drink at the Sprinkles Pavilion? Wu Zhenghao looked at Zhao Wei Nan with a mischievous face, then looked at Han Feng behind him and coldly snorted. Zhao Wei Nan, this young master doesn't have time to chat with you, today, even if the King of Heaven comes, he won't be able to protect Han Feng. Zhao Wei Nan was furious at his words, still standing in front of Han Feng, and said angrily. Wu Zhenghao, if you dare to touch a single hair on brother Han's head, I will never let you go. Wu Zhenghao sneered, but directly ignored Zhao Wei Nan and ordered a few attendants. Ignore this guy, get on me, beat Han Feng to death, if anything happens, this young master will take the blame. The followers didn't have any hesitation when they heard this and rushed forward, they didn't dare to make a move on Zhao Wei Nan, but they had no qualms about punching a downtrodden son who had been divested of the main lineage of the Han family seeing that the other party was really going to make a move, Zhao Wei Nan's expression also panicked a little, secretly regretting that he hadn't brought a few of his men to follow him today. It was not true that he was the young master of the Zhao family, but his own deterrent power, in the younger generation of several big family masters, was really weak, and even Wu Zhenghao did not by his own account. He was about to take Han Feng and run straight away, but a hand was on Zhao Wei Nan's shoulder. Brother Zhao, stand toward the back. Zhao Wei Nan turned back in shock, but Han Feng had already reached out and yanked him directly behind him, Brother Han, what are you doing? Han Feng sneered. It takes more than a few mad dogs to deal with a few mad dogs. As he watched a few raging Wu houseguards rush towards him, Han Feng rubbed his wrists as a brilliant light surged in his eyes. Now that he was at the peak of Martial Apprentice four-star cultivation, coupled with his cultivation of regretful mountain fist and white rainbow pace, it was naturally no problem for him to deal with a few household servants. However, seeing that the other party was about to exchange hands, the white-clothed old man who had been standing beside Wu Zhenghao suddenly opened his mouth. Wait! The several Wu houseguards stopped in their tracks again at once, and Wu Zhenghao couldn't help but frown at the white-clothed old man. Elder Lu, what do you mean by that? 
The white-cloaked old man smiled faintly, walked forward, and whispered a few words in Wu Zhenghao's ear when Wu Zhenghao heard this, his face couldn't help but change in color for a while, and he finally looked at Han Feng with some reluctance. Count your kid's luck today, I'll let you off the hook first. With that, he greeted a few guards and was about to turn around and leave. Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan were both a bit stunned, and they didn't know what the old man, in the end, had said to Wu Zhenghao. However, seeing that Wu Zhenghao was about to leave, Han Feng suddenly opened his mouth and called out to him. Young master Wu stay back. Wu Zhenghao squinted at Han Feng. What, this young master let you off the hook and you still want to be ungrateful? Han Feng said with a faint smile. Young master Wu don't misunderstand, I just want to know what you came to Sprinkles Pavilion for today? Humph, this young master has come today, naturally for the first flower girl of the Sprinkles Pavilion, Miss Mu. Oh? Han Feng pretended to look surprised. Didn't young master Wu once say that he adored the great daughter of the city lord's residence, Miss Qin Feng Qin Qin? How is it that now you've come to the Sprinkles Pavilion, such a place of the wind and moon, and still want to become Miss Mu's guest of honor? Upon hearing this, Wu Zhenghao's fat face, however, showed a look of contempt. Humph, what do you know, I am the second young master of the Wu family, my status is honorable, and in the future, three wives and four concubines will be a common thing, although Miss Qin is a heavenly beauty, and this young master likes her a lot, but Miss Mu is also one of the three most beautiful people in my white dragon county. In the future, even if this young master marries Miss Qin, he can also take Miss Mu as his concubine by then, the three great beauties will get two of them, and the fish and the bear's paw will get both, and then the beauties will be happy together, won't it be beautiful? However, it's natural that a lowly waist like you can't hope for that. When Han Feng heard the words, he couldn't help but show a look of reverence as he led the clapping. Young Master Wu is worthy of being a dragon and phoenix among men, he really does have high aspirations, I am impressed, impressed. Wu Zhenghao showed a smug look on his face and was complacent in his heart when he suddenly saw that behind Han Feng, a green-colored figure shifted and instantly appeared in front of him. Before Wu Zhenghao could see clearly, a white, tender fist has directly smashed on his eye socket. Boom! With a muffled sound, Wu Zhenghao's body, which weighed nearly 300 pounds, directly flew out more than a foot away at the same time, the corridor echoed, with a furious, petulant shout. Wu Zhenghao, you bastard, how dare you compare my sister to a greenhouse girl and presume to marry her, you don't even look at what a bear you look like. The person who struck out at this moment was naturally Qin Yujiao without a doubt. When the two sides had an argument just now, Qin Yujiao had been hiding behind Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan for fear that she would be recognized. But when he heard Wu Zhenghao publish that fish and bear paw, the grandiose words, the city lord's office 2000 gold instantly angry, and then do not care about what to expose their identity, direct action. And this punch still cannot make her hate, at this moment she rushed up, on the ground, still to get up Wu Zhenghao, is a burst of punches and kicks. Inside the corridor, several guards of the Wu mansion were stunned by this scene, or the white-clothed old man reacted in panicked quick, save the young master. The crowd rushed forward in a panic to take down Qin Yujiao, but Han Feng, who was not far away, laughed coldly and rebuked in a stern voice. The second thousand gold of the city lord's mansion is here, have you eaten bear's heart and leopard's guts, daring to make a move against the second miss? Chapter 44, The Wild Bee Han Feng let out a stern cry, startling everyone, including Wu Zhenghao. And as Qin Yujiao struck out, the hairpin on her head loosened, and a head of long black hair spilled out just in time, revealing her original face. Hiss. Is really second Miss Qin. A Wu house guard could not help but let out a cry of shock, sort of confirming Qin Yujiao's identity, and at the same time deciding Wu Zhenghao's tragic fate the Qin family of the city lord's mansion is the first of the five great families of the White Dragon County, and the head of the Qin family is also a registered official of the Qianlan Empire, so his status is naturally extraordinary. The two Qin families' thousand golds, few people of the younger generation in the entire White Dragon County city dared to mess with them. What's more, today's matter is that Wu Zhenghao spoke out of turn and offended Qin Fengqin first, and now that someone's sister is out to teach her a lesson, it is naturally justified. For a while, several Wu house guards were once again, frozen in place, somewhat hesitant. That white-clothed old man, too, was somewhat at a loss for words. And not far away, looking at Wu Zhenghao who was on the ground being kicked around by Qin Yujiao and letting out bursts of mournful screams, Zhao Wei Nan couldn't help but say with a worried expression on his face, Brother Han, should we stop it, but don't make a scene. Han Feng, however, patted Zhao Wei Nan's shoulder and comforted him. Alas! Brother Zhao need not worry, the second Miss Qin is a woman, delicate and weak, where can she hurt young Master Wu? Zhao Wei Nan sniffed, still a little worried. That said, but... Can Qin Air misses, after all, a five-star martial apprentice martial artist ah, a kick down even a cow can be kicked over. Ah? Uh, what did you say, why can't I hear you all of a sudden? In fact, Qin Yujiao's outburst was originally guided by Han Feng's words, and the other party was about to lay hands on himself, for whatever reason he stopped, but Han Feng thought to himself that he was just a villain. 
As the saying goes, it is not too late for a gentleman to take revenge for 10 years, but for a villain to take revenge from early to late, so he immediately lured Wu Zhenghao to say those disrespectful words to Qin Fengqing to Qin Yuja's little temper, naturally cannot stand his sister was offended, immediately pink fist attack. Speaking of which, Qin Yuja's hand is really not light, Wu Zhenghao's body of 2 or 300 pounds, under Qin Yuja's feet, hard to roll around to climb cannot climb up, the mouth issued a burst of pig-like wailing, begging for more than. The Wu residence guards and others on the side wanted to go up to save their own master, but Qin Yuja's stature and strength hardened them from approaching. In the end, it was Han Feng who felt that it was almost time and went up to persuade him. Second Miss Qin, it's almost time, don't kick his lard out and dirty your feet. Qin Yuja heard, and ruthlessly kicked Wu Zhenghao a foot, which is just a hand, but still pointing at the ground shrinking into a ball of Wu Zhenghao said surname Wu, from now on, if this young lady ever hears, you dare to mention my sister again, she will never let you off as easily as she did today. Han Feng heard the words and looked at Wu Erxiao, who was already bruised and swollen, covered in footprints, like a dead dog, the corner of his mouth couldn't help but twitch, and he said. This girl is even more ruthless than myself ah, this can also be called easy to let go? And it was only a matter of a split second for Wu Zhenghao to go from seeing Qin Yujiao appear to being inhumanly beaten. At the moment, his mind was still a bit foggy. As he watched Han Feng's trio turn away and walk into the box, a few Wu house guards rushed to help him up. After being stunned for a long time, Wu Zhenghao came back to his senses. Qin. Second Miss Qin, how did she appear here? The white-clothed old man on the side said young master, second Miss Qin seems to have been brought by Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan, and just now that Han Feng was deliberately luring you into a trap. When Wu Zhenghao heard this, his fat face, which was a mixture of blue and purple, instantly became twisted beyond recognition, and his eyes erupted with bearish fury. Han Feng, how dare you fucking shade me? Wu Zhenghao's heart was furious to the extreme, in addition to receiving this brutal beating for no reason, the more critical thing was that the one who beat him was Miss Qin Er, Miss Qin's own sister. Once today's matter came out, once pursuit of Miss Qin, that would no longer be possible. Although it was Qin Yujiao's hand, Wu Zhenghao didn't dare to find the other party to settle the score, of course, he would have to put it all on Han Feng's head. Wu Zhenghao roared. Go. To the mansion and call some more good men, arrest Han Feng out for me, I have to open him up today. The white-clothed old man on the side was busy discouraging him young master, this can't be allowed, the power behind this sprinkles pavilion is quite mysterious, and has a lot of connections with the city lord's mansion, so we can't easily make trouble here. Wu Zhenghao looked at the man angrily. Oomph, just now this young master let that brat go because he listened to your bullshit. As a result, it caused me to be treated like this by second Miss Qin, this is a revenge I must avenge. Seeing that Wu Zhenghao had already been overwhelmed by anger, Lu Fang, who was one of the strategists of Wu's residence, could not help but turn his mind and persuade him. Young master, calm your anger, have you forgotten what we came here for today? Wu Zhenghao was stunned at his words, but Lu Fang said with an ambiguous face. Young master, today is the day that Miss Mu invites her guest, if you make trouble in the Golden Pavilion, you may upset Miss Mu's heart, and that's not a good idea as for that Han Feng, why don't we wait for today to pass, then we can think of a way to clean it up, now it is still the most important to help young master you. Take the qualification of this guest of honor first. When Wu Zhenghao heard this, his heart, which was originally filled with anger, gradually calmed down. Thinking of that heavily, rhyming Miss Mu again, his heart immediately swung again, and a look of greedy lust appeared on his face. Elder Lu, I heard that today, Miss Mu recruited the guest of honor and set up a few puzzles. For the dance of the ink, Wu Mao general but not refined, later on will have to rely on Lu Lao Helpa. Lu Fang heard the words, could not help but secretly despise in his heart, on his own young master's stomach that little ink, also dare to say that it is true but not refined, but on the faces piled up a smile and said ha ha. Old man will definitely go all out to help young master be able to get a kiss. When Wu Zhenghao heard this, his face immediately glowed with lust, as if he had forgotten that he had only just been brutally beaten up, and with a big smile, he led the crowd into the box. Meanwhile, Han Feng's trio had already taken their seats in the box, and the boy brought fragrant tea and served fruit plates and pastries. At this moment, Qin Yujiao is still not relieved, the mouth is probably some of the angry reprimand Wu Zhenghao, how shameless, how to beat the words. Han Feng, who was on the side, had a good old kind face and comforted. Second Miss Qin is right, this Wu Zhenghao is too much of a miscreant, how dare he speak disrespectfully to first Miss Qin. If I were second Miss Qin, I would beat him up every time I see him in the future, beat him so much that his parents wouldn't recognize him, and simply scrap him. Qin Yujiao froze when she heard this, but then she glared at Han Feng and said. Oomph, you're no better. Ah. Uh. Han Feng touched his nose in embarrassment and cursed in his heart, this little girl was too uncouth to curse even her own people. What happened just now was just a small episode, the crowd came here today for the famous flower girl Mu Qianchuan of White Dragon County. Han Feng had thought that he would be able to see this woman in a short while, but he heard Zhao Weinan explain that it turned out to be a long time before Mu Qianchun appeared, at least until the evening went. When the time comes, the crowd will also have to move to the sprinkler cabinet. 
Han Fong couldn't help but be greatly depressed when he heard this, waiting from morning until evening just to meet a flower girl? As he looked down from the window of the compartment, the hall on the first floor was already overcrowded, and people were still pouring in from the outside, and the three words Mu Qianxuan were also ringing out in the pavilion seeing this fiery scene, a trace of curiosity couldn't help but rise in Han Feng's heart. How beautiful was this Mu Qianxian that she could make so many men go crazy for her? Chapter 45 Art Amazes the Four Han Feng, Zhao Wei Nan, and Qin Yujiu were in the box, waiting until sunset. Han Feng and Qin Yujiu had already waited until they were drowsy, but suddenly they heard a gong coming out of the building. Zhao Wei Nan, who had been guarding the window and keeping an eye on the movements outside, let out an excited shout. Brother Han, second Miss Qin, Miss Mu is about to make her debut, let's go to the cabinet now. Zhao Wei Nan said, urging the mesmerized Han Feng and Qin Yujiao right out of the compartment and all the way towards the west coming to the west side of the ring corridor leading to the cabinet, two pretty looking women were already guarding the passageway, both of them holding trays in their hands. One tray was empty, one tray was neatly arranged with a handle of folding fan, the end of the folding fan with a red rope pendant a piece of jade, on which was engraved a beautiful Mu character. Only to see Zhao Wei Nan familiarly pull out 30 gold coins and place them into that empty tray, and then pick up three folding fans and distribute one each to Han Feng and Qin Yujiao. Han Feng and Qin Yujiao were both stunned as they followed Zhao Wei Nan past the circular corridor, and Han Feng couldn't help but ask Brother Zhao, what is the purpose of you buying this fan? Zhao Wei Nan looked at Han Feng with an astonished expression. Brother Han, did you even forget about this? This is the token for entering the pavilion. All the men who want to be Miss Mu's guest in the inner cabinet, before entering the inner cabinet, have to buy a fan as a token, which is also considered a proof of admiration for Miss Mu. Just. 10 gold coins for just such a fan? Zhao Wei Nan laughed. Brother Han, you don't understand, right? The guests of the Sprinkles Pavilion are divided into three classes, and the third class guests are downstairs in the hall, where they can only spend one silver coin and buy an ordinary wooden fan. Second class guests on the second floor can only buy a silver fan worth one gold coin, while we, the first class VIPs, are only able to buy a jade fan of ten gold coins a handle look at the Mu character on this jade pendant, it's written by Ms. Mu herself and asked the city's master carver to copy and carve it. Looking at Zhao Wei Nan with a proud look that he was lucky to have bought this fan. Han Feng also glanced from the fence to the entrance to the cabinet on the first two floors, everyone crazy fan, scrambling to pay for the frenzied scene, could not help but sigh in his heart, the sprinkling of gold pavilion really will do business. This scene in front of me, with those anchors in the previous world who were live, seemed to be no different. This Miss Mu is the head honcho, these admirers are her audience, spend money to buy a folding fan, it is equivalent to join the other side of the fan club. And isn't someone like Zhao Wei Nan, who is stupid and has a lot of money and still feels like a bully, one of those anchors' favorite list big guys? Originally, Han Feng was still a bit drowsy, and his mind instantly cleared up after seeing the steady stream of gold and silver coins at this moment, he couldn't help but wonder if he would open a greenhouse in the future, and train a few more big anchors similar to Mu Qianxuan, and then he would still be counting his money every day. While his heart reddened with envy, Han Feng touched the bottles of perfume in his lapel and couldn't help but secretly ponder in his heart. This sprinkle pavilion business is so red-hot, and I wonder if it can rub off on my own perfume sales. Between the thoughts in his mind, the three of them had already entered the cabinet. A three-story fan loft layout allows the audience, to a greater extent, to focus on the fan center area. The third floor, where Han Feng and the others were located, was the VIP area with the least number of people and the most spacious and forward seating, while the second and third floors had a much larger number of people and a slightly worse view at this moment, all eyes are focused on the front of the audience, the third floor of a dimly lit compartment, the door of the compartment is wide open, but by a pure white round screen blocked, the outside cannot clearly see the situation inside. After about an incense stick of time had passed, a large number of people poured into the cabinet and had filled the entire second and third floors, only the third floor remained very loose with only a dozen or so tables of guests, of which Wu Zhenghao and the others also occupied a table. Han Feng glanced toward them, just in time to see, Wu Zhenghao reveal a sinister gaze toward himself. Seeing this gaze from the other party, Han Feng frowned slightly and sighed darkly. Looks like this guy was cleaned up, not enough. Han Feng never liked to leave himself open to future problems, and for an enemy who couldn't be turned into a friend, it was only fair to find a way to eliminate the harm forever he couldn't help but think darkly in his mind. Killing a few people in this world doesn't seem like a big deal, does it? At the same time, Wu Zhenghao suddenly shivered as his back went cold for no reason. The sky was getting dark, but there were no lights in the cabinet hall, and it was dim in all directions. In the darkness, some of the primitive beasts of mankind, nature gradually kicked in, the crowd began to gradually riot, became noisy, all kinds of obscenities rise and fall. Seeing that this chaos was about to continue expanding, a zither sound rang out abruptly. Dang! The sound of the piano is clear and pleasant, like a spring breeze, the sound is not big, but as if it has some kind of magic, so that the hall, a variety of noisy voices, in an instant quiet down in the next moment, a candle flame wavered and rose in the chamber at the center of the third floor. 
The firelight reflected a slender, graceful figure on the white screen at the door of the compartment. It was vaguely visible as a woman sitting in a room, playing the zither with her hands. Although it was only a reflection, it still couldn't hide the woman's delicate and moving posture, as well as her demeanor, which exuded an elegant temperament. The crowd in the hall, still quiet, breathing but cannot help but aggravate a few points. In the next moment, the sound of the zither rang out in succession, just like high mountains and flowing water, crisp and cheerful, making people feel happy and unconsciously smiling. But in a few moments, the sound of the piano changed abruptly, became sad and soothing, and like the echo of the empty valley, inexplicable sadness in people's hearts, cannot be self so rolling over several times, the piano sound changes, the people actually cannot help but appear, joy sadness and joy. Various Emotions the sound of the zither seemed to be able to bring people into various real-life scenarios, immersing them in a way that they could not extricate themselves. Unconsciously, the crowd looks either joyful, sad, or melancholy. In different ways. Even Han Fong, between hearing the changing sounds of this zither, couldn't help but fall into reminiscence, remembering the world that had already left him. But in just a split second, a warm current brushed past the spot in his heart where the demon refining pot was located, and Han Fong instantly detached himself from that emotion again. Turning her head to look at her side, Jean Yujiao's gaze was dumbfounded, a pretty face scarlet and blushing it's like a young girl in love with her dream prince charming, obsessed and shy. On the other hand, Zhao Wei Nan on the side was extremely unpleasant, at this moment, not only was his expression stagnant, but the corners of his mouth had also already oozed out of his mouth. With that piggy look on his face, it was obvious that he had been taken into some kind of erotic fantasy by the sound of the zither. Seeing the obsessive reaction of the two and the many spectators in the hall, Han Feng was shocked in his heart. Originally thought that the level of sound law in this era, also sloppy, but did not expect this woman's piano skills are so good, better than all the music that Han Fong has heard in his previous life. Dang. With the compartment, the last sound of the zither fell, the stagnant people in the hall, were suddenly awakened, their eyes all became clear. After a moment of silence, the room erupted in a thunderous burst of applause and cheers. What a marvelous zither sound. Miss Mu's zither skills are truly unprecedented. Miss Mu, I love you. Countless people cheered and applauded, shouting madly. There was no need to guess, the only person who could play such a marvelous zither was Mu Qianxuan, who had such a talent in the entire Golden Pavilion. Sure enough, after a burst of frantic cheering, the slender figure reflected on the screen slowly withdrew her hand. With that, a melodious voice as clear as a yellow warbler coming out of the valley came out from within the compartment. The little woman has made a humble offering, and I hope that your honored guests will not be amused. Just a casual response, but it instantly exploded the already hot atmosphere of Sprinkles Pavilion. Countless men issued a variety of adoration confession voice, in which Xiao Weinan will be the first to bear the brunt, lying on the third floor railing, stretching his neck, hysterical shouting towards the opposite side. Miss Mu, I want to give you a monkey. Han Feng was speechless for a moment and quietly reached out to cover his face, while Qin Yujo on the side frowned and muttered in a low voice, isn't it just playing the piano better? What's the big deal? A few moments later, the woman's voice came from the compartment again. Thank you for all your honored guests' love for my concubine, I have been in White Dragon County for three years now, thanks to the support of all of you guests, my concubine is grateful for your support, and I have a lot of things that I want to pour out to you all. Therefore, my concubine has decided to invite an honorable guest with good fortune to enter the curtain today to have a long talk with my concubine, and also to have a glimpse of my true appearance. Chapter 46, The Entrance Test with the compartment, Mu Chinchuan said long talk, a glimpse of the real face words, the hall, instantly as a pot exploded, countless people exclaimed with emotion. Gosh, if I can have a long talk with Miss Mu and see her true face, what if I lose 10 years of my life? Humph, not to mention losing 10 years of my life, if I can see Miss Mu's face today, what's the harm in dying tomorrow? That's right, as the saying goes, if you die under the peony flower, you can be a ghost. Looking at the boiling scene in the hall, as well as by the fence, Zhao Wei Nan, who was on the verge of jumping down in excitement, Han Feng could not help but be stunned for a moment. Dragging Zhao Wei Nan back with difficulty, Han Feng asked. Brother Zhao, could it be that none of you have seen this Miss Mu's appearance? Zhao Wei Nan explained with the posture of a hardcore fan of Mu Qianzun. Brother Han you don't know, Miss Mu rarely shows her face in front of outsiders, even when she does, she wears a veil, no one has seen Miss Mu's real face in these three years. Han Feng was stunned. Didn't you guys say that this Mu girl is one of the three great beauties of White Dragon County? Zhao Wei Nan said rightfully. Yes, but even if Miss Mu didn't reveal her true face, just her eyebrows and eyes are visible as a beautiful woman. If she reveals her true face, she will definitely be one of the three beauties of White Dragon County, maybe even the first beauty. This. Han Feng was a bit speechless for a moment, thinking that this was the brainwashed fans of the other world. At this moment, he couldn't help but think of a certain Chao anchor in his previous life, relying on heavenly beauty and makeup to charm thousands of fans, could it be that this Miss Mu is also a dead-in-the-dark beauty? Is this girl Mu also a beauty who died in the light of day? 
Without waiting for Han Feng to ask more questions, Qin Yujiao, who was on the side, grunted as she grabbed Zhao Wei Nan's lapel nonsense, my sister is the number one beauty in White Dragon County, what makes this woman rank ahead of my sister? Zhao Wei Nan originally wanted to do right by his idol, but when he saw Qin Yujiao cupping her pink fists, with the impulse to splash blood at the drop of a hat, he suddenly stopped his mouth for a second. Han Feng, on the other hand, was a bit puzzled. The three great beauties of the White Dragon County that you guys are talking about, besides this Miss Mu and the City Lord's Mansion's great thousand dollars, what about the other beauty? Upon hearing this, Zhao Wei Nan's face twitched and he looked at Han Feng in an extremely grudging manner Brother Han, you're being unkind, aren't you saying such things to intentionally make people's eyes water? Who doesn't know that your wife, the Zhou family's eldest Miss Zhou Yunmei, is one of the three beauties of our White Dragon County, TSK, this kind of blessing can be really envious of my little brother. Han Feng couldn't help but be stunned when he heard the words, and only then did he remember that he still had a wife, and it turned out that her name was Zhou Yunmei, and she was even a famous beauty in White Dragon County. Although he had never seen this woman before, Han Feng instinctively took quite a dislike to her, and even had a faint aversion to her. Shaking his head and not bothering to think much about it, Han Feng said instead, why can't my big sister, Zhu Hanxin, be considered one of the three great beauties? In Han Feng's eyes, Zhu Han Xian is the real beauty, from the inside out kind of beauty. Zhao Wei Nan said thoughtfully. Eh? Brother Han does not know, the three beauties of the White Dragon County are screened in the county city, your sister usually stays in the Han branch of the house, and seldom walks around in the city. Otherwise, with Miss Chu's looks, she would definitely be able to take a seat as well. Feeling Qin Yujiao's fierce gaze on the side, Zhao Wei Nan added a word in a sensible manner. Of course, there's also second Miss Qin, who is also only slightly younger, and if it were another year or two, she would certainly not lose out to these few. A bowl of water, Zhao Wei Nan wiped a cold sweat on his forehead, busy as to change the topic said. I've heard that today, Miss Mu is recruiting guests to the curtain, but she's going to ask a few difficult questions, so I don't know what kind of questions they'll be. And at this moment, the frantic crowd of guests in the hall finally gradually quieted down. With that the hall was lit on all sides, one by one, with oil lamps. In an instant, the dimly lit cabinet became bright, and the stunningly beautiful figure on the screen outside the opposite compartment disappeared without a trace. The guests were anxious and kept calling out the name Mu Qianxian, but Miss Mu in the compartment stopped making a sound. A few moments later, the left and right behind the screen walked out, two delicate-looking maids. A maid came forward, holding an incense burner in her hand, in which a clear incense had been inserted, and the head of the incense had just been lit. Another waitress stepped up to the fence, facing the guests in the hall, and announced. Guests, today, Miss Mu is going to select a guest of honor from all of you present, and to be fair, Miss Mu has come up with three couplets the guests here, if they can match all three of the upper couplets within one incense burner, they will be able to become Miss Mu's guest of honor. The guests in the room didn't feel too surprised when this statement was made. After all, reciting poems and composing pairs is the norm in the courtesan's field, not to mention the fact that Miss Mu is a renowned talented woman who was good at all kinds of things, so it is natural and reasonable for her to test the crowd by asking questions. Seeing that the fragrance had already begun to burn, the guests hurriedly urged the maids of honor to hurry up and bring out the upper couplet. The maid smiled faintly and walked to the central area of the fence without any panic, and only then did the crowd realize that on top of the fence on the third floor, three scrolls had been tied with red ropes. The maid reached down and untied the red ropes in turn, the three scrolls stretching downward in an instant, the three superscriptions appeared before the eyes of the crowd. Han Feng also raised his eyes curiously. Only on the first couplet was a line written in an ethereal and unobtrusive script. The green water was not a worry, but the wind wrinkled its face. The second scroll reads. Water and land continent, continent stops the boat, boat traveling continent does not work. The third scroll reads. Water with worms is turbid, water with fish is fishing, water, 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 rivers, and lakes. Once the three couplets came out, there was a cacophony of noise in the hall, and from time to time, people responded with their voices, the scene was hot and heavy. But as time passes, the guests who were originally eager to try, but gradually faced difficult color. In the end, the hall was eerily, actually, quiet. Han Feng at this moment will be three pairs of epigrams, shoot a little, is also secretly shocked in the heart, finally know why so many people face difficult color the first couplet, the green hills do not age, but the wind wrinkles their faces, seems simple, but a closer look reveals otherwise. This line is written on the surface of the natural landscape, but it implies anthropomorphic techniques, from the scene into the feelings, the mood is quite far-reaching, want to come up with the next couplet to respond to the mood of the scene, since it is extremely difficult. The second couplet, a continent on land and water, a continent that stops the boat, a continent that does not allow the boat to travel, is even more difficult. It is not only characterized by homophones and thimbles, a rhetorical method, which means that the end of the first sentence and the beginning of the next sentence use the same words or phrases. Moreover, it implies the physical law of relative motion, which is extremely difficult to deal with perfectly as for the last top line, water with insects is cloudy, water with fish is fishing, water 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 water, rivers and lakes. It can be said to be the most difficult. 
a typical split word couplet, in which the level and oblique balance is already extremely difficult. This couplet starts with the word water, so when it comes to the counterpoint, you need to choose one of the five elements of jin, mu, shui, hua, and tu, which makes it twice as difficult. Once the three couplets came out, even from the perspective of Han Fong, a modern man who had gathered the wisdom of ancient Chinese people for thousands of years, they were still considered to be marvelous. Such a difficult three couplets, but also within one incense burner, the next couplet, no wonder it will make the hall become silent, difficult to defeat this white dragon county countless talented people. Han Fong couldn't help but feel a surge of admiration in his heart, it seemed that this Miss Mu was able to have so many crazy admirers in white dragon county and regardless of how the appearance, this talent is already able to stand out. And the attic maidservant eyes at the hall crowd, buried in thought look, just a faint smile said. Guests and slowly ponder, if there is anyone who can match the next couplet, we will immediately offer paper, ink, pen and ink, and will be publicized here. At that time, I will ask all the guests here, as well as Miss Mu, to judge whether or not it is a neat counterpoint. Chapter 47, Cheating Inside the Sprinkles Pavilion, the clear incense had already burned halfway through, and the audience on the third floor of the inner pavilion was filled with whispers. The crowd sometimes looked up and gazed at the three couplets, sometimes frowned in contemplation, pondering the next couplet. The three couplets of the Sprinkles Pavilion are indeed extremely difficult, but among the audience, there are also literati in the White Dragon County who have extraordinary knowledge, or older Confucian scholars who are well read in poetry and books these people's literary talent is not to be underestimated, and occasionally there are a few people who have a flash of insight, calling over the boy to bring ink scrolls, and waving the ink to the next couplet. However, as soon as these couplets were sent to the third floor, they were unfolded in public by the maids of honor, and once they were discussed, some people would point out that they were not neatly written, or criticize them as dog-tailed sable works. These men could then only be ashamed to have the scrolls removed and continue to ponder. Of course, there were no amazing talents among the guests. For example, in the hall on the first floor, a young greenshirt scribe named Li Hung made two couplets in a row, and no one was able to point out the shortcomings the first couplet he made to the next couplet was, the chine flute is not hated, but the heart is sad for the willow. The first line of the couplet is, the green water has no worries, but the wind wrinkles your face. The second couplet reads, Shantang Road, road runs deer, deer runs hard. To the top line, a land and water continent, the continent stops the boat, and the boat travels on the continent. The two lower couplets and the upper couplet are neatly matched, and the mood fits, so that people not only can't find fault, but clap their hands. At the same time, it also attracted a lot of pretty girls from the Sprinkles Pavilion who came to watch the fun, casting admiring gazes at the rather handsomely hang. Even Qin Yujiao couldn't help but praise it. This person's right is really good, I seem to have heard of his name, this person should be one of our White Dragon County's lifers, really extraordinary literary talent. With that, she looked at Han Feng again and said with a mocking smile on her face. Hey, don't you also want to be the guest of honor of that woman surnamed Mu, you also go to the next couplet. What, giving up so soon? When Han Feng heard this, he glanced at Qin Yujiao and shook his head with a smile. Forget it, I don't want to be in the limelight, and I'm not interested in that guest of honor thing. Besides, instead of having a long conversation with a woman from this kind of wind and moon farm, it would be better to have a casual conversation with a lady of the house like Miss Qin Air, who is a lady of the house. Han Feng's statement was a very common joke in his previous life with his female friends. However, hearing it in second Miss Qin's ears, it was a different story, and the little ninny immediately reddened her face the beautiful eyes glared at Han Feng, revealing two cute little tiger teeth, and said in a threatening manner. Han Feng, you denizen, who wants to gossip with you, if you dare to talk nonsense again, beware of my fists. After that she added a dismissive comment. I see you, you simply don't know anything about couplings and are afraid of making a fool of yourself. Han Feng heard the words and just smiled sparingly, casually picking up the tea and sipping lightly, very leisurely, watching the people in the hall rack their brains. Compared to Han Feng's cozy idleness, Zhao Wei Nan was the polar opposite, and at this moment, his hands were clasped on the fence and his eyes were glowing red as he looked at the three top couplets. Even if he searched his stomach, the little invisible ink in his stomach, but also really cannot put together a couplet. Zhao Wei Nan was so anxious and sweaty straight away that his nails almost sank into the wooden fence seeing that the incense has been burned more than half, the entire hall, only that Li Hang Li Gongzi pair of two sets of couplets, and the third set of couplets seems to be brewing, it seems that today's guest of honor, has already been attributed. Suddenly, someone walked over to the table where Han Feng and the others were. The three of them, Han Feng, turned their heads to look, and they saw a bruised and swollen Wu Zhenghao, leading Lu Feng to their side. As soon as she saw Wu Zhenghao, Qin Yujiao's face instantly became unkind. Wu Zhenghao was so frightened that he took a few steps back, avoiding Qin Yujiao's gaze as he looked toward Han Feng and Zhao Weinan with a sneer on his face. Alas! Young Master Han, young Master Zhao, since you two are also here for Miss Mu, now that half the time has passed, why don't you two come out of the right off? It is hard to believe that with your great talents, you still can't match these three top couplets of the district? 
Hearing Wu Zhenghao's obvious mocking words, Han Feng naturally ignored them, while Zhao Wei Nan was so furious that his nostril smoked and sneered back Wu Zhenghao, don't say these sarcasm, if we can't match up, you can match up, with your little literary talent, how much better do you think you can be than me? Wu Zhenghao sniffed, but he laughed triumphantly. Ha ha ha. Zhao Wei Nan ah, you this brain, future inheritance of your Zhao family's family business, afraid that also sooner or later to lose the family. Saying that, Wu Zhenghao glanced at his side, a white dress into the Lu Fang Dao. Alas. Lu Lao let's go, such a simple couplet, some people want to break their heads but cannot get it right, it is really pathetic ah, it is better to let us teach them what is called the real literary talent. With that, Wu Zhenghao swept Zhao Wei Nan and Han Feng with a despicable gaze, and as if venting a mouthful of resentment in his chest, he turned back with Lu Fang on his toe seeing the departing backs of the two, Zhao Wei Nan was so angry that his face turned blue as he looked toward Han Feng. Brother Han, why do I feel that these two guys are despising my intelligence? Han Feng gently sipped a mouthful of tea and blandly said. Be confident and drop the feel. Ah? Uh. Zhao Wei Nan was like a deflated ball of leather, but then he immediately raised his head in defiance. Hmph, I don't believe that dead fat pig can still get the next couplet right. Qin Yu Jiao, who was on the side, said with rare approval. I think this guy is as dumb as a pig too, how can he be right? And at the same time, Wu Zhenghao had already returned to his seat, only to see him slam his big hand on the desktop and drink, men, bring pen, ink, paper, and ink stones. Immediately a boy sent a scroll of ink, Wu Zhenghao, under the gaze of Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yujiao and other people's surprise, picked up the brush, dipped it in the ink and began to wave a big brush. Han Feng also looked at Wu Zhenghao at this moment, standing at his angle, but he happened to be able to see that while Wu Zhenghao was writing the couplet, Lu Feng Yuan, who was standing beside him, had his lips buzzing. Obviously, this couplet is actually Lu Feng for Wu Zhenghao catch the knife on behalf of the work. Shit, this guy cheats. Zhao Wei Nan also discovered the suspicion, angrily rebuked the voice, but it was useless, only in exchange for Wu Zhenghao a mocking smile. Within a short time, Wu Zhenghao wrote out two pairs of lower couplets and had them sent directly to the third floor waitresses to be publicized on the fence. The first couplet, the red face is not thinly veiled, but obsessed with love. The second couplet, the sky rains clouds, the clouds send down rain, the rain falls and the clouds don't fall. The two lower couplets unfolded at the same time, and there was another moment of silence in the hall before a roar of approval erupted. Good writing. What a marvelous next line, the couplet is so neat. Are these two couplets made by the same person? As the crowd's applause rang out, the waitress in the attic said with a smile. This is the next couplet that Mr. Wu Er has come up with. When the crowd heard this, they were all stunned, the reputation of the Wu family's second youngest master was really not small in White Dragon County, but unfortunately it was notorious. For the other party to be able to come up with such a marvelous couplet, there were naturally many people who didn't believe it in their hearts however, due to Wu Zhenghao's family background, no one dared to stand up and accuse him, instead, some people spoke out to please him, praising that these two couplets were excellent, even better than the two couplets of Li Jiren's couplets. At this moment, Li Hong looked at Wu Zhenghao's two couplets, and on his clear white face, he also revealed a few colors of astonishment, and then he coalesced to look at that third couplet and pondered seriously. Apparently he felt threatened as well and intended to get the next couplet right as soon as possible. And Wu Zhenghao on the pavilion, listening to the shouts of applause that rose and fell downstairs, also looked smug, and provocatively, raised the brush in his hand toward Han Feng and Zhao Wei Nan. On the other hand, Lu Feng, the strategist of Wu House, is now gazing at his eyebrows in thought, obviously also trying to think of ways to get the next couplet Zhao Wei Nan was watching from the sidelines, scratching his heart, only hating himself for not being smart enough to learn from Wu Zhenghao, and also invite a capable person to help him solve the problem. Seeing that only a quarter of the fragrance was left, this game in the hall had just become a duel between Li Hong and Wu Zhenghao. Just a few moments later, Lu Fang suddenly had a bright gaze and whispered in Wu Zhenghao's ear in a low voice. Wu Zhenghao also brightened up and immediately started to write, while Li Hang also waved the brush almost at the same time, both sides actually came up with the next couplet at the same time. Zhao Wei Nan was unwilling to the extreme and cursed sourly. Hmph, we mustn't let this guy Wu Zhenghao win, if we let this guy become famous in the White Dragon County in the future, he won't be even more complacent. Han Feng spoke out to comfort him from the side. Brother Zhao, why should you care so much, it's just a flower girl's initiation, how can we talk about being famous in White Dragon County? Zhao Wei Nan sighed. Brother Han, you don't know the influence of Miss Mu, throughout the White Dragon County, who doesn't know the fame of Miss Mu's talent in the Sprinkler Pavilion, if you can get her favor and approval, even a piece of scrap paper can be sold at a sky-high price. If Wu Zhenghao becomes Miss Mu's guest of honor, I'm afraid there will be a whole lot of beautiful women looking up to him in the future. I'm so angry just thinking about it. Zhao Wei Nan indignantly lamented, familiar with not knowing, his sentence, but let the original look at watching Han Feng, the mind aura. Eh? Yeah, why did I forget? Han Feng suddenly slapped his thigh, startling Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yu Jiao Han. Han brother, what have you forgotten? A brilliant light blossomed in Han Feng's eyes as he laughed, our dark fragrance pavilion should hire an image spokesperson. 
Chapter 48, Bring a Pen In the incense burner, the fragrance had almost reached the end, and Li Hong and Wu Zhenghao stopped writing almost simultaneously. The boy beside the duo immediately rolled up the scroll and sent it to the third floor fence, where it was unfolded in front of the crowd by the waitress. The woman first unrolled Li Hang's scroll. Just see Li Hang's next line as. Gold Yima for the oracles, gold Yai for the barium, gold gold, copper iron tin xin xin. The five elements of gold, and the above couplet water with insects will be turbid, water with fish will be fishing, water water water, rivers and lakes, rivers and lakes, rivers and lakes. It is as neat as a pear, and there is no way to find any faults at all when this next couplet came out there was an outcry of approval in the arena. Brother Li, what a literary talent. Worthy of being my white dragon county's lifer, truly talented. It seems that this time, Miss Mu's guest of honor is none other than Brother Li. A sound of applause in the hall, so that Wu Zhenghao face slightly changed, but the sight of the Lu Fang is toward him to throw a don't worry look, Wu Zhenghao only then heart certain. Immediately, the maid in the attic unfolded the third lower couplet he had written. Gold becomes a bell because of the order, gold becomes a U because of the jade, gold gold, hairpin and bracelet XAN XIN. Once this next couplet came out, the originally bustling hall gave a lurch, and after a long time, someone finally marveled. Good. Good right. It's really a wonderful underline, this Ling and you are quite elegant, although they are the same as the gold character side, but the meaning is still better than the underline of the Li Ju Rana. TSK TSK TSK. I cannot imagine that the second son of Wu has such high talent, I am impressed impressed. The hall was filled with the sound of marveling and clapping, causing Wu Zhenghao, who was on top of the third floor, to blush with excitement and stand at the attic fence, arching his hand and greeting with the people in the hall. If not for his face still being blue and purple, and his eyes crooked and slanting, at this moment he really had a few flavors of a flamboyant genius. However, just as Li Hang and Wu Zhenghao had matched the third pair of lower couplets and were making a public announcement in the attic to invite the public to comment on them, the fragrance was about to be burned out. Among the guest seats on the third floor, Han Feng turned his head and summoned a boy, allowing him to directly fetch ink, paper, and ink stones the boy did not know why, but for the third floor of the noble guests naturally do not dare to neglect, immediately go to fetch the ink treasure. Xin Yujiu and Zhao Weinan, who were on the side, both had a stunned look on their faces when they saw this. Brother Han, what are you doing? Han Feng had a bashful look on his face. Of course it's a couplet. Ahem. Zhao Weinan dryly coughed a few times and stepped forward to discourage him. That. Han brother forget it, today is my little brother blunder, let Wu Zheng how this dog thief picked up the cheat, Han brother do not want to be impulsive, today sprinkle gold pavilion literati talent countless, we. Or do not. Although Zhao Wei Nan did not continue, Han Fong understood what he meant. This guy clearly thought that Han Fong was being stabbed, excited, and hardened his heart to compete, fearing that the next couplet written by Han Fong would be laughable and embarrassing Han Feng's guess is of course correct, Zhao Wei Nan and Han Fong is a close friend, he for Han Feng's literary literacy that is more than clear. The White Dragon County is known as the martial arts, and is not just a name, when Zhao Wei Nan because of homework is too poor, every time after the beatings, see Han Feng's grades, the mood can be a few points of relief. Although some time ago, he found that Han Feng seemed to be somewhat enlightened again, but this ability to recite poetry and make corrections is not something that can be practiced in three or two days. Zhao Wei Nan is still concerned about his brother's pride, but Qin Yujiu on the side can be very direct. Hearing Han Feng say that he wanted to answer the next couplet, he couldn't help but to laugh, holding his hands on his belly, laughing and not being able to catch his breath, huh? You. You say you also want a pair of couplets? Ouch. Can really laugh me to death, you are not a duck pulling a cart, self-importance? Seeing Qin Yujiao smile so heartlessly, and also gave herself the title of duck, Han Feng's face immediately darkened a bit, glancing at Qin Yujiao said. He he. Xin air miss so do not believe in Han Mao, can you dare to make a bet with Han Mao? Qin Yujiao sniffed slightly and stopped laughing. Bet. On what? If Han gets the next couplet right, he can make any one of his demands on you, and you can't refuse. Conversely, if I lose, you can also make any one of your requests to me. When Qin Yujiao heard this, she agreed without thinking. Okay, I'll bet you. Although Qin Yujia wasn't a talented woman, as the city lord's house's daughter, she still had basic general knowledge of literature today, the three couplets that Mu Qianxian had come up with were so difficult that only two of the talented scholars and writers in the audience were able to match all of them. What kind of goods Han Feng in front of her was, Qin Yujia had heard about it a long time ago, where would she believe that the other party had this ability? At this moment, the little nymph's mind was already calculating, if she won, should she let this guy, also free of charge, let the shares of the dark fragrance pavilion to herself a few more percent? At that time, she would directly become the major shareholder of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, and then let Han Feng produce and make perfume for herself every day. Once the two bets are made, the boy also happens to be the three scrolls in pen and ink to send, Han Feng directly three sets of scrolls laid flat in front of the table, dipped in ink and waved the brush, the pen walks like a snake. 
Now that Han Feng has crossed into the peak of martial apprentice four-star and has practiced martial arts, his control over his body is far better than before, which has directly fueled his calligraphy cultivation the original always have form without god of the wild cursive font, but now there is a bit of divine charm. The uninhibited script, with its thousands of pen strokes, is unrestrained and indulgent, and dazzlingly fast. After the next couplet was written, before Qin Yujiu and Zhao Weinan on the side could see what was written, Han Feng raised his hand and grabbed the end of the scroll and pulled it, and the scroll automatically closed. At the same time, he put up his pen and dipped it in ink, and immediately began to write the second couplet without any gap in between a breath of writing to the last word, another pull and close, followed by the opening of the third vice. At this moment, the crowd in the hall was not even paying attention to this place, the crowd was arguing about which of the three couplets of the next couplet between Li Hong and second young master Wu was weaker or stronger. Although there were many people who, in order to pat Wu Zhenghao's pat on the back, bluntly said that Wu Urshao was better, there was also the talented person who was not afraid of power and was quite literate, who stalked his neck to write the name of Li Han, and the two sides were actually arguing for a while. Seeing that the argument in the hall was getting more and more intense, the verbal fight between the two sides was vaguely developing towards a fist fight, the two personal maids of Miss Mu who were presiding over the tournament in the attic were getting a little anxious at that exact moment, a boy ran quickly and handed the three pairs of scrolls to the two women. Two girls, this is the next couplet that young Master Han came up with. The two women heard were stunned, did not expect that at this time there are still people out of the union relative, a maid looked at the incense burner in the incense, at this moment just burned out, she could not help but gaze bright. At this moment, the two sides were arguing endlessly, and these three couplets at the moment, no matter whether they were good or bad, could be used to ease the tension in the hall. Not being able to ask more about which young Master Han it was, the maid cleared her throat and spoke in a loud voice. Please be at ease, there are three more couplets here, please judge them. When the guests in the room heard this, they all really froze and subconsciously stopped arguing the two maids were secretly relieved when they saw this, and then, without caring much about it, they unfolded the first lower couplet first. Scroll hanging down and stretching, a line of dashing uninhibited cursive, reflected in the eyes of the crowd, not waiting for a detailed defense of its content, then someone praised. Good calligraphy. This kind brother's cursive writing is wild but not chaotic, his strokes are vigorous, in time, he may be able to form his own school. As the crowd marveled at the writing skills on the scroll, a middle-aged Confucian scholar took the lead and began to read its contents. The top line of the first couplet reads, The green water is originally free of worry, but the wind wrinkles its face. And the next couplet on top of the scroll reads, The green mountain will never grow old, but for the snow, the head will be white. Hiss. The middle-aged Confucian first gave a start, then suddenly drew in a mouthful of cool air, and settled in place. Immediately, the others began to recite this next couplet. And after reading it, the crowd's reaction was surprisingly consistent. Accompanied by the sound of backward breaths of cold air, the originally bustling hall actually turned into a pin drop. Even Xin Yujiao, who originally looked like she was watching a joke and had been covering her mouth to hold back her laughter. After looking clearly at the next couplet on the scroll, all of them had their little mouths open wide, their beautiful eyes gazing blankly at the scroll, their gazes seeming shocked and infatuated. A long silence passed. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. An old child, already in his prime, broke the silence of the room by shouting in an excited voice. The marvelousness of this couplet can be celebrated for a thousand years. Chapter 49 The first flirtatious talent The green water is originally carefree, but wrinkles its face because of the wind, the green mountain is originally ageless, but whitens its head for the snow. The seemingly simple couplets, in which both the scenery and the mood, and even the emotions contained therein, are all skillfully related, are breathtaking. With that old scholar's exclamation, the entire hall was as if it had been detonated. Numerous scholars and scholars of the world have competed for praise, all described in the word absolute. Even Li Hong, who was quite arrogant and refused to bow down even to Wu Zhenghao, couldn't help but look shocked and admiring when he saw the next couplet. Even those who watched to see, the girls in the pavilion, read this beautiful context of the next couplet, cannot help but beautiful eyes, a heart fluttering trembling. At the same time, within the compartment behind the screen on the third floor, a stunning figure with a delicate posture and a light veil covering her face, were all slightly moving their petite bodies, softly chanting the green mountain originally does not grow old, for the snow white head, what a marvelous next line, and I do not know who is the right person. Seeing the hall, an unprecedented fiery atmosphere, Wu Zhenghao, who originally had a smug look on his face, could not help but change his color and look at Lu Fang Dao. What? Is going on here, is this next couplet? Better than the one we made? Lu Fang, who had been acting confidently on the side, was at this moment showing the same shocked inexplicable look, his eyes searched around and could not help but whisper to himself. Who exactly is this? Next couplet made by, can it be that which great scholar of the empire has arrived in person? 
After thinking about it and thinking that it is impossible, even if those few great scholars have this kind of talent, it is also impossible to show up in the sprinkler pavilion this kind of flirtatious place, Lu Fang busy comforting Wu Zhenghao said, the second young master is not in a hurry, although this next couplet is good, it may just be a wonderful hand, there are three couplets in total, and the last two may not be colorful. Wu Zhenghao also nodded his head and shouted arrogantly through the air. Quickly unfold the other two next couplets, this young master would like to see whether this person is talented or lucky? This statement also reminded the people present that this person still had two pairs of next couplets yet to come out, and they immediately followed suit and urged them on. At the urging of the crowd, the maid unfolded the remaining two couplets of the next couplet together the top line of the second couplet reads, a land and water continent, the state stops the boat, the boat travels the continent. The next couplet on the scroll reads, in the heart of heaven, a dove falls from the pavilion, and the dove flies before the pavilion flies. The top line of the third couplet reads, water with worms is turbid, water with fish is fishing, water 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 water, rivers, and lakes. The next couplet on the scroll reads, under the wood for this, above the wood for the end, wood for wood, pine, and camphor for the forest. The two lower couplets were displayed at the same time, and the shocking effect they had was even greater than that of the first couplet. The guests present looked at the two couplets, all were dumbfounded, like seeing a ghost. The old Confucian who had previously praised the first pair of lower couplets, after seeing these two lower couplets, his breathing actually intensified, his face reddened, and he lost his voice in shock how is this? This possible. The reason why this person is so shocked, there is no other reason, that is because these two couplets, compared to the first couplet, but not inferior, can be said to be seamless, the perfect couplet. For example, the third couplet, Li Hong and Wu Zhenghao to give the couplet, both for the gold character side, although it can be neat, but in accordance with the five elements of gold begets water, the gold should be in the upper line is more appropriate. At the moment, the wood used in the next couplet is water begets wood, which is in line with the five elements, naturally it is more than one step ahead. However, even if a person is learned and talented, in the time it took to burn incense, three consecutive pairs of thousand years absolute were made, and again, it was really almost demonic and unbelievable at this moment, not only this old Confucian, but even the other people in the hall, who were looking at these three pairs of thousand year absolutes with their eyes wide open, the shock within their hearts was beyond words. Even Li Hang and Lu Fang, at this moment, both of their faces were white and their bodies staggered slightly. As the saying goes, there is no first in literature and no second in martial arts. Originally, it was extremely difficult to judge the level of literature. But in front of these three ancient absolute front, the two made the next line, immediately eclipsed, just now each arguing about the high and low action, at this moment is like a child's play, the two are like a fire face. At this moment, even if Wu Zhenghao was a fool, seeing the reaction of the crowd, he knew that these three couplets in front of him were bound to be much more brilliant than his own couplets he immediately became a bit anxious, now that he was pursuing Miss Qin, he was mostly hopeless, this Miss Mu was the woman he was aiming for. He immediately bellowed. This. Is the next line made by someone. The two maids were also just coming out of, the shock that these three sets of thousand ancient absolutes had brought about. Upon hearing this, a maid subconsciously replied. This. This is the work of young master Han. Young master Han? Wu Zhenghao froze, but he didn't even think about Han Feng and said coldly. Which young master Han is it? The two maids looked at each other, both looking blankly at, the boy who had delivered the scroll. At the same time, everyone's gazes also looked at the boy. Feeling the fiery gaze of the crowd, the teenage-looking boy, clutching a gold coin in his hand, took a deep breath and shouted with all his strength, this was written by my white dragon county's number one flamboyant talent, Master Han of the Han family branch. At these words, there was a dead silence in the hall. The crowd's eyes couldn't help but look in unison toward the third floor, toward the seats near the fence. At this moment, Han Feng, calmly put down the tea in his hands, got up and came to the fence, first waved his hand toward the boy, a humble face. Eh? Little brother too much praise, what the first wind flow talented person, Han Mao is not talented and shallow, how can I dare to call myself a talented person? Immediately, he then clasped his fists and arched his hands towards the hall full of dumbfounded guests. Mr. Han's work of dedication has made you all laugh. After a short period of silence, sprinkle gold pavilion completely explosion, the scene of the sensation, and even better than the three pairs of ancient absolute appearance the crowd's murmurs and marvels were endless, but the picture was as follows. Shit, it's actually Han Feng. I'll go, isn't this guy famous for being a total loser in literature and martial arts in White Dragon County, and he can still make couplets? Crap, Han Feng can also be right right, Sows can get up trees. Damn. This cheating is too obvious. On the fence, the Han family master, who was preparing to receive the praise of the crowd, heard the rising and falling murmurs and voices of skepticism, and couldn't help but have the corners of his mouth twitch, his brain covered with black lines. I'm going to. What is this? Even Wu Zhenghao that stupid pig invited someone to catch the knife, 
are able to get the whole audience enthusiastic, his own personal pair of three pairs of ancient absolute, but was suspected of cheating, Han Feng's mouth is almost angry crooked at this moment, after learning that the three couplets were actually made by Han Feng, no one was more excited than Wu Zhenghao. Second young master Wu was so angry that his chest rose and fell violently, pointing at Han Feng with red eyes and trembling fingers. Well. Well, you. You fucking cheated too. As soon as these words came out, Wu Zhenghao instantly realized that something was wrong and quickly changed his words. You. You are so shameless ah, even asked someone to make the next couplet in advance, I. I. Wu Zhenghao was so angry that his chest was stuffy and he was a little out of breath, his face rose to a pig's liver color. It was no wonder that Wu Wuxia and the crowd in the hall were so agitated, it was really Han Feng's popularity in White Dragon County that was a bit too bad when Han Xiaotian was still the head of the Han family, there were countless assholes that this guy had done in White Dragon County. Even Wu Zhenghao was considered a kind and cute little lamb in front of him. And although Wu Zhenghao also knows that he doesn't have a few points of ink in his stomach, he thinks that he is still a little bit better than Han Feng. At this moment, the other party made three pairs of thousands of absolute, shocking the whole scene, the feeling in Wu Zhenghao's heart, as if on weekdays, he was the third from the bottom of the class, and now it was hard to rely on the means, jumped to become a top student, ready to accept everyone's praises. The original bottom of the first Han Feng, but directly reversed to become the first class, more outrageous than him, he felt too unfair, too damn angry, this is the naked shady. As for Zhao Wei, the male student who was the second last in the class, and Qin Yu Jiao, who was a melon eater on the side, the two of them were also looking at each other at the moment, somewhat dumbfounded as witnesses who had watched Han Feng write the three couplets with their own eyes, at this moment, even they couldn't decide whether Han Feng had written the couplets himself or had asked someone to write them in advance. If you say that the only person who believes in Han Feng is the one behind the screen, sitting in the compartment, I'm afraid that there is a certain beautiful person. As all three of Han Feng's lower couplets were unveiled, Mu Qianxian could not help but stand up. Looking across the gauze curtain to the opposite fence, the figure of a thousand people, a flash of color in his gaze. Chapter 50 10,000 gold additions inside the attic chamber, the other woman in red couldn't help but wonder. Sister Mu, do you think this mister? Han, is it true that he asked someone to write for him? Upon hearing this, the woman standing behind the screen, the woman with a thin veil over her face and picturesque eyebrows, but she gently shook her head and said. Impossible, these three couplets were made by me last night and have been kept in the compartment and never taken out. These three pairs of lower couplets are bound to be completed within the time it took to burn incense just now, but whether or not they were corrected by Mr. Han, I'm not sure. Sister Mu, I've heard that this Mr. Han is an uneducated man, I'm afraid he's just not that learned, right? The woman slowly withdrew her gaze and said meaningfully. Ran, sometimes, don't trust other people's judgment too much. The sensation caused by the three pairs of marvelous lower couplets made by Han Feng had not yet subsided in the sprinkler pavilion's inner cabinet hall in the face of the crowd's various doubts, speculations, and even blatant denigration. The Han family lord, who had intended to improve his reputation in the White Dragon County, at this moment, his face eased up, and with a smiling face, he rushed towards the crowd and arched his hand, saying under his breath. Thanks for the compliment. Not daring to. Oblige, oblige. It was as if all the penumbras around him were glorifying and praising him. Han Feng's approach at the moment was, as long as I'm not embarrassed, it's you guys who are embarrassed. Now that the couplet has been made, no matter how much you doubt or disbelieve, it will be of no avail. For the sake of the dark fragrance pavilion's business, for the sake of gold coins and spirit stones, the Han family master had already given up his old face. Seeing Han Feng this kind of water splash not into brazen move, and then remembered just now, the other party to send the scroll of the boy, the flesh is incomparably stuffed a gold coin, so that the other party to emphasize, his, the first flirtatious talented son of the name of the shameless behavior even Zhao Wei Nan is feeling some shame and sweat, can be shameless to the Han brother such a point, really is unprecedented. As for Qin Yujiao on the side, at this moment, her pretty face was red as if it was on fire, she couldn't help but cover her face with her hands, not because of shyness, but because she felt that it was too humiliating. Asshole, shameless, despicable. At this moment, Wu Zhenghao was already furious and jumped to his feet and cursed, but in the face of the calm Han Feng, there was nothing he could do. After all, everyone was cheating, and he himself was no better, but he just couldn't stand to see the smug look of Han Feng. Seeing that his young master was so furious, the gaze of Lu Feng, who was also a bit exasperated at the side, turned, and suddenly a cold smile spread out from the corner of his mouth when he leaned over and whispered in Wu Zhenghao's ear, he whispered a few words. Wu Zhenghao froze at his words, and then the look of annoyance on his face instantly turned into a sinister sneer. In the next moment, in front of everyone, Wu Zhenghao led Lu Feng to Han Feng in large strides. Out of everyone's expectation, Wu Zhenghao actually clasped his fists and saluted with a cordial face. Ha ha. Brother Han, the so-called sure farewell three days, when the eyes look at the same, Brother Han these three pairs of thousands of ancient absolute, really is the past and present, the name of the White Dragon County's first wind flow talent, true to its name. Mr. Wu admires, admires ah. 
When he saw Wu Zhenghao walking towards him, Han Feng guessed that the other party wouldn't be resting on his laurels. At this moment, once he heard the other party open his mouth, it was such an obvious words of praise, Han Feng is even more certain that this guy is going to do something bad again in response, Han Feng simply smiled bashfully and arched his hand at Wu Zhenghao. Alas! Young Master Wu is polite, what first flamboyant talent is too much praise? Mr. Han thinks to himself that he is only slightly more literate, slightly more handsome, and slightly more elegant, not much at all. Ah! Uh. The fat meat on Wu Zhenghao's face twitched fiercely a few times, obviously exasperated by the other party's answer that did not follow the rules. However, at this moment, he still held back his anger and squeezed out a smile and said, Brother Han is really too modest, but Brother Han's talent is there for all to see. Wu Mao admiration, but also want to ask Han brother to teach one or two, I do not know Han brother. Can teach ah? Hmm. Han Feng's heart fluttered, knowing that the other party was diagramming the situation, and casually said, I wonder young master Wu, how would you like to be taught? The smile on Wu Zhenghao's face increased. Hey! Since brother Han for couplings together, so in the line, Wu Mao will with brother Han on a few pairs how? When Han Feng heard this, he didn't comment on it, but in his heart, he laughed coldly, the other party was clearly trying to dismantle himself and make a fool out of him in public. After all, there's no chance of cheating in a live pairing with so many people watching. Seeing that Han Feng didn't immediately agree, Wu Zhenghao hurriedly said. Why, brother Han is so talented, he won T even dare to agree to the small request. Right? This statement was immediately supported by a group of guests who questioned Han Feng in the hall, and all of them have the idea of on-site counterfeiting in their hearts. Looking at the cold light in Wu Zhenghao's eyes, Han Feng just smiled since young master Wu has such a pleasure, how could I not comply? Seeing Han Feng agree so easily, Wu Zhenghao couldn't help but faintly freeze, and then a triumphant sneer appeared on his face. I'll see how long you can pretend. At this moment, Han Feng spoke again, Brother Wu, I wonder how you want to spar? Wu Zhenghao sniffed and pretended to ponder, but Lu Feng, who had been waiting for a long time, suddenly opened his mouth. Young Master Han, I'm not talented, but I've also followed my young master and have grown to learn some poetry and poetry. Although my young master's knowledge is not as profound as my young master's, but today, seeing that young master Han is so talented, I dare to make a pair of couplets on behalf of my young master, how about asking young master Han to make the next couplet? The master and servant's gazes gazed at Han Feng in unison, and the plot was already apparent. Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yujiao, who were on the side, both noticed that the momentum was not right, Zhao Wei Nan was busy stepping forward, making eyes while discouraging Brother Han, today is Miss Mu's home turf, so why should we clamor to spar with them? Upon hearing this, Han Feng's face truly showed a hesitant expression. Brother Zhao has a point. Seeing that Han Feng was showing signs of retreat, Wu Zhenghao hurriedly opened his mouth. Brother Han, if you are able to defeat Lu Feng, Mr. Wu can add to the prize by offering a thousand gold coins how about it? A gasp of surprise could not help but come from within the hall at these words. A thousand gold coins might not be a big deal for a few big families, but for ordinary people, it was by no means a small amount, and it was enough to cover the expenses of an ordinary family for several years. Upon hearing this, Han Feng's eyes also lit up, but then he revealed a look of contempt and said, Young Master Wu, you are the second young master of the Wu family, opening your mouth for a mere thousand gold coins is too petty. Zhao Wei Nan, who was on the side, also mocked in a conspiratorial manner. That's right, a mere thousand gold coins, not enough for this young master to lose two hands in the gambling house, look at your poor and broad look, TSK TSK TSK. When Wu Zhenghao heard this, he was so angry that his nostrils almost smoked, but he could only hold back his anger and said. Oomph, good. Since today is Miss Mu's main event, this young master will offer ten thousand gold coins to add to this prize. Wow. As Wu Zhenghao's words fell, an outcry of shock came from the hall. I didn't realize that today, Miss Mu's recruitment of her guest to the curtain had also led to a fight between two sons of the world's families, who had actually wagered 10,000 gold coins. The crowd was shocked, but also excited, many people want to see Wu Zhenghao successfully fake Han Feng. After all, the literati despise each other has always been, no one wants to believe that these three ancient absolute, really from the hand of Han Feng seeing that he had the support of the entire room, Wu Zhenghao felt a sense of grandeur in his heart and raised an eyebrow at Han Feng. Brother Han, I've offered 10,000 gold coins as a lottery, but what if you lose, Brother Han? Wu Zhenghao thought, you want to pit my money, I also want to ruthlessly pit back, who expected Han Feng is not at all take the move, casually said. If I lose, I lose, it's not like I want to spar with you. Do you still want me to compensate you for 10,000 gold coins, I'm not a fool? Ahem. When Han Feng said this, Wu Zhenghao almost vomited blood, this guy is clearly a corner to call himself a fool ah. Phew. Forcibly resisting the urge to storm off on the spot, the fat on Wu Zhenghao's face trembled as he gritted his teeth. All right, just as Brother Han said, Lu Feng, you will have a good sparring session with Brother Han. Wu Zhenghao's gaze was icy cold as he looked toward Lu Feng, clearly signaling the other party that he must make Han Feng lose face. 
Lu Fang secretly nodded and also looked at Han Feng with an unfavorable gaze, arching his hand once. Young Master Han, then I will not be polite. Chapter 51 The Devil is One Foot Tall, the Tao is Ten Foot Tall. Lu Fang took a step forward and looked out over the fence. Under the gaze of the crowd, with little thought, he blurted out an epigram. Goats up the hill. Beside Han Feng, Zhao Wei Nan, who looked even more nervous than him, couldn't help but open his mouth. Ah! Uh, that's gone? Lu Fang just smiled faintly and nodded his head, indicating that those were the only four words. The many literati sons and daughters present were also a bit stunned, not expecting Lu Fang's first couplet to be so brief. Han Feng, on the other hand, laughed coldly in his heart, knowing that this old bastard, Lu Fang, had evil intentions and was doing this on purpose it's like being given a calculus problem in school in a previous life, and if you can't do it, it's not a disgrace. But if you are given a question on addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and you still can't do it, you will be disgraced. The crowd soon also figured out what was in Lu Fang's mind, while also realizing that the other party's simple forward couplet actually concealed a hidden mystery. Goats going up the mountain has mountains at both ends, so in order to make a perfect match, both the animals in the first place have to overlap, and it takes some thought to come up with it right away. For a moment, all eyes looked toward Han Feng. Even Qin Yujiao, who had originally planned to watch Han Feng's jokes, couldn't help but tense up at this moment, her small hands subconsciously clasped together. How about it, young master Han such a simple superscription shouldn't be difficult for you, right? A playful smile appeared on Lu Fong's wrinkled old face instead, Han Feng returned a look of disdain and casually spat out four words. Buffalo down. Well. When these words came out, everyone present was stunned, and then someone opened their mouth to praise. Good pair. Well. Is indeed neat. Seeing this, Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yujiao both breathed a sigh of relief as well. And Lu Fang was also slightly surprised, then smiled lightly and said. It is really a good pair, but my pair. Is not finished, young master Han and listen to the upper line again. The goat goes up the hill and the hill touches the goat's horns. Once the top line came out, everyone in the hall was shocked. I didn't expect Lu Fang this line, but there is this change, which is added to the back of the line, not only the first line of the line echo, but also the use of the thimble technique, the difficulty can be said to have doubled several times many of the people present were in a dilemma, and for a while they couldn't think of a response to the next couplet. However, when Han Feng heard the first couplet, he simply did not think twice about it and said. The buffalo goes under and floods the buffalo's nose. As Han Feng spoke out, the hall fell silent, and then they heard some people praising him profusely. Wonderful. What an ingenious next line. When he heard Han Feng's next couplet, a flash of shock flashed through Lu Fang's eyes as well. He didn't expect Han Feng to respond, so quickly, and as if he had already anticipated the change in his top line and prepared a response in advance. Eyes narrowing slightly, Lu Fang arched his hand. Young Master Han, truly a deep hide. And seeing Han Feng respond so quickly to the next couplet, earning a full house, Zhao Weinan also had a look of honor on his face even Qin Yujia couldn't help but excitedly wave her pink fist in praise. Han Feng, I can't believe you're really something, go for it. Han Feng, on the other hand, shook the 10 gold coins worth of folding fan and casually fanned it a few times. Ink hair flying between, handsome face reveals a touch of evil confident smile, actually make many girls in the hall, blushing, heartbeat accelerated, eyes colorful. Han Feng, on the other hand, was oblivious to these gazes and turned towards second Miss Qin, blinking his eyes in response to her encouragement. The second Miss Qin was looked at by this gaze, her heart trembled, her whole body seemed to be electrified, a tingling, and she was so shy that her cheeks flushed and she lowered her head. Seeing Han Feng so pleased with himself, Wu Zhenghao's lungs were about to explode, and Lu Fang's gaze chilled as he sneered young master Han, the old man was only trying his hand at it in a small way, now I'm going to get serious. Han Feng raised his eyebrows and said with an arrogant expression. I can't do anything else, but I'm known as the Dokoroku Kusho of the pairing world, so if you have any couplets, just come out. Ooh. Young Master Han has a big mouth. Lu Fang sneered twice and took a deep breath, trying to calm himself down. After a moment's thought, he came up with another brilliant superscription, and immediately said aloud. The northern geese fly south, with wings east and west, divided up and down. As soon as this top couplet came out, the crowd first thought it was rather unusual, but after a little scrutiny, they realized the difficulty of it. Lu Fang's couplet is actually the east, west, south, north is a direction all accounted for all, can be said to let the other side no way out, cannot be said to be not tricky the difficulty of this link, compared to the previous link, directly higher several grades, without decades of study, I'm afraid that it is difficult to think of such a sharp link in a short period of time. The people present were not stupid, they all secretly guessed that this Lu Fang was by no means as simple as Wu Zhenghao's slave. I'm afraid that all the couplets Wu Zhenghao made earlier came from this person's hand. At this moment, Lu Fang looked at Han Feng with a confident expression. Young Master Han, please be right. Han Feng smiled faintly and closed the folding fan in his hand, speaking without thinking. Front car, back rut, two wheels around, go high and low. Hiss. 
The moment Han Feng said this, within the hall, the sound of sucking and cool air was unceasing. Even Lu Feng's pupils shrank, instantly changing his face Han Feng this next link, with, before and after the left and right against his east and west, south and north can be described as wonderful, more amazing is that the other party's answer is too fast, simply off the cuff. If it wasn't for the fact that the couplet was an impromptu idea of Lu Feng's, he really would have wondered if someone had, in fact, given Han Feng a chance to see through the question. Immediately afterward, the hall was filled with another round of praises and shouts of approval. Many people's gazes toward Han Feng had gradually changed from their earlier skepticism and disdain to awe and amazement. Han Feng, on the other hand, favored and glanced at Lu Feng and said, Elder Lu, didn't you just say that you're getting serious, could this grade of epigram be your limit? Han Feng's disdainful face caused Lu Feng to feel a great insult. His gaze chilled and he gazed at his brows for a moment in thought, then suddenly his eyes lit up and he smiled grimly, young master Han let's hear my top line. The two apes broke the wood in the mountain forest, and the little monkeys dared to saw. When this couplet came out, the guests present were all shocked. While marveling at the difficulty of this couplet, they all realized that Lu Feng's ill will, which is clearly a couplet to scold Han Feng as rats from a sinking ship, the last saw can be used to communicate the word sentence. From this, we can see that Han Feng has twice answered the next couplet, which has made the Wu strategist a bit annoyed, and he deliberately made a couplet to insult him. Wu Zhenghao on the side also heard the ambiguity and couldn't help but heave a sneer and look at Han Feng with a mocking expression. Zhao Wei Nan, however, was instantly displeased and shouted angrily. Oomph, what an ungrateful old thing, how dare you speak out against Brother Han? Xin Yujiu also couldn't help but scold at this moment, not bad, could it be that the people of the Wu Mansion are all such graceless people? Seeing that Qin Yujiu had spoken out and rebuked, Lu Fang's face changed, but he squeezed out a smile and said, Hey! You all don't misunderstand, this top line actually originates from an anecdote in the north. I heard that in the north of the empire, the northern border province of the deep mountains, often saw wood people pulling saws, mountain monkeys see, when the people leave, will also follow the example of the people, pulling the big saw saws together. This is also how I came up with the above couplet, and I have no intention whatsoever of slandering Han Xiao. Upon hearing this, some people in the room couldn't help but lose their laughter, but they had really heard of this anecdote. However, we still know in our hearts that Lu Fang is still pointing the finger, but this move is quite brilliant, obviously cursing, but still justified, without revealing Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yujiu were indignant in their hearts and wanted to stand up for Han Feng, but Han Feng raised his hand to indicate that the two did not need to be angry, while secretly sneering in his heart. In his previous life, he did not read many thousands of absolute for nothing, he will not be difficult by the other side of this tactic? Han Feng immediately smiled bashfully and arched his hand. Elder Lu is really knowledgeable, however, I have come up with the next couplet. Lu Fang's complexion changed, and he would be convinced. Oh. Please also ask young master Han to enlighten me. Han Feng, however, looked up and down, carefully sizing up Lu Fang before opening his mouth to say. When a horse is lost within the muck, how can the old beast get out of the hoof? The moment these words came out, all the guests in the audience were silent after a long time, someone suddenly burst out laughing. Immediately, loud laughter rose and fell in the hall. Han Feng's next couplet is really neat, but scolded more ruthless than Lu Fang, implying that Lu Fang is an old animal out of the question, hooves can be questioned. Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yu Jiao froze for a moment, and then they couldn't help but laugh as well. The only one who was furious after hearing Han Feng's next couplet was Lu Fang, whose old face was red and couldn't help but point angrily at Han Feng. Young Master Han Yu. You this is simply degrading, what is the difference between it and a shrew cursing the street? Han Feng heard the words, but he revealed an innocent expression. Elder Lu, you must not misunderstand ah, this next couplet is by no means an insult to Elder Lu, it is really my personal experience. Just a few days ago, my young master rode an old horse to the countryside for a trekking trip, only to accidentally fall into the mud I sighed in my heart at that time, how can this horse come out of its hooves when it is so old? You say, why have I ever scolded you? Is it hard to believe that Elder Lu considers himself to be an animal? You. Lu Fang immediately opened his mouth wide, an old face reddened, but he was speechless. The people in the hall, however, were laughing even more joyfully at the moment. Xin Yujiao straight laughed at the small abdomen raw pain, bent down the waist, and said that this guy is also too lack of virtue, really laugh at the death of people. At the same time, opposite the screen behind the compartment, also came a delicate laughter, apparently this Miss Mu also by Han Feng's next line to amuse. Chapter 52 When the Time Comes Lu Fang made three consecutive moves, but they were all easily taken down by Han Feng. Even in the end, he had bad intentions and wanted to discredit Han Feng, but he was scolded by the other party, so it can be said that he lost all his face while Lu Fang was ashamed and angry, he finally realized. The Han Feng in front of him is indeed proficient in coupling, with their own strength, they simply cannot fight each other, and then compare, it will only be a self-inflicted humiliation. Looking helplessly at Wu Zhenghao on the side, Lu Fang revealed a look of shame. Young master, the old man. Is incompetent and has disgraced you? 
Seeing that Lu Fang was defeated, while Han Fang shone, Wu Zhenghao had long been furious with the three corpses of the gods. With a cannibalistic gaze, he glared fiercely at Lu Fang, then looked at Han Fang and said coldly. Young Master Han, you really are so literate that you are able to win over the house slaves of my residence. Han Fang ignored Wu Zhenghao's hidden disparaging remarks and smiled lightly. Well said, since young Master Wu has admitted defeat, let's hurry up and settle the bill. When Wu Zhenghao heard this, his eyelids couldn't help but jump fiercely. He wasn't a young master of the family like Zhao Wei Nan, as the second son of the head of the family born from the second house, the monthly money he was able to get was only around a thousand gold coins. Ten thousand gold coins, even he would have to save up for half a year. At this moment, a handful of bets will be exported, how can it not be heartbroken? Although there is some regret in his heart, but at this moment, in front of the White Dragon County, countless talented people and beautiful people, not to mention, Miss Mu in the compartment is still looking at all this, Wu Zhenghao naturally cannot go back on his word. After secretly giving Han Feng a resentful glance, he was ultimately helpless and pulled out ten golden tickets worth thousands of dollars. Wu Zhenghao handed it to Han Feng with immense meat pain, but he had to act like he didn't care Han Feng, on the other hand, did not care about Wu Zhenghao's secret threatening gaze, but instead shook the golden ticket in his hand inside. Hey! These days rushing to give people money to spend good people, cannot be seen too often, Wu Xiao really is the first big good person in White Dragon County, next time there is this kind of good thing, remember to call on Han again ah. You! Wu Zhenghao's teeth were about to be clenched, but he couldn't have an attack, so he could only swear secretly in his heart. In the future, we must make Han Feng pay back a thousand times a hundred times a thousand. Strongly suppressing the anger in his heart, Wu Zhenghao, who felt that his face had been lost, was about to call up and down the people to leave. On the side, Lu Fang was the one who spoke out to remind him. Young master, the rule for Miss Mu's recruitment of the guest of honor today is that you can match three couplets within one incense burner now that the young master has also met Miss Mu's requirements, I'm afraid that the ownership of this guest of honor is still uncertain. As soon as Lu Fang said this, Wu Zhenghao's eyes instantly lit up, and he remembered that today's competition was not about whose next couplet was more brilliant. Anyone who met the requirements could qualify to become Mu Qianchuan's guest of honor, so why should he or she give way to this trash Han Feng? Besides, this 10,000 gold coins can't be spent in vain. For a while, Wu Zhenghao's gaze towards Lu Fang was also slightly eased. Turning his head to look at the opposite compartment, Wu Zhenghao then said in a loud voice. Miss Mu, now that all three of us have matched the next couplet, I wonder how you plan to choose? Wu Zhenghao had great confidence in his heart, compared to Li Hung below, the status of that district lifer, and Han Feng, the downtrodden Han family scum his own honorable status as the second youngest master of the Wu family, no matter how you looked at it, had an absolute advantage. Wu Zhenghao's words also reminded the crowd. Now there were three people who had all gotten the next couplet right, although Han Feng's couplet was significantly more the other two. However, there were no previous regulations, so all three would be eligible. In the face of the crowd's skepticism, the two presiding maids in the attic were also having trouble deciding. And at this time in the compartment, a woman with a colorful red dress came out from behind the screen. Many people recognized this woman, she was Mu Qianxuan's personal mate Shaolan. Xiao Lan walked directly to the fence, facing Han Feng, Wu Zhenghao, and Li Hong with a graceful salute three gentlemen, Sister Mu only recruits one guest of honor, so she decided to choose one of the three. She wants the three gentlemen, to each write a sentence, or a poem, and she will choose whichever one whose content can impress Sister Mu, and the time will be limited to half a pillar of incense. Upon hearing this, both Wu Zhenghao and Li Hang's gazes lit up. Today's matter really has a chance to turn around. Han Feng, however, glanced at the opposite compartment and said in his heart, this woman is quite good at making up stories, no wonder she has so many followers. However, for the sake of his perfume business, this entry today, Han Feng is also the rightful guest. At that moment, there will be Pavilion Boy, once again for the three people to send pen, ink, and paper. Wu Zhenghao and Li Hang are pen gazing, seem to think hard to come up with, the most able to move the heart of the beauty of the love poem words of course, Wu Zhenghao was just making a show of it. Willow Fang stood beside him again at the moment, thinking hard for him. Han Feng, on the other hand, was in no hurry at all as he picked up a cup of tea and began to leisurely savor it again. Seeing Han Feng's cozy appearance, Zhao Wei Nan on the side was anxious and urged. Brother Han, think quickly, how can you impress Miss Mu's heart off? With the talent you've shown in couplets, Miss Mu may favor you a bit more, so seize the opportunity. Han Feng looked at Zhao Wei Nan with some surprise. Brother Zhao, if I become Miss Mu's guest of honor, you won't be jealous? Zhao Wei Nan said with a complicated expression. Brother Han, I know how many kilograms I have, but even if I don't get Miss Mu, I can't let that grandson Wu Zhenghao have his way. Speaking here, he grabbed Han Feng's arm in excitement, Brother Han, even if it's for my brother's sake, you must become Miss Mu's guest of honor, take a look at Miss Mu's true face for me, and Mr. Zhao will be satisfied. When Han Feng heard this, he couldn't help but his sympathetic glance at Zhao Wei Nan. It's sad to see that at such a young age, he has taken on the role of spare tire at such an early age. 
While the two were conversing, Shin Yujo on the side was crossing her lips and coldly snorted. Oomph, it's just a windswept woman, it's not like you can live forever by seeing her. Han Feng, if you want to see a beauty, why don't I take you back and meet my sister, designated to be a hundred times prettier than this woman. Ahem. When Han Feng heard this, he almost didn't spray the tea in his mouth, choking and coughing. Count. Forget it, thanks to the kindness of the second Miss Jean, I appreciate it, Han. Han Feng still remembered that the original owner of his body could have been killed by Qin Yujiao's sister such a tough and violent woman, even if she is as beautiful as a heavenly fairy, Han Feng does not want to go to see more than one glance, he has not lived enough. While the three of them were talking, the half-burned incense in the incense burner had already burned most of the way through. Wu Zhenghao and Li Hang had already put pen to paper, writing the best lines that they thought were the most literate and the most able to move the hearts of the fangs. Seeing that the time limit was about to expire, both of them had already closed their pens and sealed their scrolls, Wu Zhenghao once again looked toward Han Feng provocatively, and Zhao Weinan also looked at Han Feng with a hopeful expression. Only then did Han Feng finally get up, lifting his pen and dipping it into the ink, dancing casually on the white paper. But but between tea, Han Feng will close the pen and seal the scroll, the paper toward the side of the boy in front of a sen take it. Ah! Uh, this scene was a bit dumbfounding to the people present. Even if you're just writing a random sentence, it should at least take a few moments. Han Feng had only written a few strokes, and it was estimated that there would be no more than ten words at the most, so he could write words that touched people's hearts? The crowd was astonished beyond words, and Zhao Wei Nan, the only one who stood beside Han Feng and saw clearly what he had written, was even more dumbfounded, his expression complex to the extreme. Han Feng then reached out and patted the boy, who was also a bit frazzled, and handed him another gold coin in his hand. That was a loud voice just now, it deserves a commendation, send this one over too. The teenager received the gold coins and instantly showed excitement as he flew off to run errands for Han Feng. Immediately, Han Feng returned to his seat with confidence and continued to sip his tea. Qin Yujiao had not read what Han Feng had written just now, and could not help but be surprised in her heart, and was busy asking Zhao Wei Nan. Hey, what did Han Feng just write ah, is it a verse, look at his appearance. Very confident ah? Zhao Wei Nan, however, shook his head with a bitter face, then gazed strangely and swallowed and whispered. Eh? Brother Han wrote. Girl, my family has a mind. Ah? Shin Yujiu was first stunned, then could not help but pfft a happy. Ha ha. This guy, really still uneducated. Looks like he's only good at pairs, but he doesn't know shit about poetry and lyrics. Han Feng was unconcerned about Shin Yujiu's merciless blows. After experiencing the beatings of the money society in his previous life, Han Feng knows the truth that money moves people's hearts. If your family has a mind, you should never keep a low profile and shout it out boldly. Chapter 53 A shot in the arm on the third floor of the Golden Pavilion, in the room called Twilight Snow Residence. A young woman wearing an aquamarine blue flowing fairy long dress with a golden phoenix patterned shawl and a graceful figure, her face covered with a thin veil, sat on top of a futon. Looking at the contents of the three copies of the rice paper spread out in front of him, the pair of beautiful eyes that were looking forward and looking at each other gloriously crossed over the first two copies of the moving poems that were written with great literary talent. In the end, it was fixed on top of the third piece of rice paper, above the arrogant seven big words. Girl, my family has a mind. The woman's gaze was dumbfounded, and then under the thin veil, it was vaguely visible as she guffawed, but she didn't know whether she found it amusing or simply mocking. Next to the personal maid Xiaolan, after seeing the content on the rice paper, was also stunned, and then could not hide the look of contempt said Sister Mu, in the past, I've often heard people say that this Han Feng is the number one wasted talent in White Dragon County, unable to do anything in literature, unable to do anything in martial arts. Today, when I saw him sparring with the Wu family's domestic slaves, I thought he was deep in hiding, but now it seems that he is really not a man of culture and elegance. I'm not sure if you're the kind of person who loves vanity, but I think you're not as good as Mr. Li, the second young master of the Wu family. Upon hearing this, the true protagonist of today's recruitment meeting, the first flower leader of the Sprinkles Pavilion, Mu Qianxian, also couldn't help but nod her head in agreement, her voice slightly playful. Vulgar indeed. Hearing Mu Qianxian agree with her words, Xiao Lan curiously asked after her. In that case, I don't know if sister prefers Li Fu Li or second young master Wu? In that case, I'll go with. Inside the cabinet hall, seeing Xiao Lan send the three works into the compartment and not come out for a long time, all the guests waiting for the seat were a little impatient. Inside the hall, on the other hand, the three candidates who were about to be expected to become Miss Mu's guests of honor were all acting extremely confident. Li Hang on the first floor of the hall, as a great talent known far and wide in White Dragon County, was holding his breath even though he had previously been robbed of much of the limelight by Han Feng and Wu Zhenghao's pairwise bets. On the paper he had just given to Miss Mu, he could be said to have exhausted his entire life's learning, and within half a pillar of incense, he had overplayed his hand and written an extremely high level of words and phrases to express his love and admiration. 
Li Hang believed that as long as a woman saw this lyric, it would be absolutely difficult not to be moved, and he had absolute confidence in his own literary skills as for Wu Jianghao on top of the third floor, at this moment, he was equally relaxed and full of confidence. According to what Lu Fang had secretly taught him, he wrote down a five-word stanza, although it was only four short verses and twenty words, it was well written and refined, expressing his admiration for Miss Mu. With this masterpiece, coupled with his own identity, Wu Jianghao felt that he had already secured a victory. If Li Hang and Wu Jianghao's self-confidence is traceable, then, as Han Feng's teammates, Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yujiao really do not know where he got his self-confidence. At this moment, Han Feng was old and calm, with the same air of confidence. For those who don't know, I'm afraid they would think that he has also made a piece, how to make a great poem. However, only the two were clear that what Han Feng had written was indeed vulgar to the extreme do you know that Mu Chenchuan is a talented girl who was famous in White Dragon County, will she fake it just because your family has a mine? However, the two men saw Han Feng so confident, it is not good to speak out to combat, Zhao Wei Nan can only continue a sighing, but it is the side of the Qin Yujiao, although from time to time whispered to make fun of Han Feng, but in the bottom of the eyes there is a trace of a stolen joy color. Just as the hall was in an uproar, the crowd was arguing and speculating. Behind the screen on the third floor, Ran stepped out again. The hall was a buzz. Miss Lan has come out, so it seems the results are already there. Miss Lan, who exactly was chosen? Amidst the gazes of all the people's expectations, a complex and uncomprehending look spread across Ran's face, and she announced somewhat reluctantly. Today, Sister Mu's chosen guest of honor is. Her gaze swept over the first floor, the hopeful Li Hang, and then to the third floor VIP area Wu Jianghao was instantly shaken, violently standing up from his seat and striding over to the fence. He straightened his body in a glowing manner and was ready to be congratulated by the crowd and moved to Mu Qianxuan's chamber for a kiss. However, Ran's gaze swept over Wu Jianghao and landed on another table not far away. Mr. Han, Sister Mu invites you into the compartment. When these words came out, all was silent in the hall, and everyone froze for a moment. What? The smile that had just unfolded on Wu Jianghao's face also completely stiffened at this moment. How? How could it be him? Wu Jianghao was incredulous, and the people in the hall were equally astonished. Could it be that this Mr. Han, who was rumored to be a waste of time in both arts and martial arts, is in fact not, but is actually a great talent with a deep hidden talent? If we were to say that the most clueless at this moment, I'm afraid we would have to count Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yu Jiao this. This is okay? Both men wondered if their ears had misheard. Han Feng, on the other hand, had already risen blandly at this moment and waved his hand toward the crowd. At this moment, a maid had already come close to Han Feng and said with a flourish. Mr. Han, please follow us. Han Feng nodded and turned toward Zhao Wei Nan and Qin Yu Jiao again. You guys wait for me in the box, I'll be right back. Saying that, Han Feng followed the maid towards the corridor, and as he passed by Wu Jianghao, Han Feng purposely stopped his footsteps and arched his hand towards Wu Jianghao. Young Master Wu, I'm sorry, don't worry, just for the face of that 10,000 gold coins just now, I'll also bring Young Master Wu's admiration for Miss Mu in person later on. After saying that, Han Feng raised his head and left. And in situ, Wu Jianghao's already dark face was now as black as the bottom of a pot, so angry that his entire body was trembling. Today, he had suffered a bloody loss, not only did he lose 10,000 gold coins, but he was also violently beaten up by second Miss Qin. More crucially, both Miss Qin and Miss Mu seemed to be no longer related to him. The cruel blow of people and money, so that Wu Jianghao was so angry for a time that he was actually black and shaky. It was the sight of Lu Yong who hastily held him up, and he was busy greeting the few people beside him. Quickly! Help the young master back to the house. Just like this, an event that had attracted the entire White Dragon County, where many flamboyant and talented people had gathered, came to an abrupt end at this moment in the end, the person who became Mu Qianxuan's guest of honor was the former White Dragon County's number one loser, Han Feng. In the crowd as complicated gazes of either surprise, jealousy, or envy. Han Feng stepped forward with an overflowing smile on his face. What Han Feng was happy about, however, was not being able to have a long conversation with a beauty or catch a glimpse of her face. What Han Feng was thinking in his mind at the moment was that there was only one step away from the Dark Fragrance Pavilion's presale planning being successfully completed. The reason why he chose to use such vulgar and direct words, gifted to Mu Qianxuan, is not that Han Feng really can't get any poetic masterpieces. On the contrary, there were hundreds, if not a thousand, of masterpieces in his memory, and any one of them could bluff the entire audience in the end, it all still had to do with Han Feng's purpose. He was not fighting for the entry today to pick up the flower girl and look at the beauty, but he was here to talk about business. Businessmen have never been about feelings, only interests. Therefore, Han Feng had to determine whether this Miss Mu was a literate woman who attached herself to the elegant and pretended to be noble, or someone who valued practical benefits more. Now, it seems that the other party and himself immediately hit it off, both should be like copper odor people. In this way, Han Feng for the next sleepwear. Not right, should be persuade this woman, more certain. 
Chapter 54, The Best Man for the Job Led by the maid, Han Feng ascended the three-story embroidered building amidst the envious gazes of the crowd. Arriving in front of the Twilight Snow residence, Xiao Lan personally led the way, crossing the screen and stepping into the eye-catching compartment many of the lost flirtatious talents either left straight away with their heads hanging down, or went to the outer pavilion to find a girl with good posture to console their lost mood. However, at this moment, Han Feng, as soon as he stepped into the compartment, a faint fragrance came from the tip of his nose. These days, in order to develop the perfume, Han Feng's nose had been honed. A smell, it has been distinguished that this is a good incense, which is also mixed with a trace of the place, subtle fragrance, refreshing to the extreme. After gently sniffing around, Han Feng swept his gaze around the outer room of the compartment, but he didn't see the first flower girl who had made a name for herself in the county. Xiao Lan, who was leading the way, looked at Han Feng with a complicated expression, but her heart was still somewhat puzzled I don't understand why Sister Mu, such an elegant person, would choose this white dragon county's notorious trash. But at the moment the person had already been brought, she could only say through the beaded curtain, towards the inner room. Sister, young Master Han has been brought. Passing through the beaded curtains of the interview, Han Feng then vaguely saw a figure that was standing with its back to the outer room. Although they were far apart and there was a curtain blocking the view, the curves of that graceful and moving back still made Han Feng's heart pound. The backstory reminded him of a verse from the Book of Psalms. The so-called Izzy is on the other side of the water. A blurred back, already so moving, no wonder it can make the White Dragon County, many of the children of the family and the flirtatious talent scramble to pursue. A moment later, Mu Qianchuan's soft, water-like voice came out Laner, go out first, I want to be alone with Mr. Han. Ran sniffed, but only answered and left, closing the door to the room. At this moment, only Han Feng and Mu Qianchuan were left in the compartment. Han Feng stood in the outer room, debating whether to go in himself or wait for the other party to come out, when he heard Mu Qianchuan say, your Excellency need not be formal, please enter the inner room for a moment. Han Feng raised his eyebrows slightly when he heard this. To be honest, the first time he visited a greenhouse in his past life and present life, he was still a little nervous when facing this famous flower girl. However, on second thought, he at least had been in front of the computer screen, read all kinds of valuable resources at home and abroad, what big scenes have not seen, cannot show fear at this moment? Thinking of this, Han Feng threw his body upright, lifted the beaded curtain, and took a step into the inner room at this moment, it was finally clear to see the furnishings of the inner room. A dragon and phoenix show couch, a window position placed a toffee chair, the room also has a tea table incense case. Dotted on all sides with several green potted plants, the layout is exquisite and elegant. At the moment, Mu Qianxuan was looking at the north wall of the inner room with his back to Han Feng, focusing on a picture of cold plums proud of snow. In this painting, there is only a bare and slender plum blossom tree, with its branches loaded with ice and snow, except for the top branches, which are poking out a little bit of crimson. Seemingly fragile waxberry, but gives a kind of lonely and tough atmosphere, the scroll is obviously from the handwriting of everyone Han Feng's attention, however, shifted from the plum blossoms in the painting to Mu Qianchuan's body in only an instant. Just now, he didn't see enough in the outer room, and at this moment, he was only about 10 feet away from Mu Qianchuan. Looking at the tall and slender body wrapped in that aquamarine blue dress, as well as the waterfall-like waist-length ink hair, the beautiful person stood in front of the scroll. Han Feng only felt that this woman seemed to be integrated with the painting on the wall, the person in front of me is also the person in the painting. The other person also seemed to have an air of solitude and purity about him. Han Feng's gaze suddenly lit up, and in his heart, he couldn't help but praise this woman's skillful means. As the saying goes, people rely on clothes, Buddha relies on gold. Not only can you dress up your appearance so attractively, but you can even package your temperament in place, and that's called mastery. After Han Feng crossed into the inner room, a full dozen breaths of time passed before Mu Qianxian finally turned to look over that moment of looking back, although masked by a thin veil, the clear eyes that were as poetic and picturesque as a poem still made Han Feng feel awestruck. Heart Zhao Wei Mail said is not false, just look at its eyebrows, this woman's heavenly beauty is already visible. And the perfect silhouette that was hidden under the veil was even more mysterious and evocative. Han Feng secretly took a deep breath to calm the swirling in his heart, and then a pair of eyes began to be restless, savoring Mu Qianchuan's curvaceous body. Since he intended to hire the other party, to be the spokesperson for the Dark Fragrance Pavilion, Han Feng naturally had to scrutinize it clearly from start to finish. After a large amount, Han Feng gave his evaluation in his mind good guy, when it is really slim, one more point is fat, one less point is too thin, impeccable. Perfect. Han Feng's gaze was scorching hot, and in his heart, he was already certain that the other party was the perfect candidate for the spokesperson of the Dark Fragrance Pavilion. While Han Feng was sizing up Mu Qianxian, Mu Qianxian was likewise sizing up Han Feng. When she saw that, after she had turned around. When Han Feng's pair of eyes, which were actually unscrupulous, cast a scrutinizing gaze towards his entire body. Mu Qianxian couldn't help but be slightly dumbfounded, and then her eyebrows also frowned imperceptibly. However, Han Feng was so involved that he didn't even notice the other party's change in demeanor. 
He even paced from side to side to get a closer look, examining the other man's curves from the side. Ahem. Finally, Mu Qianxian couldn't help it and coughed lightly. Only then did Han Feng realize that his behavior seemed a bit inappropriate, and with a smile, he raised his head and bowed towards Mu Qianxian. Mr. Han has met Miss Mu. Mu Qianxuan's gaze was still extremely calm at the moment, and with a gentle lift of his hand, he pointed to the tea table in the inner room. Mr. Han is polite, so take your seat and sip your tea. Thanks a lot. Guests and masters sitting opposite each other seemed to be Mu Qianxuan's intention, and now that there was the cover of the tea table, Han Feng's gaze, naturally, couldn't be dishonest. Both sides took their seats, and Mu Qianxuan took the initiative to pour tea for Han Feng with elegant and generous movements. Immediately, she looked at Han Feng with a pair of wonderful eyes and took the initiative to speak. I've heard of Mr. Han's great name long ago. Han Feng stared at the words and then smiled bitterly. Ha ha. What big name, Han is just notorious in White Dragon County. Mr. Han is too modest, Mr. Han was able to easily match the three top couplets that my concubine gave out in the time it took to burn incense, and all of the sentences were absolute with such great talent, if we look at the entire White Dragon County, I'm afraid we won't be able to find anyone else. As Mu Qianxian spoke, a pair of eyes as clear as a clear spring looked toward Han Feng, actually causing Han Feng to have a feeling of being seen through. Han Feng smiled and waved his hand. I'm sorry to make Miss Mu laugh, but Mr. Han was just lucky. Mu Qianxian sniffed and let out a light laugh. If that's true, Mr. Han's luck is really great, but the last words that Mr. Han sent to my concubine were really funny. When Han Feng heard this, a flash of light flashed under his eyes and he secretly said. Sure enough, it's here. Han Feng, who had seen all sorts of routines in his previous life, was clear in his mind. No matter how beautiful Mu Qianxuan is, how outstanding her temperament is, since the other party is a woman of the moonshine world, the ultimate goal is still for money it's just that people are much more tactful than the girls who are explicit. No, after a few sentences of small talk, this was still mentioned, and it was estimated that, later on, the woman was going to pretend to be curious and discuss the situation of her own vein in depth. Ahem. Han Feng puffed out his chest and said with a solemn voice. Don't blame the girl, Mr. Han has always been straightforward and untalented, and there is indeed a vein of fine iron at home. As soon as these words came out, Mu Qianchuan's beautiful eyes on the opposite side of the room really glowed with a strange color, as if she was extremely interested in this. Immediately afterward, as Han Feng had expected, Mu Qianchuan did ask a lot of questions about this fine iron vein. For example, the quality of the fine iron produced therein, and the size of the veins, etc. Where did Han Feng know these details, he simply made up his mind, looking as if he knew his own mineral veins like the back of his hand. The words were filled with a strong earthy flavor. While listening to Han Feng's description, Mu Qianchuan frowned darkly and then turned his words around. My concubine has heard it said that Mr. Han's father, Han Xiaotian Han family master, was once the number one strongest person in White Dragon County. Duke Han is the eldest son of the Han family lord, so I'm sure he's also of extraordinary strength, right? Chapter 55, Pervert Hearing Mu Qianxian suddenly ask about his father, Han Feng couldn't help but feel suspicious in his heart, but responded with a bitter smile. Don't you know, Miss Mu, that Mr. Han was born with a wasted vein and is unable to cultivate? How can I say that my strength is extraordinary? When Mu Qianxian heard this, she was busy revealing an apologetic gaze and softly said Mr. Han, please don't be offended, it's just that my concubine had once heard of the great name of the Han family lord and admired it in her heart, and now that I've seen Mr. Han, I lost my words in a moment of excitement. When Han Feng heard this, he just waved a white hand and said. There's no need for the girl to apologize, Mr. Han has long since grown accustomed to being made fun of to his face, not to mention that the girl was only unintentionally speaking. Mu Qianxian sniffed and cast a soft gaze, and even through the veil, it was as if Han Feng could see her reveal a gentle and moving smile. Like the thawing of ice and snow, it makes all the flowers lose their color. Han Feng couldn't help but stagnate his gaze, and then Mu Qianxian's voice came as if it carried some kind of intimidating magic mister. Han, although you are unable to cultivate, can the Han family master, who is a great man with the eyes of heaven, not leave you some powerful treasures? The soft and moving voice entered Han Feng's ears, and Han Feng only felt slightly dizzy in his mind, and even his thoughts were somewhat unmanageable. While his heart was in a state of shock, a warm current in his chest instantly flowed through Han Feng's entire body, causing his mind to become clear. Han Feng looked at Mu Qianxian again, and the other party's gaze was crystal clear, still calmly looking at himself without any impropriety. However, Han Feng was already secretly wary in his heart and was somewhat wary of the woman in front of him. Miss Mu is joking, my father died suddenly and long without even explaining the aftermath, and my mother disappeared right along with him, so where could he leave any treasures? Hearing Han Feng's reply and seeing his clear, watery gaze, Mu Qianchuan's heart was flooded with a touch of suspicion, then she also laughed softly concubine is just asking casually, Mr. Han shouldn't take it seriously. 
The atmosphere was silent for a moment, and a trace of unwillingness flashed under Mu Qianchuan's eyes. Suddenly, she cast a gentle, watery gaze toward Han Feng and softly said, Mr. Han has shown his talent today and become my concubine's guest of honor, is there nothing you wish to say, or do? As she said this, a hint of ambiguity surfaced in Mu Qianchuan's clear gaze, causing Han Feng's heart to skip a beat. Though it was felt that there was a faint sense of danger in this woman. But it was so hard to become the other party's guest of honor, so how could Han Feng let go of this excellent opportunity so easily at that moment, no longer pretending to be a gentleman, Han Feng's face showed a traitorous, greedy face and said. He he he. Mu girl, since you have asked this, Mr. Han also opened the sky window to say the truth. To be honest, Mr. Han came today for no other reason than to get you, Miss Mu, as a person. In Han Feng's opinion, Mu Qianxian, whether it was her looks, temperament, and influence in the White Dragon County, endorsing the Dark Fragrance Pavilion perfume was simply seamless, and was bound to make the perfume a hit in the White Dragon County. One could say that right now Mu Qianxian was like a golden mountain in Han Feng's eyes. However, Han Feng's greedy face, and the hint of ambiguity contained in his words, in Mu Qianxuan's view, it was a complete sign of a lustful devil who coveted her beauty. Mu Qianxian couldn't help but show a hint of contempt and disgust under his eyes however, in order to find out the news she wanted from Han Feng, she could only endure for the time being. Instantly hiding her gaze, Mu Qianxian turned to hang her head and bowed her head, covering her face with her hands, a touch of moving redness rising above her slender goose neck and snow white cheeks. Then he heard Mu Qianxuan's voice tremble and blush. Mr. Han, you. You are too direct, people are still a little uncomfortable. Mu Qianchuan's shyness was like a peony being shy and waiting to be released, which was extremely charming. I'm afraid that if any man with a strong blood and vigor sees it, he will be eager to take it into his arms and love and pity it fiercely. No more, but also to provoke the whole body qi and blood convergence in the dantian, from the small abdomen and down. Then there will be some, the brain will not be able to control the physiological response. However, Han Feng was different, because at the moment, his brain was already occupied by full of gold coins seeing this sudden shy gesture of Mu Qianxian, although Han Feng was also hot all around, Han Feng nowadays, simply did not have the ability of his lower body to dominate his brain. So instead of losing his mind, he was amazed. I said, I'm talking business with you, what are you ashamed of, doing business is the more direct the better. Worried that the other party was politely refusing, Han Feng added another sentence. Miss Mu doesn't have to worry, Mr. Han is by no means a person who crosses the river and breaks the bridge, as long as Miss Mu hands herself over to Mr. Han in one piece. In the future, Mr. Han will ensure that the girl will make a lot of money day after day, and eat and drink spicy food, and this sprinkler pavilion will be fine if you don't stay here. Han Feng looks like a boss to the enterprise employee's big cake brainwashing bold tone. While Mu Qianxian listened, she clenched her silver teeth he said that this person is really like the rumors, not only mediocre talent, but also greedy for beauty, obviously already have a delicate wife, listen to this meaning, but also want to ransom himself to take himself as a concubine. While hanging her head, Mu Qianxuan's eyes flashed a hint of sternness, when she raised her head, her face revealed a touching look that was both shy and charming, and a pair of wonderful eyes even had a hidden mist rising. Mu Qianxian lightly opened her vermilion lips and asked without any worries. But in this way, can the lady. In Mr. Han's family agree? When Han Feng heard this, he was really a bit confused, thinking, I asked you to be the spokesperson, what's it got to do with my wife, this woman can't be sick in the head, right? After staring straight at Mu Qianxuan with a strange gaze for a moment, Han Feng frowned again and said. That. Mu girl, are you still not understanding what I mean? Mu Qianxuan saw Han Feng's odd eyes, glancing at his face, and cursed in his heart that this guy was really colorful but in order to probe out some fierce information from this guy, she could only make a slight sacrifice and lure him with her beauty. Between the flow of eyes, Mu Qianxuan a slender jade finger in Han Feng's chest, gently nodded, and lowered his head, said with a red face. Mr. Han, you are really bad, so anxious. To have people unveil their veils for you to see? I will promise you that. Mu Qianxuan said, forcing her heart to hold back her unhappiness, her jade hand slowly lifted up, and she was about to undo her veil. Unexpectedly, before Mu Qianxuan could uncover her veil, Han Feng suddenly reached out and grabbed her palm. Feeling her own palm, the other party's large warm hand holding it, Mu Qianxian couldn't help but be startled, her beautiful eyes fixedly looking at Han Feng. However, he saw Han Feng smile imploringly and said meaningfully Miss Mu, there's no need to take off this veil, Mr. Han still likes to keep a bit of mystery in his work. Han Feng knows that mystery is like poison, the more mysterious it is, the more people want to explore. With Mu Qianxuan's fame in White Dragon County nowadays, coupled with this veil of mystery, it would definitely be able to add a lot of color to the Dark Fragrance Pavilion. However, Han Feng did not know that at this moment, his and Mu Qianxuan's thinking was completely opposite, walking on two very different paths. Looking at Han Feng's meaningful and eerie smile, Mu Qianxuan's pupils contracted for a moment, and the anger in his heart almost reached the edge of eruption. 
She had originally thought that as long as she took the veil and revealed her true face, and then showed Han Feng a little favor, she would be able to make the other party obediently fall into her control. But how could she not expect that the youth in front of her, not only is he a hungry man of color, but also extremely perverted, actually wants to let herself put on a veil and do that kind of thing with him at the thought of that kind of despicable and shameless image, Mu Qian Shan, despite her extraordinary determination, couldn't help but feel her cheeks burning, and her gaze toward Han Feng gradually turned cold. If it wasn't to figure out that one thing, why would he need to accommodate this big pervert in front of him, given his status? Looking at the other party who was still holding her palm and not letting go, Mu Qianxian said with a slightly sunken tone, Mr. Han, you don't want to make me strip naked now, do you? Han Feng stared at the words, his expression incomparably surprised. At this moment, he realized that he could not understand this woman's logic at all, let's talk about business properly, how come it is associated with undressing? Sighing in his heart that talking to this woman was too tiring, Han Feng simply stood up directly, and in Mu Qianxuan's extremely shocked gaze, he grabbed his lapel with both hands and forcefully parted it to the sides. At the same time, Han Feng's eyes glowed as he spoke aloud. Miss Mu, I'll be direct, keep your eyes open. Mu Qianxuan's entire body froze, completely not expecting that this person would be perverted to such an extent he hadn't taken it off himself, but he'd done it first, and he'd even told himself to keep his eyes open. Mu Qianxuan subconsciously covered her eyes with one hand. At the same time, the heart could no longer tolerate it, and the killing opportunity erupted as one of the jade palms hidden under the long sleeves flipped. Within the center of the palm, powerful energy fluctuations surfaced, and a sharp edge flickering with a faint silver light coalesced Chapter 56, Formal Invitation. When Han Feng reached out to untie his robe, he only felt a chill all over his body, and the hairs on his back stood up, as if there was a sharp sword against the back of his neck. Hiss. Han Feng couldn't help but draw in a breath of cool air, thinking that the temperature in this room, how did it suddenly become so low? On the other hand, Mu Qianxian, in the blink of an eye when the killing intent rose in his heart, also finally loosened the jade hand that was shielding his gaze. A pair of beautiful eyes without the slightest bit of anger looked right toward Han Feng. She was prepared that no matter what filthy image was in front of her, after turning her eyes, the other person would only be a dead body. However, when Mu Qianxuan's gaze turned to Han Feng, he froze once again. It's a very different picture than the one you imagine. 